recently cracked a thousand. Oh. No, oh, yes, Dalo Dwyer. Haven't said that. Street bike, modified bike, and modified to the lanes, please. Is that right? I didn't want to talk over the snowman, Pete Wilson. Sandman, we call him, don't we? Sandman. Pete Wilson, Ian Pimble, that's another tough XD that's come out here today. God, we've had a couple of HX, uh, sorry, HK, HT wagons, a couple of tough XDs. We've got a HQ panel van with a blower. He's another one to go down the, to 660 foot and listen to the blower. Pete Wilson, out near Rome away. Look at that thing. Couldn't wait to get the hammer down here at Warwick. Mind you, the XD got out a little bit better to the 60 foot. In fact, the XD's got plenty. This is neck and neck through the finish line, 948 to a 925. Oh yeah. Yeah, great pass there from the, uh, the big Ford. Uh, had a little bit better reaction time and uh, a little bit better. Oh, can you just feel, you know, the the working week unwind in the burnout, you know what I mean? Like, I, that's what I think when we look at all these working class races and, and, and they're all, I won't be offended when I say that. I mean, we're all pretty hard working people, but that burnout just after a hard week at work, it's got to feel better than, you know, a two hour spa session, really. Uh, at least your, your adrenaline's right up there. So we've got Chris Schaefer out the front. We've got Mick Schaefer um, behind the wheel and beso uh, behind there, we've got Tony, Standing there watching, so dad, son, and grandson. Noel Green beside again. Noel Green, another weapon. Watch for Noel Green at the pointy end by either the, whether we go to racing. I think we only qualify today. Are we racing today and tomorrow, or racing tomorrow? Not too sure, actually. I think we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, qualifying today. Qualifying our backsides off today. Oh, boys. So a bit of a bog off the line there for uh, for Mick, but no problems for Noel Green. That thing works well. 8.50. Is that where that thing's got to? 8.54, 158 mile an hour. And 152, 9.45 there for Mick. Jeez, they're all going to be battling each other by the end of the weekend. When you start looking at all the other guys rolling through like this one, being um, Mr. Barron himself, Patrick Barron. We've got Kirsten Colston beside him. Now, this car's been around a while, the AUXR8. Great car. Glad that it sort of stayed in that sort of factory colour and striping with not a lot of signage. It looks really well. Kristen's got herself one hell of a nice vehicle, as does Patrick Barron. Yep. Chevy Beretta, probably the only Beretta we're going to have here today. Unique shape, especially in Australia. Never got that Beretta. That kind of takes you back to the, uh, the 90s, doesn't it? Sure does. 026. Oh, these guys are ready for the tree. He tiptoes his way to there, Pat, for the first one. 857 at 154. 1007 for the AU at 135. Oh, they just keep coming. Quality. Wall to wall. Folks, you have made the absolute right decision to come up here to Warwick this weekend. I suggest you get on to your friends and get them up here too. Got to share this stuff with people. Another car that I've known for years here again still, the Toyota Celica. Beautiful full tube car. Wayne Height and beside him, Darren Ramsey. That's a whole lot of Chevelle right there. All the serious hitters. Over the quarter mile. Oh, and the Mustang. Carpenter on the door. Hey, they don't deviate too far from the sport, do they? They they come in when they want to, when they feel the love. Oh yeah. Tell you what, the big tires are uh, hitting the track. 133 in the 60 foot there for Wayne. Takes it all the way to the uh, stripe. It goes 1002 early shoot, 105. 9.48 there for uh, Darren, 136 out the back. Oh, Tay, just stop it. The quality, Ford fans, even this even this pass. Oh, my goodness. I was about to say, Chris, 
I can't believe it. Since we started this morning, every time you look at the next set of cars that are coming out, it's just like a wow moment. And it's just an amazing cars we've done so far here at Warwick Dragway. Oh, absolutely love what I'm seeing. That is Max Andrew Carpenter. He's got the whole name there on the entry list. That's fancy. That's uh, that's the full Max. Uh, Mark Sugar's beside him. This Falcon Sprint. Like, Mark's got some nice cars, especially Fords. There's a T-Bird coming out of that workshop, which is a step up from the Aspo. Like, he's always played a good Aspo game. But here he is, and God knows what Max is packing under this Mustang. God, he must park that outside. The, I know, has he still got the dealership? Is he, does Max still have his dealership? Because you'd park that out the front, wouldn't you? If you owned the dealership, you'd be having that out. The, you'd drive that, drive that to work every day, wouldn't you? Mind you, you could have that, you could have that Falcon Sprint out there as well. Here we go, built for business, these two folks. Oh, yeah! That's Mark Sugars for you. I remember one of the, what, back in my previous life as a drag racing photographer, I remember taking photos of Mark's uh, white court. Oh, yeah. And that thing, like, some of my best uh, shots was that thing. That thing. Almost on the bumper. Well, that was always a very stout small block Ford with a manual transmission. You know, the most exciting car you can build has got one with a clutch pedal in it, in my opinion. And uh, that Mark Yalar banging those, because I even remember before that, the POM owned it before that. Um, and um, that was his nickname, wasn't it? Like, the good old days of Superstock. Oh, they were the best. I'd still love Superstock to just have. That's another event that you could you could do, like you could redo the tin tops if they just let me, but they won't. I'd redo the tin tops, I tell you, mate. Big Superstock payout. But you know what? It's uh, it's just another pipe dream, and if it ever comes true, we'll be to watch back in the day. Here we go. Hold on to your hat. So we got Benny Palmer out there, 13B turbo rotary engine in a Datsun 1200. He, does he need a push back? Is he trying to get reverse? Thing's still running, I think. I don't know. I can't hear it. Uh, Les Rice, though, is ready in that beautiful little Tirana. No, no, Benny's uh, lost power, I think, has he? That's a shame. No, no, just need a reverse. I, that looks like he's ready. Going to put it in gear. There we go. Right o No, no. Geez, he's having trouble maybe with the uh, the clutch or something there. No problems for the Tirana. He puts on two bulbs. We're going to throw the red. Off you go. Yeah, just sort of rolled the beam so the 60 wasn't really that good. But, yeah, it's still going to get a decent run out of it here for Les. Problems for Benny. Not the uh, not the best feeling to have all the adrenaline up. And, I mean, that... Oh, hey, Tirana, thank you. Thanks for that. Thank, well, thank you shortly. Um, but uh, how good's that little Dado 1200 look? Um, yeah, manual gearbox in it. So 13B turbo manual gearbox, wheelie bars out the back for a reason. That's one of those exciting cars that we've just got in abundance. Like, God, these are in people's garages. Like, that lives at Daisy Hill for heaven's sake. You know, like, they're, uh, they come from far and wide and they're in so many you and me garages around the, uh, around the district. All right, here we go, Dennis Ryan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, listen to that thing sing. Great to get pass from Dennis Ryan. All the way out, 877, 152. Wheels firmly planted, came out square. 128 in the 60 foot. The surface is uh, in prime condition. These uh, big tie cars are hitting it well. And more action to come, I tell you. Yes, I know the uh, the guys and girls here at Warwick Dragway have been working hard to keep this to get this track up to 100% pristine condition, and uh, as we can tell so far, it's really paying off. That's the wheel stander just coming out uh, of the trailer there, so that's going to be running at some stage here too. I don't think if we have we ever had a wheel stander here, have we ever run a wheel stander here before? Chris would remember. No, there we go. First time for everything then. 
Well, for the wheel stander, it's going to be interesting. Can't wait to see that get steered down. Okay, this is our street category by the look of it. Here he comes. Yeah, yeah, that, that does make a bit of an impact, that thing, doesn't it? Have a look at it. Darren Otto. Blowing six banger on board. Street rod, of course, as is the street ute. Beside him is Harley Hankin in the uh, in the ute. Didn't quite catch the front whether it's like a HX. Uh, well, the front looks like, yeah, HJ, HX, something like that. And, of course, uh, Darren Otto, this hot rod of probably multiple, multiple descendancies. Yeah, what's that? The old-fashioned tea bucket. Always had that front engine dragster with the small block. There you go. So the name of the car is COVID. Is that right? That's not a bad COVID build. Jeez, I tell you what, it goes all right. Mind you, Harley uh, Hankin having just as much track time there as Darren Otto. Yeah, 14, 1436. Jeez, you know you're alive at 1436 in that thing. Don't you reckon? Oh, I reckon so, yeah. Nearly 100 mile an hour. So. He's out just sitting there in the open. Like, literally. I mean, you lose one zip tie off that engine, it's in your face, you know. Like, All right. So, the street class, you just about bring anything. I might have, should have entered the, the work van. The boss would be, be good to turn up with a few time slips in the glove box on Monday. Daniel Shaper and Cameron Hunt. So, Daniel Shaper in the utility. What's going on? And uh, Cameron Hunt. Super Street Specials. So. <laughs> VBVC, VHVK, and and the uh, and the equivalent you know, XD and XE now are just ridiculous. You know what I mean? That that 80s, 1980s shape. That that's fast being sought out of every make that was ever sold in Australia. 1980s. There's there's money in them. Here we go, even the Gemini's, like Nicholas Brig in the TC wagon. I had a TC wagon, turbo six cylinder. Here we go, Gary Steinberger. I want to know what this Ram runs. I'm very curious. It's a big, big beast, big wheelbase. We see a lot of them on the roads. In fact, they just can't sell enough of them. That, the word is, is that they just can't get one. Uh, modified and super streaked to the lanes, please. Is that right? Thank you. Thank you, Miss Allen, for that. What was it again? I forgot it already. Uh, modified, uh, what was it? Modified and super streaked. Modified and super streaked to the lanes, please. And a welder to the uh, scrutineering shed. Hmm? Yeah. 1528 at 91 mile an hour for about 6,000 pounds of ram. That's all right. That's still got to feel all right. I don't think anything 15 seconds if you're in the car by the seat of your pants feels like you're getting pushed along fairly decent. And I, judging by that, it's the Hemi as well. Especially, uh, as you say, something that size going that fast. Mm. It's, yeah, you'd know about it. It's like having a lounge, running 1528 in a lounge room, basically. That's what it would have felt like, isn't it? It's... A, how did everyone go? You know, you look around, you'd love to take a whole car load and go, how was that, everyone? Actually, you can advertise that as the world's fastest land room. Hop in it, strap in, full bar, run a 980. How did that feel? It's just like the event cinemas, you know, you used to get that VMAX experience. That'd be the, the experience you're looking for. Here we go. Now, this tells me that we're into this uh, sort of modified bike group. Is that right? Street bikes, street bikes, yeah. What? There's two. Oh, okay. So we got the word. That is Mark Gordon and Justin Malloy. Now, Mark Gordon, again, long-time bike rider, bike racer. Justin Malloy, looks like a pair of boozers. They have, sometimes I like to think they have a little bit more fun than the car guys, because they seem to be a hell of a ride. But I'll, you won't get me on one. That's it. You tell when they come up with that power band, sometimes that wheel, you just watch that wheel bob 
as they get up on power bend, even in, even as a street bike they do that. 10.32 at 1.37, better them than me. 11.54 at 135. Good group, good group of bike riders. Yeah, and as you said, I think uh, racing a, a very quick uh, motorcycle, you do need that just little bit extra courage. Oh yeah. Some guys have got it in spades. Some guys have got it in buckets. Max Georgen and Aaron Grout. So Aaron Grout in the uh, the far lane. Mark Georgen here. Tower lane. Let it rip, boys. Here we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, not a bad sound. A few V twins disappearing down. 1121 and a 1263. Oh, the old VMAX. Just talking about cinema experiences. I wasn't talking about the original Yamaha, Yamaha Street Fighter. Yeah. Way before the cinemas came around, this was the real excitement. Happens to be Matt Halpin. And beside him, Bobby Nicole Schluter. So here's Bobby, Bobby Nicole. Now, she's, uh, she's doesn't ride junior bike. She's now into the grown-up bike category. She can still race in this category with what she's got. Doesn't have to be the quickest one and won't be the quickest one. This one goes 10.35 at 127. Uh, Bobby Nicole, still good run for that size bike. 11.66, ride the absolute hell out of it. 120 mile an hour. Oh yeah, you can just, you can do it with anything. You can do it with anything. It's got two wheels. You can race it. I've always said uh, drag racing in general, for that exact reason, is probably the most accessible motorsport ever. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Literally anything. Just turn up with it and we'll put a number on for you. Um, that was Chris Shaper and uh, Cherie Ivory. So Cherie out and gone. Chris kind of like bogged it, but he's going to bang gears here again anyway. So the ET will not be uh, kind to him. 12.33 there for Cherie, not a bad ride out of the hole. Uh, but yeah, an 18.20 sitting there bogged, 7.24 seconds to the 60 foot. He'll be back for another run, bit of, bit of clutch slip may be required. Oh, doesn't that Z9, is that a Z900? Doesn't that look nice? That's a Z, like a Z900 over there, stretched. It almost it can't be stock wheelbase. It just looks stretched. Uh, stretched. Anthony Anderson, wow, what a bike. Paul Walsh, Tower Lane, but that's a beautiful, like Z900 style bike. Don't muck around either. Beautiful bike and, and a rolling history lesson. They should, may they never, Never ever stop racing them. 1073. Hey, that's good enough. 1105 at 129. Here we go. Bike. This is my. This is what I can handle as a bike racer. I would love. And you know what? I've watched them in Puerto Rico. I've watched them in Thailand. He doesn't have to have a lot of capacity to get the. You know, to wring the necks out of these things. So we've got Lisa Mundy in the tower lane. Jack Roberts in the far lane. Look at them go, they still got that race face on when the bulbs come on and you're racing these two and they're away and they're absolutely tearing into it. This is nearly the fastest. Can you imagine if your food was on a box on the, on the back of that, you'd be egging them on as well. Come on, bring me, bring me my Uber Eats. Hurry up, hurry up. Here they come. Oh, that's, that's, sorry, that's, not, that's not, sorry, Dave. I just needed to lay on something there. I'm trying to, trying to keep these missiles in sight. 20 seconds to a thousand foot. We can have a cup of coffee and be back for the ET. Here we go. 26 is both sides. Sorry, yeah, Dave, it's not a... How close was that, though? Like, we joked about the speeds and the times, but how close was it? That, well, mate, you wait till a fast bike is chasing that. That's what I love. I love a good chase. I'm in on that. Give me one of them. Is there a... Can, 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 I'll go get me helmet. Nerves of steel to watch that thing right, right away and have to wait that long. Oh, yeah, to be hunted down. Imagine you get a hundred. So imagine even a 10 second bite chasing a 26 second bite. Like, it'll be crazy. Here we go Peter Alexander and Jason White. So Peter Alexander, Tower Lane. 
That is the old school GSX. David Gall needs a welder. He's broken off the pedal. Oh, he doesn't need that. But yeah, we need a welder. Can we get a welder to the scrutineering shed, please? We have a racer needs to put his brake pedal back on. Someone help with a welder, please. That was a, he brought the whole brake pedal up. That's right. So he either needs a welder to fix it or he needs an oxy cutter to put a hole in the floor so he can use his foot to stop it. Or a couple of cables to pull onto the master cylinder. Okay, now he's out and gone. Absolutely disappeared. Jason White tips 11.34 at 128. And here comes Peter Alexander. That was bogging and carrying on that GSX 1100. Old school GSX from the eight, uh, early 80s. That, that would have been like an 81, 82. So attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We have, he's going to stop after the run. It kind of helped him, it slowed him down a bit and then it didn't help him at all because the brake pedal broke. So we need a welder, ASAP to the scrutineering shed, please. Definitely need to get the legendary Mighty Mouse back on the track. So uh, get that welder down to the scrutineering shed and we'll get him back out there. I mean, it's probably done 35 years. That <laughs> It's probably 35 years old, that brake pedal. Dave's obviously had to jump on that thing a few times in the past to pull up the old mighty mouse and finally he probably hasn't raced for well actually he's probably raced just recently but um, yeah jump on that thing snap I broke uh, I broke a brake pedal like that in, uh, in in my dragster but lucky enough it happened in the burnout trying to trying to hold on to the brakes trying to build boost and then the thing went snap oh. Mark, Mark Gordon, double duty. So he's brought a couple of bikes up. He's back out there. He's got the uh, slightly more excitement machine out there now. Beside him is Ben Moore. And uh, Ben on the uh, the 2002 Suzuki. Extended swing arm. Serious bikes. They'll be banging through gears here too. Oh, God, we've got some serious bikes turn up here. Gorgeous. All shapes and sizes. Our sprocket jockeys. Our leathered blokes with spokes and, sorry, ladies with the same. Actually, has anyone even got any spokes anymore? Everyone's got nice wheels on Go, boys! No, they're no joke. They're not mucking around side by side through the quarter mile. 9.62 for Gordon. 9.59 for Arthur Ben. Here it is. Love this bike, love that old fashioned EFE pro stock bike body that they made. Mate of mine, Tony Gray, had a bike nearly identical to that. They are just that, they were the original kind of altered bike per se. Carl Pacey and Mal Brooks, Malcolm Brooks, another bike rider for a long time. Oh, Brooksy just dangles the wheel there as he punches through the gears. But that, uh, that lay down bike, it's pretty quick. Carl Pacey goes 10.15 at 130 and Brooksy 9.89 at 148 mile an hour, getting the most out of it. Yes, the, uh, they've seriously stepped up the bikes, haven't they? Look at this, they just, you can see that stock wheelbase standard looking bike and then you see these things that can only ever be depicted for drag racing. Like MotoGP bikes never evolved to look like this, did they? I'd love to actually see a bunch of MotoGP riders try and ride these things, actually, and vice versa. Down on the knee around the corners. Brian Alvizio and Matt Wilson. So Alvizio's got that, you know, Tower Lane, he's got that sort of um, MFP, the old um, goose. Um, the old... <laughs> doesn't muck around it's no joke half track 572 five seconds over the eight there for Matt Wilson 901 147 and 930 at 146 oh yes some of them just look like spaceships don't they that was just an Alvizio that that bike will be one to beat as well all the hitters are here yeah, it is a, it's incredible, and as you say, the way these bikes have evolved over time to suit this particular motorsport. Oh, what a great uh, pairing. Bo Strike, Tower Lane, Rochelle Strike, um, Far Lane, Rochelle, 1118, 992 for Bo. So Bo and Rochelle could be hubby and wife, brother and sister. I reckon they might be, yeah, yeah, hubby and wife. 
it's, it's probably too true too because yeah obviously hubby's made his bike a little bit quicker well you know rochelle's still running low 11s and uh nothing to complain about that's you, you talk you talk about a partnership that shares exactly the same passion guess what your top bowl went on your top bowl went on it was a match made in heaven mate it was a match made in heaven as soon as you lit the bulb against your uh your uh, your better half then uh that's 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 a great, great experience. Stephen Day, that's another one of those I want to live for that moment sort of thing. Stephen Day and Braden Charter. So Braden on the blue bike far lane, the ZX14. Steve Day, 102 cube, fat bob. Love the skid. Listen to this V twin down the other end here. by now good run there Braden Charter's got some big top end on the 14 10.35 rolling off the throttle was uh, Braden uh, 11.26 big mod bike feel yeah. haven't seen the bike boys for a while it's exciting to see them all back the RPM the smoke the attitude, the seriousness about it. Alan Annis Jr. Tower Lane, Bailey Davis, the ZX9, up against the little six, uh, little 600. It says here, Alan Annis. So let's look at the RPM at 14.15 here, eh? Let's. Uh, that's normally what a good 600 can get to. Let's hear some big RPM out of them. The 600 Tower Lane. Now it's got some. It's got some. Gets to the other end there, even though bit of a sluggish launch. 11:44. Uh, Bailey 12:96. Okay, there is someone at the scrutineering shed with a welder. David Gall, David Gall, there is a welder at the scrutineering shed. David Gall, Mighty Mouse. David Gall, Mighty Mouse, there is a welder. Is that right? A welder at the scrutineering shed. Just appeared by miracle. So apparently there is a welder. Oh, someone with one. Maybe he might have it off site or on site or packed away somewhere, but David. There is a welder uh, opportunity for a welder. Just go and see the guy at the scrutineering shed. All right, here we go. Mick Mundy, Jason Clark. Jeez, I love the way Mundy rides that thing. That wheel was carried. He carried that wheel about an inch off the ground. Um, 1089 at 128 mile an hour. 1009 beside there for Jason Clark. And probably did something very similar. But just this angle looking through the window, I could see Mundy's front tyre and daylight for hundreds of feet there it's just just didn't even put it down and love it when you've got and you can see even the stance that mix on it like there is a there is a certain certain attitude saying about these bikes like one of the one of the things that have stuck in my mind from many many years of drag racing was several Several years, I say several years ago, it was many, actually many years ago, we had the World uh, Top Fuel Motorcycle Championship. And I remember sitting on the finish line and the Americans were going past the finish line without putting the, tire, the front tyre on the track. It was just the most incredible thing. Isn't that funny that that sticks in the memory because uh, I was there as part of that as well. And, you know, Johnny Mancuso and... and um, from the states we had brett there of course i think we had the smith boys over here we had uh angus anders carlson with the blowing one um, that, 
was truly the closest thing we've ever seen to a World Series sort of thing. Exactly right, and, and that's, as I said, uh, many, many years of drag racing, that's one of the things that have really stuck in my head. But they, but, but I mean, they, they stunned us with side-by-side -side six second runs, wheelies through the finish line. Then they went into state and they actually went, I think, to Calder and Adelaide and they rode those things over about five weekends. It was one of the best displays still to this day of an international uh, tour. Uh, mind you, that those, those Street Outlaws guys did that. Uh, Swalling. This bike field is massive. And these guys roll up. Uh, what do we need? Okay, attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We need a four inch Aeroflow V band clamp. Now that's a four inch Aeroflow V band clamp. Not three inch, but four inch. Not a five inch, it's a four inch V band clamps. Normally they come in pairs, I think you can. But uh, I know that we've got the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars there, but do we have an Aeroflow four inch V band clamp? If only they brought the whole catalogue with them everywhere they went. Actually, you know what? If you had to bring, I, I'd love this would be an experiment for Rocket to do in the future, right? <laughs> Everything in the catalogue, what would that look like to fit in a truck? Would that be a B triple? Would it be a would it be a road train? Would it be five trucks in a row to have the whole catalogue in there? Yeah, I think you're right. They certainly wouldn't be have the room to put the actual race cars in there if they did that. So uh... that's a lot. I know they got a great display when they uh, they normally back the display up at uh, lots of events of the year, which is a great advertisement for that. And that those products are out in the Aussie and international markets. Everywhere. Rachel Redman in the far lane, no details on our 3442. It's Tammy Gold, yes it would be Tammy Goldthorpe, I didn't quite, I, I saw her then I forgot her. 9.15 at 153, uh, 1182 at 80, that could happen even if a moth flew past, you know what I mean? Like, I get easily distracted. Too many things to see and uh, too much action to have. It is, it is very easy to forget things, that's for sure. I find that myself. Well, you're, uh, well you remember that that you know that world nitro harley thing exactly right and that's why it, to me it's so amazing because I, i'll forget i'll forget something that happened two seconds ago but i'll remember that for yeah i absolutely that was etched etched into your memory forever and the good stuff i think we train ourselves to make sure we can remember the good stuff and 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 remember as much of the bad stuff as you want i think that's the best thing about our brains is we can forget i'd rather forget about all the bad stuff like the day I had yesterday. But yeah, here we are today. I've forgotten about that now. I had to bring it up, didn't I? Here we go. These bikes, unbelievable. Where, you know, I'm going to keep saying this all weekend. These cars, these bikes, these people, where have they been? Here they are. Eric Redman and Jeffrey Marshall. So we've got a couple of Redmans running in drag bikes, I noticed. So, um, as much as we've got Mansfield Frenches everywhere, a couple of Carpenters, a few Adamses, we've got uh, Mundys and Redmonds in there as well. You think about the names, we'll keep repeating that. That goes to show you just how much of a family sport this is. These things look amazing. That's like current pro bike sort of spec. Look at that thing. I mean, they're both SMIC, both SMIC, far lane as well, slightly older style body. That's why it bounced, but Jeffrey Marshall, quite the opposite. Nice 923 at 145. But uh, yeah, Eric Redman, like he could have thrown so much more chip into that thing, but it just sort of, even with the bog, it just bounced on that big tyre. Uh, 1068 at 110 mile an hour, just oodles, oodles of potential, um, both sides of the racetrack, but another great pairing to see. That's a big lineup of bikes. God, we just, we'll be doing bikes forever then. That was that was a great lineup, but we have put the call out for modifieds to uh, come to the lanes, which we've got. We've also got plenty of other cars in the different categories. I think we had nearly 200 odd entries, so we've got a few. So it's uh, it's everyone itchy feet, itchy feet too. It's we're in a march. Haven't had too many big hits this year yet, um, but yeah, Warwick has been. Um, 
primed and ready to take all races from all the way around to South East Queensland and interstate. And um, what do we get? Do we get a light sprinkle there? Didn't we? The guy's got their hands out. Light sprinkle around here. The way the wind's been blowing, it's probably going to be hopefully just a little little light stuff and it goes away. That's that's us wishful thinking. Yeah, as you said, uh, with that wind, yeah, there's a good chance it's going to going to blow any kind of slight precipitation away. Yes, there's a little bit sort of just petering in and out around the place and again we've all become pretty much meteorologists over the years when it comes to having to uh, cope with rain stopping our progress um, the clouds they don't look that heavy um, it's light stuff it was always forecast around the area to be light and scattered and that's it this is the randomness of it is that you get that little bit over us just stops us a little bit um, obviously, the starts getting a bit worse. You kind of wish we could do it. We haven't ever quite done it yet. You know, the old tennis. You know, you're, all the cricket. You just roll the covers over it. We're not talking about us all becoming meteorologists as well. I'm one of those blokes. I, I, I love it when the bomb gets it wrong. Because yeah. I, I just, I just don't follow it, and I, for some reason, I am absolutely thrilled when they get it wrong. Either way, if it, if they say it's going to be a good fine day and it rains, I'm stoked. Well. I want to know, mate. I, you know, the game. A lot of people, you know, when we uh, when we go to work and we get it wrong, we get in. We either get in trouble. Um, if you're a Sparky, you can't say, "Jesus, I got it wrong today." I mean, that's not a good. That's not a good thing to hear a Sparky say. Oh, Jesus, I got it. Wrong. I really got it wrong. I mean, how does a meter? I'll just come home at night, and his wife says she's cooked him up dinner, and he goes, "How'd you go today?" Oh, I got it wrong today. It was. It was supposed. To, it, it was supposed to rain. It was supposed to rain, and, and it didn't. So I've let a few people down. And, yeah, and, that, but, and this is the thing, it's like there is no repercussion for that. And we all love to say, geez, in my life, if I ever got it wrong, there's no repercussions. So, so this is my idea. All meteorologists, when they get it wrong, they just don't get croissants at morning tea anymore. You know what I mean? They don't get that, that you know what I mean? They don't get that early knockoff. Because meteorologists, last time I looked, they, I mean, you've got to go to uni for a long amount of time. You get paid pretty decent money. But do they walk out at the end of the day, Oh, bad day today. That storm never eventuated. You know what I mean? That's exactly my point, Chris. Like, as you said, electric gets it wrong, someone dies. Yeah. But meteorolog meteorologists get it wrong. It's like, ah, it's ah, well, it's the weather. Yeah, yeah, like electricity. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's, uh, it's the randomness of it all. Okay, well, go back and get some new computer simulations. Maybe send up some more balloons. Fly a few more drones. Spend less time on your coffee break. Uh, I don't know, but get it right, please. Just tell it to be straight. Don't expect anything that's going to, you know, because honestly, sometimes I wish I packed the marquee when I went so I don't have to stand in the rain and, and work. Pop. All right, there we go. They oh. finally got it right there, Daryl Williamson. Peter... Um, Ilsley. Peter Ilsley got it right in that beautiful little altered and then Darrell Williamson it sort of took a big gulp on the nail when he when he first went to trumpet it uh, it sort of bogged and stalled he then managed to probably find neutral started up thought he could just get it needed to get a gear and he got it done he's there so the uh, that carb redder sometimes can just catch up but have a look at that Peter Ilsley got that stack injection on a small block got those uh, five spoke halibrands on the front that alloy polished alloy tank out the front the little grill cowl I mean that is a good old-fashioned altered hey very good looking not quite 125 inch wheelbase either love them Daryl Williamson plenty of tire big wheelie bars as well modified eliminator big big block chef I can't quite see might be well, if, if Chris, uh, you know, cleaned this, the windows like he promised me last time, we'd probably... Yeah. yeah, it definitely had some. It carried the wheel out. It went 1-2-2 two, two in the 60-foot. Takes it all the way to the quarter mile and goes 8.82. And Ilsley's uh, 9.28. Oh, yes, I love Modified. I've got one of these things sitting around, you know. With a two... With... The Alteds have always been one of my favourites. They just... They're just that little bit more uh, out of control. I uh, I built one to set a national record. But... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 
I bought, I bought one and set a national record, so I had to choose the altered, obviously. Um, and so proud of the way it turned out. We got the record with the full cylinder, but now it's got a Toyota Supra motor in it. And looking to bring it up here and run it at Warwick with my sons or anyone that wants to drive it, because that's the joys with the racer's license, is we can have a, an altered clinic here one day. We can all have a couple of runs each. Now, tell you what, Trent Roberts, having a look at the engine, having a listening uh, listen to it as well, uh, that's one of them NASCAR small block style engines. Just looking at the port configuration, the RPM, that's uh, that's a bit of maybe Mopar small block. It doesn't tell us the engine, but I think it could be Mopar NASCAR. Jeff Graham, the tin pony. Well, we know it's six banger Holden powered and it might do a big wheelie if you're not too careful. It's got a reputation. <laughs> RPM on board that thing, Trent Roberts. It makes some horsepower once it's up and gone. The Tin Pony just gets dwarfed about a thousand foot, 986 to an 1187. Oh yes, I love the little six banger alters. If I if I could go again, I would have done it as a one of the little 92 inch wheelbase. I ended up with 125 inch wheelbase. You know, Benny Bray body, like that black one we just saw, kind of looks like that. Goes 10 O's, not that fast. Well, well, well. Phil Bellet, yes, well, that's to be assumed. He, he's almost Mr. Modified. John Sting makes a makes a makes a return back to the roots. Remember, he was so unstoppable in Modified in the early days before he went to like comp. He had that beautiful A drag stuff, and then he went to top alcohol. So Stingy's been all the way to the to the pointy end. And he's got something here, maybe a nice little relaxer. Just a lazy big block chef powered RED to get you, keep your hands uh, still on it. That's a, and knowing Stingy, that's another trick piece of gear. Stingy always had trick stuff. Always, uh, his gear always just had that little bit extra quality, didn't it? And of course, Phil Bellett, one of the hardest blokes to stop in a modified race. But mind you, Stingy's be there. So these guys both uh, multiple uh, multiple track champions in uh, modified. Of course, at Willowbank. But here's Stingy coming out for a uh, a run in his new whip. Got the girls on board there too, so he's got quite the army there. Come on back, girls. That's it. Here he goes, knows his way to the beams, John Sting. Oh, Bellin, of course, it's an 036 for, for Phil. And we go down to the quarter mile early shoot there for Phil. He goes 839 early, and 849 for uh, Stingy as well, kind of doing the same thing. 114 and 113 in the 60, so hitting the start line pretty hard. That's what these cars can do, you know, plenty of tyre, relatively lightweight. They do just, that's that extra tenth or two in the 60 that these cars just have because they're lighter. And, and a lot of the times, you know, uh, over tired. They've got plenty of slick on board. Benita marching out there. Yeah, there we go. This is She's filled the entry form out. She's a posty. Well, it says male contractor, so I just say posty. 505 cubic inches on board so um this is going to hit the um this is going to hit the uh the start line pretty hard can anyone still help with a four inch the yeah, four inch aeroflow v-band and yes big shout out to ashley wilson i just finally read my phone yes i am here are you So a bit of wind blowing it around here again. Tiny little, uh, no, no, that thing just didn't want to idle properly or something there. I know we might, might yep, yeah, still got a little bit blowing back this way now because it's it's on our glass on the uh, on the control tower now. We've got another little sprinkle blowing back this way. Yes, it's, it's very, very light, but mm. uh, as, as we know, it doesn't take a lot. 
it doesn't uh, doesn't take much to stop us uh, do what we love. It's a shame because you know over the over the hill here, the, you'll, you'll, you'll you'll probably hear him go, and then you'll hear them eh, eh, pedalling it and still driving it. But yeah, so this thing is um, just that frustrating little light sprinkle. This wind, as we said before, blowing around. Meteorologist, he did say scattered shower, so that gets him off the hook. But um, according to the bomb, it's kind of little light patches. That's hit the window a little bit harder than normal, I can see on the corner here. That's an annoying sprinkle, that is. As you said, that is an annoying one because it's, it's still not heavy, but it's heavy enough to stop us. So uh, it's just that annoying sort of level of, uh, of rain. Yeah, it's not much, is it? Not much. I just went outside and sampled a bit of it. It's enough. It's enough if you're if you're standing there. It's enough to probably make you maybe go get some shelter. Um, I like that how you did that. You you put your arm out the door, and I think that's just actually it's probably more accurate than the bomb guys we were talking. Well, about. I think that's all they do, Aid, isn't it? Like all I did was they just go outside the office, or you know every day they might just stand, you know they go right. We need a forecast for Amberley, right? Eh? We'll get a bloke to stand outside at Amberley, look up and go. Okay, I think it's going to be this. And that's that's the prediction. So, just this annoying light sprinkle. It's not the end of the world for us, but right now it's enough to remind us. And, and all those punters out there, sitting there on the mound, it's uh, it's testing the uh, the comfort thresholds. Got people on the marquee there. Right about now, you just wish you had a trailer full of three by threes that you know you could rent out. The people would you know pay top dollar for that maybe, but. It's just enough of a light sprinkle to uh, force some of the folks to uh, to seek the shelter. We've got other people sitting through it. We've got the hardcore fans are sitting through it. Good on to you. Good on to you. People with the marquee. It was more than just shade. A little bit of that shelter certainly helps. But obviously, if it gets too much, the folks will be packing up and heading. We've got you know, plenty of undercover area here near the canteen. It's actually not a bad opportunity. The lineup for the food's all obviously gone out the door now because of that. But um, yeah, it's it's too early. They're too busy. I was going to ask, you know, for the first, you know, steak steak burger to hit the tower, but yeah. we're not we, we're not going to ask for that. Yeah. We're not going to ask for that just yet. And that's the thing. The uh, the canteen here at uh, Warwick Dragway certainly one of the best at any uh, drag strip I've been to, uh, as far as the quality of the food. As I said, some of the best hot chips I've ever had here. Absolutely. At Canteen. Word. Uh, but of course, this weekend we've also got a couple of food trucks out there. If you've got a hankering for some uh, German wiener, um, get in, get yourself a feed, um, get over and see the Aeroflow funny cars. They're all uh, starting to set up here, I think. Where are they? Oh, yeah, they're on the other side there. Yeah, you can see that's almost like sideways. It's almost just like sideways rain there. It's just sort of blowing in um, across the track. Obviously, some of it does hit the track. Of course, but uh, a lot of it's kind of just um, given us that little bit of grief that, um, you know, we can only sort of deal with um, when we can. And that means when it stops, we can get into it. So we're just going to see what this does, folks. And then after that, uh, we'll just, our volunteers, they'll hook in and get this thing all sorted again. No doubt about that at all. But um, for now, while it's doing this, well, our action, has, unfortunately, has to, uh, to slow right down. But we've got to thank 1320 Motor Sports. Uh, and Warwick Dragway for uh, the Navy Rights uh, sponsorship of this um, fantastic reintroduction to the court. Well, introduction. We shouldn't say reintroduction. Yes, it's a grand opening of the of the quarter, but we've been running down the eighth here for uh, a couple of months. Um, so it's uh, good to see that um, that now, now we're on the full quarter. It's good to see so many competitors want to come out and do that, and so good that uh, the uh, the Aeroflow uh, Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars wanted to come and be a part of this great day as well. Um, really, um, you know, giving that um, that uh, big time funny car action to the, uh, to the regional tracks, and uh, we can't wait to see them go down a little bit later on. But we are scheduled to go today and tomorrow here as well. So it's not just all today; it's about tomorrow too. We do know that this is the light stuff that was going to come through, and of course, it's like a magnet. A drag strip's like a magnet for this sort of stuff. Unfortunately. Um, no, the government hasn't acknowledged us yet as being a um, reliable source of rainfall. Um, we can break a drought anywhere, we really can. Uh, <laughs> we just have a drag race. As they say, 
Uh, you know, if you if you want to break a drought, just hold a drag race, as as you say, and uh, it seems to work quite regularly. Uh, we also got to thank uh, for the left lane sponsorship. It is Golby's Parts and Fabrication, of course, based out of uh, Toowoomba. Um, they ship worldwide every day, Golby's. Uh, another uh, local success story. Um, PSR Pro Street Radials, they sponsor the uh, the right lane as well. They've come on in leaps and bounds as well in the last year or two, and uh, they are the tyre of choice for a lot of our quick street cars. First onto the scene, and, and it's been quite a success story for them. The um, That's right and left lane, and uh, we've got to thank, of course, Loy and Sons Earth Moving, Long Boost Performance, Pulsar Turbo, Zuma Signs, and all of our great bracket sponsors that are uh, supporting our weekend, uh, including Supercharged Outlaws being Loy and Sons Earth Moving, uh, 28 versus 275, uh, thanks to Viking Metalcraft. We haven't seen those guys yet, uh, these, uh, these categories. Uh, Outlaw Bike, I think we saw the end of that. SVA Transport and Couriers Modified, we're seeing that right now. Peter Lay Custom Imports. Super Sedan was Unreal Plates uh, as, the, as the sponsor. Spottings Painters is a sponsor of Super, Sweet, uh, Super Street. QMS SC, uh, Queensland Mobile Safety Certificates, is the sponsor of the Junior Bike category. Uh, rolling Repairs uh, for Junior Dragster and Jungabunga Racing for the 8th Mile Masters. And we've, um, we've seen some good stuff already and plenty more to come. Uh, as the afternoon and tomorrow roll on. And just as you know, as we're talking about it, a lot of that sort of annoying drizzles kind of petered right off there. And um, before you know it, you know, if, 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 you're all, if you're all sitting up there on the mound or in the grandstands and you got a little touch of the moisture then and now you get that beautiful breeze through, you'll be, you'll be, needing, you'll be needing to go grab your hoodie then shortly. You, you know what I mean? You'll need to be, you'll need to be um, getting the warm clothes on shortly. Hmm? It's, it is cool out there, and I think if you've, if you've copped a little bit of that moisture now, the breeze has come through, you will be nearly shivering, which you wouldn't think we'd be talking about. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and I'm hoping it doesn't get too cold because uh, I was very unorganised. Oh, oh, so am I. I did not bring any sort of jacket, hoodie, anything like that. So I am under... Oh, yeah, no, well, I'm underprepared too, Chris. Yeah, what you, should, should, we bring, should we have brought a jumper to Warwick? No, oh, okay. Well, uh, well, we're both underprepared then. I've only, yeah. I've only been coming out here for like 20, 25 I know. I, still haven't I think we always bring a jumper to, to Warwick. Oh, well, I think we're just always trained, isn't it? You know, that it takes us half the year to prepare for summer and then the rest of the year to prepare for winter, except we just don't know when the quite... It's only going to be the one time, you know, where you, you freeze, you know, you either... You either you either sweat your ass off or you freeze your ass off. There's two different ways to do it. Um, there's nothing in the middle, is it? No, that's, that's you get caught once. You get, we'll put it this way. At least in summer, if you're so hot, you can only cool down so much without being a nudist and being arrested. But at least in winter, you can layer up to a certain extent. But you just can't get rid of that heat, mate. I think that's the one thing that we've, um, we've all got used to. And even though we've had a couple of humid days um, this week, and in fact, talking to a lot of people, um, you know, um, December, January was just next level, next level humidity and, and temperature, um, which is just, you know, no wonder why we don't pack a jacket. We're a bit slow on the old uptake. I don't need one yet. I, I, had, a, I had a choice of a couple to bring, but I didn't. And you know what? I didn't even, I didn't think I needed it. I thought it was going to be too warm to wear the Queensland jersey, so I didn't. I, I'll have to run home tonight and get it <laughs> just so I can um, at least layer up with multiple layers of maroon anyway. But you can just see that light stuff. It's just so light and frustrating, but the sun's sort of trying to peek through. So I tell you, I'm going to, I don't know, the hot chips, the, um, the uh, what would you say, the wiener? Blake's got the wieners there. The German wieners. I might have to go hot chips, German wiener, and nut, I think. Yeah, um, it does sound very That's good. it, folks. So, look, give us a few minutes and then... Um, We'll, uh, we'll be back and see where we are with some action. But that's good that that sun's there because, honestly, whatever sort of blew and flickered around there is probably not going to hurt us much or slow us down much. Um, the way that that was delivered, like a fine mist, that's not so bad. We could probably cope with that. And, Phil, we'll be back shortly with more. And, folks, yeah, don't go anywhere. In fact, get your friends up here and say, yeah, look, yes, you might have copped a shower. Don't worry about it. Come up and be a part of it. It's... Uh, it's God's own country up here, and uh, we definitely need to be supporting great venues like this because this is, you know, you know, our grand opening of the quarter mile. Uh, we've got Nitro. We've got a lot of South East Queensland's best races here as well. Um, so it's a great place to be. So um, stick around, and we'll be back soon.
Ford for Simon Iwanu. Far now, 102, half track, 419, check this one out, 49, 102, half track, 419, check this one out, 49, 
All right, folks, so uh, Junga's, Junga's called like an official 30-minute break from proceedings as we let everything sort of carry on like it's doing, folks. That's, we don't seem to have anything behind this, so whatever this is, we're just going to cop it and we are going to get on with dealing with it after, obviously, we get to that stage. But, folks, we are all go. We are all go. And this has come through as fast as it should hopefully leave. But it's sort of still very blustery. It's a lot of sideways stuff. It's light. And we need, yeah, we need squidgies here inside so we can see out. So it's kind of coming, coming across the track. So as you can see how light it is. In fact, you can see the blue sky sort of up there in the, uh, the distance. So it's the blue sky we're looking for. And uh, folks, take this opportunity, grab that merchandise. We've got some, so much good merchandise here that you can grab. Of course, the world-class food is, is going out the door. We've got a big lineup of people do, taking this opportunity to go and get some. And a lot of people, yeah, if you want to come in, there's a bit of shelter here. We've got this sort of nice covered area just near the canteen. So right near the 1320 Motorsport marquee is some um, shelter there if you want to go and find some shelter there, folks. And um, you know what, there's nothing wrong with a, a, a shed or a sheltered area full of good drag racing fans. And uh, you know, we can have a good chat, good opportunity to uh, catch up actually now. I know it's a bit a bit sprinkly, but it's a good opportunity to catch up. And um, so many people I haven't seen in a long time um, around the place. So just uh, chat amongst yourselves. We're gonna let this come through. As you can see, it's blue sky all the way around there. So whatever's in these clouds, we're just going to let it go and then we'll deal with it. But you know what? We've had a bit of heat on that asphalt today. So that's kind of kind of work in our favour. So we've had a little bit of temp laid up. So that'll knock down a little bit of it for now. But it will, um, it will just uh, need uh, a little bit of a, uh, a delay as we let it go. There's no point fighting it while it's doing it. We've been rubbing the sled all over it and uh, all we can do is just sort of let it let it go, just let Mother Nature do what it's got to do and then hopefully we're going to get all that blue sky after this and then we can get back to getting everything dry and running again. So just bear with us while this all happens, folks. So good opportunity to have that reunion that you haven't had for a while. Catch up, have a chat and um, yeah, talk about what, how you've been this year, what you're looking forward to this year, more of the same bit more drag racing this year obviously going to be happening here and uh, a decent uh, calendar of events here at, uh, at Warwick Dragway this year so we can talk about that see what you got coming up project wise or whatever get in and uh, and have that chat now and that catch up because once we get going again it'll be all action on track but even now you can see that blue sky coming over that's the stuff we want to see that's the only time that we rate the color blue as anything favorable State of origin time. We just want to, We just. We just want to. Hey, just want to kill the blues. But blue sky. We'll we'll tolerate that. We'll tolerate uh, the blue sky. So, not bad. This is good. Blue sky, the track, just that uh, sort of thing. We've got a nice coating on it of uh, water, but we're going to get into that as soon as we uh, find necessary.
Okay, folks, the sun is out. It's looking pretty good. We're just going to get this track dry and we'll be uh, back underway, I'm sure. But uh, great opportunity to get and get uh, get some food and some drinks. We've got the canteen there. They do awesome chips, as I've been saying all day. Uh, and, of course, we've also got the German Wiener Man. We've got uh, the decadent donuts. We've got coffee, coffee vans both sides of the track. Make sure you get out there and get some stuff. Uh, also, we haven't mentioned yet, uh, because I've only just found out, is there is uh, Warwick Dragway merchandise for sale. They've got awesome t-shirts, awesome hats, stubby coolers, uh, and it's all for sale uh, in the tent there near the canteen. So if you go head towards the canteen, get some food, you'll see the big, massive tent, and they are in there. They've got some really cool shirts and hats and stubby coolers for sale. Make sure you get down there and grab some of that stuff and uh, make sure you don't miss out. Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house. Shake it up, shake it up, she got her hands on her knees and she bringing a cake out. Smoke it up, smoke it up, I got some gas, some packs, I'm up in the greenhouse. Ball it up, ball it up, I'm with the game, we taking shots off the rebound. F*** my post to say now, I've been humble too long, yeah. Tell them all to stay calm, yeah. Tell them all to move on, yeah. F*** my post to say now, they be lost in the sauce, yeah. Took a loss, that's your loss, yeah. Had to get my point across, yeah. Heard them lasers talking now that we don't pay that no mind. Didn't need to watch them know that I be here in no time. Put a candle on it, had to tell them they could blow mine. Lights, camera, action, a hey, show. Hey. Hey. Smoking that dope from Mad Men. Ellie. We the new meth and red men. No we ain't real blood, but we bread drinks. Run up a check and it's pending. She talking my news, what's we'll send them? The fam, you a dead man. Jesus, peace on my pending. And we still independent. So, yeah, we trending. Watch what you say, don't offend them. They keep in the real, they commend them. People like get your wife pregnant, but I ain't trying to be dependent. I need money, never ending. I'm talking a hundred percentage. I need the only you rent it. Whoa. Step, step, step in the spot and watch how they panic. Yeah, we the duo, you know we dynamic. When we outside, we be stopping the traffic. Breaking their necks, them they upset. How them boys doing more when they got less? How they on this and how they on that? How they got this and yeah, how they got that? Too busy watching us, they need to stop that. Talking my shit, you know we gon' pop that. See it, I like it, yeah, I'm gon' cop that. When we on top, how you on top that? Nah, you ain't got nothing on us. I'm steady calling your bluff. Pass me the split, need me a puff. You don't want smoke, tell them that's tough. Yeah, yeah. Heard them lasers talking now that we don't pay that no mind. Didn't need to watch them know that I be here in no time. Put a candle on it, had to tell them they could blow mine. Lights, camera, action, a hey, show time. Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house. Shake it up, shake it up, she got her hands on her knees and she bringing the cake out. Smoke it up, smoke it up, I got some gas, some packs, I'm up in the greenhouse. Ball it up, ball it up, I'm with the game, we taking shots off the rebound. Fuck my post to say now. Too long, yeah. Tell them all to stay calm, yeah. 
G'day Overtakers, here we are, Palmyra Dragway, up north, northern edition, a road trip drag challenge. We have made the road trip, we've headed up from Brisbane, we've just driven, what, 12 and a half hours yep. uh, to get up here to what an amazing spot. This is. is so good, the, and the people here are awesome. So, and the um, weather's turned it on for us. We were a little worried about the rain yesterday, but uh, how good is the weather now? We drove up here in the rain, and they've done an amazing job of getting this uh, track dry, ready to go, the blue sky. There's a couple of clouds, not many at all. We've got racing, we've got road trip action, drag challenge action. The guys are just out doing a driving leg right now, and we're getting ready for day one of racing. Yep. So, uh... Why don't we uh, cut straight into a bit of the action on the driving lake? Yeah, let's see what we got. All right, mate, run us through what the deal is here. Yeah, so, mate, we're at uh, day one checkpoint, so about um, 35 k's from the track up the Pioneer Valley. So the guys have got to call in here and pick up one of these um, cards from Performance Parts Plus, and then we put their entrant number on the back. And then at the end of the day, when they hand in their um, time slip today, they must hand in this as well to show that they've been to the checkpoint. And that's uh, pretty much it, and very similar tomorrow. Hey mate, how's it going? Good. Are you loving it so far? Uh, not so far, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks to these boys for letting us in. I know we're late, but yeah. No. So, uh, so what happened? Uh, so I got me dizzy locked out at 30 degrees. I had to buy a different rotor button uh, to stop rotor phasing. So that part of the actual rotor button come loose, so the rotor button moved, and yeah, time and went out. Oh no. That's all it was. One loose screw. You got it running. Yeah. You're back in the race. Yeah. Hope you have a good day, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. No worries, lad. See you back there. How awesome was that, catching up with a little bit of what was going on at the checkpoint? Yeah, it's great work, Brad, out there doing the camera work. Well, we're setting up the live stream here, so you've probably already watched the live stream, but now you get to see all the recap action. Where was it? That corner? It's this yeah. corner. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't know. Out. One of us is right. It's time for some racing. Let's see what's going on on the track. Let's race. Let's do it.
down here at the Mackay Marina today, mate. Um, run us through the process of what we're doing today. Yeah, so mate, pretty much the same as yesterday. So we had a great day on the track, and then uh, today the guys obviously had their drivers briefing, uh, given a new location, which is out here at the beautiful Mackay Marina. So they've had to do the run down here this morning, um, check in and pick up their card for their checkpoint, and then back to the track, and then on track from 11 o'clock. So uh, it's been a great day. Weather's held out for us, and going to be some fantastic racing this afternoon. Sure will be, mate. I'm keen to uh, keen to get back and watch it. How about you? Mate, I'm going to go and do a Mercy Dash and pick up some E85 and then I'll be back to watch it all afternoon, mate. Can't wait. Thanks, mate. Kane, I know you're puffed because you just had to push the car down here, mate. You, you absolutely, two tons, we're all good. You, you absolutely lunched the dip in it. Yep, destroyed that thing real good and proper. I always said that uh, Borg Warner M78 would be better than a 9-inch because less rotating mass and all the rest of it. And I put one in a week ago and then we've absolutely destroyed it. And then I, uh, the guy that I sold the 9-inch to originally, he's come back to me and said, well, you can have it back. So now we're going to get it here and rip out the Borg Warner and throw the 9-inch in and then... Try not to destroy it. Again. <laughs> so you'll be you'll be racing again this weekend. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, don't start till ten thirty tomorrow. So we'll have a couple bit, not a couple beers. We won't have any beers at all. And then, yeah, the boys, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll pull that out, put the nine inch back in, and race it. 
Well, not bad, Kane. Look, I can see the guys at Kane. What did they? What did they say? We've got to watch out for the Kane train. Yeah, we. Watch out for the Kane train. Big boys coming. Sorry, Mum. We can catch up with you. We're here with the uh, the rider in in the Corolla because. It scares the shit out of me all the time uh, on the start line. Mate, the bangs and pops this thing. Uh, do you ever get used to it in the driver's seat? Oh, mate, I love it, so I'm definitely used to it. Yeah. <laughs> you love uh, seeing everyone in the mirror jumping, I bet. Yeah, mate, it, uh, everyone knows it's this car when they hear that. You do, actually, yeah. yeah. You, the first few times, the first few meets I went to, uh, it's like, what the hell? And then you're like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, mate, <laughs> we, we aim to please. <laughs> That's it, mate. How long have you had the car? Mate, uh, we're trying to figure that out before. I think I've had it six, seven, maybe even eight years. Yeah, yeah. right. And uh, look, it's been a, a fairly good combination for you. It's changed combination dozens of times. It, it, it started out aspirated, right. started out as a peripheral port, and then we went a fairly basic turbo motor with a basic turbo, and now we've got uh, drive-by-wire throttle and clutch um, switches and Haltech ECU and a heap of trickery into it now to try and make it go faster. Uh, and we're, this weekend we're, we've been actually running PBs. Every day of this event we've run a PB. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, now, you race this quite a lot. Yep. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, we try to get around as much as we can to a few different events. Um, throw the Rotary Action name and the STZ Automotive name out there. Yep. They're, the, they're basically the two sponsors of this car. Uh, anything this car ever needs, those guys are there for me. So. Well, mate, it certainly performs. now. Why, why this one to start with? You know, was it was it was, was there a passion for riders? Was it what, what, what was it that, that drew you to this car? Definite passion for riders. Yep. This car was supposed to be something to buy and race while I built my other race car. Oh, okay. So it was rotary powered when I bought it, and we built a better motor and put in it, just an aspirated one. Yep. Uh, and it's just evolved from there. I've got an 808 station wagon as well that was supposed to be the race car, right. but it hasn't turned a wheel in as long as I've had this car. Uh, so now we just persevere with this one. And the, what about the paint and stuff, mate? Did you do all that as well? No, mate. Uh, a guy in Brizzy built the car pretty much as you see it, except I've put the Combo Pro wheels on it. But we've basically changed everything underneath and inside the car. Yeah. So the outside of the car is exactly the way he had it, but underneath and inside it's completely changed probably half a dozen times since I've had it. Right. Now tell us a little bit about road trip you've done a few of these now and I think the last one you, you ha had plenty of issues and you were yeah fix it in the middle of the, the, the weekend but what brings you to road trip uh, mate it's just the best event I've ever been involved with it's so cruisy so laid back everyone gets along plenty of racing uh, you get to go for a drive with your family you yep. get to see all the other hot cars uh, Mick and Jane run an awesome event it's just nice and laid back and cruisy and it's fam family based and Good fun. Yeah, I think that uh, family atmosphere. We notice all the all the kids over playing footy and uh, behind the hill, and uh, yeah. definitely a family event. You yeah, know. my daughter's running around somewhere. We haven't seen her for about two hours, so she's, having fun. That's yeah, good. She, she's having fun. It's uh, you don't want to get be that other one, event where you are we done yet? Are we done yet? So uh, no, this is good. No, no, this this is definitely the way we like it, <laughs> mate. It is good. And what do you say to those people that are sitting at home and thinking, well, I wonder if I should have a crack at this? Uh, mate, just get out and have a crack. Yep. Doesn't matter how fast your car is to begin with. Uh, get out and have a go, and if you get the bug for it, you can always go faster. Mate, that is a that is a good one. Thanks for having a chat to us, no and uh, yeah, good luck out there for the rest of the weekend. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Hey Haley, you're here with the Skyline. Now, no RB sitting under the bonnet here, is there? Definitely not. <laughs> uh, get rid of that. It was, uh, what, what was, what's the plan here with the car? You've got a barrow underneath there. Um, when did that all happen? Um, so it recently got painted back in October. Yep. And before that, about six months, I was playing with an NABA, a um, barrow, sorry, and just seeing what it can do now that it's turbo. Okay, now it's pretty quick out there. What's your best time today? You're about to hand one in? Six eight. Six eight. So you're pretty happy with yeah, that? Yeah, pretty happy, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, uh, how many of these events you've been out and had to go out? Um, this is my first drag challenge. Yep. Uh, prior to that, just local. Well, that's probably perfect because I want to know what do you think of road trip drag challenge? It's been fantastic. It's been so much fun. It's pretty relaxed? Definitely. Very, very chill vibe. Everyone seems to just be having a great time. 
And I think there's a pretty uh, even uh, mix, because that's why I thought I'd come and talk to you as well. Another lady racer out here. There's a lot of lady racers here today. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's good to see some ladies getting into the sport. <laughs> yeah, and do you get a bit competitive amongst each other? No, no, more encouraging than anything because we want more to race. <laughs> That's the way, I love it. Um, now, where are we going to head with the car? Is there any more? Is this where you're, you're happy with it now? It's got a little bit more to go. Yeah? yeah. Any secret? Is it a secret squirrel stuff there? or? <laughs> no, the guys at Scott Speed and CPB Tuning are going to look after me and we're going to see how far we can push it. Yeah, okay. So. Is it uh, pistons and rods and stuff done in the bottom end, or is this a no, stock bottom? she's an NA. Oh, oh right, okay. Yeah. So, and Bell just Springs, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay, and you're out there running 680s? Yes. How good is that? It looks quick <laughs> down the track, you've got to be happy. Um, and uh, I was just looking in there, is it the ZF box as well? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. So beautiful on the cruises as well. Yeah, right, all those uh, overdrive gears. Yeah, you're loving life. How good's that? <laughs> Thanks for having a chat to us, Hayley. Right, thank but you. What, before we finish, what was your first car? My first car was the EL Falcon. Oh, so you've got there's something about Fords there as well. Yeah, look, good on you. Enjoy the only your way weekend. to get a ricer, put a barrel in it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll stir them up. See, see if you agree in the comments below. Thank you, mate. Thank you. After the first round of the DYO challenge, each driver then had to draw a card from the deck and that would determine who they went up against. Each driver had a buy-in where they got a peg and they could buy back in if they got out. Slowly it thinned down 
and then we were on to our final few.
How's he going? Good, mate. Good. good. Having fun? Yeah, just letting the tyres down for the next race. I nearly forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I had them up at 30 for the cruise and, um, yeah. Wondered why there wasn't much down. traction. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'll let them down and see how I go on this run. Nothing but wheel spin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. So I hear you might be the fastest in the family these days. I am the fastest days. now, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. What, it seems to be a trend at the moment with the ladies beating the, beating the boys. Yep. So, uh, yeah, is he, is he a bit jealous? He think? is. He's, he's finding it really hard. He does the big, you know, this. <laughs> drops ahead of it. But it's all in good fun. If, if he's anything like me, you know there's going to be upgrades coming now. Oh, he's got one going, don't worry. He said he's going to have the supercharger hanging out the bonnet and everything. <laughs> Are you having fun? A ball. Absolute ball. Yeah. Road trip, it's the thing to do, isn't it? Absolutely. Got to get out there and have a crack. Hell yeah. Keep enjoying it. Thank Will you. Uh, Frankie, tell us how, uh, how was road trip for you? Doesn't say much, but uh, yeah. Easy, around, around, around. <laughs> Lots of circles. Scooter, you and uh, little Frankie in there have been uh, chucking laps, mate. Yeah. Uh, road trip, you've, you've made a bit of a journey up here. Yeah, sure have, mate. I uh, come up from where you're in, just outside of uh, Caboolture there, and uh, love the event, so I had to come along. Um, yeah, wouldn't miss it, and I'll be here next year, for sure. Mate, it is, it is pretty good. Now, you're in the doll your own, so you're chasing a time. You're, um, you've done a lot of passes. Yeah, um, I haven't counted them yet, but I think there's 20 something. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, was, I was close, but um, yeah, I just kept bouncing either side of it, no matter what I did. And hey, it is what it is, and it's all about just having the fun. And, yeah, I love it. Yeah, did you do like a 59 chase and a 60? Uh, yeah, 595 chase and a 60, and a um, 8601. Chasing the eight six double O, mate. Uh, mate, that's uh, tormenting, isn't it? But uh, but it's all part of it, and it's fun, and you're, you're doing it, mate. Tell us about the truck. Look, it looks great out there. It sounds bloody amazing. Um, it sounds like you're going out there to run five seconds. Um, that'd be nice. But, uh, <laughs> no, she's just a little five one Cleveland with two V alloy heads, and um, yeah, just the really cool exhaust system by Fat Pipes and uh, Petrie, and. Um, yeah, when I put the dump pipes on, the whole lot works, and I, the kids loved it. They'd all come down to the fence and wave and cheer, and they even give them a rev. Mate, that, that's awesome. Now you do love road trip. You've done heaps. You said you don't like to miss them. Um, you're you're a sponsor as well. So uh, SFM is, is a sponsor of uh, one of the one of the. You're a class sponsor. Yep. Yeah, class sponsor. Um, this one, there was sponsorship spot left, so I grabbed it. So I think I've got a small tyre aspirated this year up here. But uh, back in Brisbane, I do the doll your own um, class. Yep. And uh, yeah, I'll keep on doing as long as I can because I don't plan on missing one. <laughs> oh, mate, that is awesome. But uh, yeah, you're always out here. We love to catch up and have uh, a, 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 a chat around the fire, I guess, or a yeah, couple of a drinks. A beverage or two, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a tall tail or two. <laughs> mate, it's it. and that's a big part of it too. So the people don't really see that at home, do yeah. they? You know, they might watch the live streams and they see a bit of the action, but. There's, there's a whole nother part to the event. Yeah, um, there's oh, there's a group of blokes over here. I only met them on the Friday and it's become good mates and then they needed parts, I had parts, gave them and it's just, they're mates that have come along and they've gone, um, we're gonna finish our cars, we're making sure we're back next year. And a few of them actually said they're coming to road trip in uh, November. So yeah, that just means more. Mate, it does, and uh, well, I think that November one, I would say, if you're thinking about it, you need to get on it quick. I heard that the last one down there sold out in 61 minutes. Yep, and uh, I think the tickets are up on sale on August the 6th, I think 12 o'clock, and yeah, if you want to come along, better get in quick. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, um, but there will be another one up here as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'll make the journey? Oh, it, yeah, it, for sure. It's not too hard? Uh, no, not no. for me. It is. It's something you really want to do, so, and I just arrange my time around being able to do it, and I've got good mates up here in Mackay too, uh, the Drop Bear crew, I met them at like my first road trip, and yeah, there's constant banter between us all, and full just, yeah, it's taking part the piss of it. all fun. the time, yep. yeah. and last night watching the Doll Your Own Challenge, you know, that whole hill up there was laughing and cheering, you don't hear that at a drag meet, like, that hill was full, and everyone was cheering on, this stupid van. I think it was a. Was uh, 
Yeah, what a, a Hyundai a, or something. Uh, yeah, like L- L- LVD, LVD, L- LVD parts yeah. van, the yeah. uh, performance parts. Uh, that was amazing. Yeah, those, those guys had a ball. So, uh, they, and they they do a lot of events too. Yeah, right. Eh? So yeah, but not not in the van normally. Well, he might change. <laughs> he might change. I did hear he was trying to make it lighter to go faster, and Dad upped him because <laughs> stop wrecking me van. That's the shop van. <laughs> <laughs> Classic guys, you've got to get out of here. Come along to one. Look, advocate here. He's going to tell you, you've got to be there. He yeah, wants, you, to you want to meet him at the next one, right? Yeah, come and see us. We've all got stubby coolers and come and have a good laugh and a good time. It's it's worth doing. Get on it. Get on road trip. Come and say good day to us out at the and next one. Follow the overtaken lane because these guys rock. <laughs> ah, thanks, mate. Cheers. How good was that? Road trip done and dusted. Mate, all the way up north, we've made the big trip up. This was a huge trip for us to get up here and live stream this one, so we, we do hope you like that. And then you've watched the recap now. Um, we, we, Go back and watch all the live stream for us and yep. give it a thumbs up and yeah, I'll stuff. Yeah, point to the right corner this time. Yeah, let's do that. In the meantime, mate, we've got to go. Like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. Come a member if you want to. Pick yourself up some merch. There's hats, there's, there's, there's new t-shirts, merch. I don't have it on. there's jumpers. Oh. There's, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff on there. We're, we're adding stuff. to it. Keep your eye on the website because there'll be more and we more popping up. We've got to get home. We've got to get home. All right, all right. We'll get, we'll get all right. out here. Yeah. Let's go. You sure you brought the right I've got my thumbs. footwear? They're comfy. This is going to be a long trip in thumbs. Mate, get the thumb out. Great to see a uh, pretty good looking uh, crowd out there and, and I'm talking about uh, size of the crowd and also the appearance of the crowd. Good looking crew out there I must say. I hope you're all enjoying it here at uh, 1320 Motorsports Warwick Dragway and uh, good to see so many of you out there enjoying the beautiful weather. We did have that little bit of rain before but that wasn't too bad. We're uh, nice sunshine now and Still got that little breeze there to keep us cool.
course. Hope you all had an uh, opportunity to go grab yourselves uh, something to eat and something to drink. Don't forget to, uh, we've got, not only do we have all the food trucks and all that sort of business over there on the canteen side of or, or the grassy mound side, uh, we also have a coffee van over on the control tower side, the scrutineering shed side, and uh, they is they are the place to go because at the moment there's no lineup so uh, you can go there grab your grab your coffee grab your hot chocolate grab whatever it is you want from there and uh, no lineup how cool is that well I hope they sell hot chocolate I just said they did and if they don't I'm in big trouble so uh, yeah I'm a hot chocolate man myself so I'll just say that because, you know, nothing better than a good hot chocolate. What was that? <laughs> well, besides a beer, a, a beer does trump it slightly, but I don't think they sell beers at the, at the coffee van. Maybe they should. I'm not too sure. I, I was quickly corrected when I said there's nothing better than a hot chocolate, and but I was... I was I should have made myself clear that I meant when it comes to hot beverages. And somebody's probably going to say, oh, what about a, what does that call it, whiskey, uh, whiskey coffee thing? Irish coffee. They have whiskey in it. Yeah, same here. I'm, uh, I don't drink coffee at all, and uh, I couldn't think of a worse way to destroy whiskey than to put coffee in it. There we go, back into action with Benita Marchant in the 505 cube big block Chevy. Nice looking car this one, it's not overdone, it's not underdone. Very classy looking, I like it a lot. So. We did see uh, Benita out here a little bit earlier, so this will be her second pass. In the big block powered rear engine dragster. By run for Benita as she's going into stage. Modified qualifying round number one. Looks a uh, nice uh, 0 0.06 reaction time there. 1.2 seconds to the 60 foot and she runs through uh, with an 8.03. 169 miles per hour. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, oh, looks like uh, that's probably the last car for Modified. I think um, the, when I said I saw Bonita come out early, I think uh, she came out and they pushed her back when the rain started. Pretty sure, something like that. Uh, so, sh yeah, so that was her first round of qualifying, of course, as we move into Super Streets. Whoa, big uh, pop there. Which car was that from? From the uh, RX-7, the turbo um, rotary. Of course, they do tend to do that, don't they? They pop, they make a scare the crap out of uh, <laughs> old mate on the start line there. That's, uh, don't have any information for the uh, very nice looking uh, first gen RX-7 there. But uh, the big Valiant Charger over there is Joshua Demetrius. Number plate on the RX-7 tells the story. Three rotor. So uh, we've got some pretty serious rotary action happening under the bonnet of that little green car. Turns the tyres hard off the start line. No problem there for the charger of Joshua Dimitrios. Let's see if the RX-7 can still drive around the outside of him. And the win does indeed go to the little RX-7, runs 1198, 105 miles per hour. And the charger of Josh Dimitrios goes a 1227. Couple of Commodores. We've got, uh, what's that? Uh, looks like a roundabout of VS and a roundabout of ET, something like that. Uh, out there now, Philip Yulton with the newer car and Bill Martland over there in the uh, was it PSR Street Radials line, uh, lane. Still getting used to the names of the new uh, lane sponsors, uh, but we are very grateful for them. The left lane, of course, is Golby's Parts and Fabrication. Right lane, PSR Pro Street Radials. I've been uh, talking about the old lane sponsors for I don't know, 15, 20 years, so it's a bit of getting used to. Mark 1 Cortina likes a good burnout. It's got the uh, cool old school stance as well with the nose down and the bum up to fit the big tyres under. So uh, Trevor Davis in that orange Cortina and he is lining up against Don Baird. The uh, information I have here is definitely wrong because it says Don is driving a 2013 Suzuki Hayabusa, which he is certainly not. Like uh, Trevor Davis just uh, went just a little bit too far forward. Just going to let him have another bite at that staging experience. We're pretty easy going here at Warwick Dragway. We don't worry about making people get everything perfect first go. Davis runs through with a 1068 over the quarter mile and 1319 for the silver car of Don Baird. Okay, yep, you're all right. All right, so I can't tempt you with one of those, Dave. 
Sorry, Phil, I was late, mate. I uh, halfway between the um, halfway between the wiener and coming back, I had to decide. Remember my plan, the decadent donuts. I had a few of your chips, but then didn't get the chips in. I went straight for the decadent donuts. So I, you can get a variety of different flavours there. It's, it's what they um, sugared them in, various flavours. Um, I just had a pine lime, but the rest are just normal, mate, so hook in. Gary Green and Nicole Goldie out there. Check out the XE for Nicole Goldie. You know, 10 years ago, you wouldn't look at an XE or an XD sideways, but now they are a thing of beauty. Fashion again, and those 1980s Falcons, just like the commies. You look at one now, you actually appreciate them because they are a good, they were a good shape. That's what, you know, that's what we used to race back in the 80s as well. You know, True Blue, Dickie Johnson, you name it. Another guy, Peter Brock. That history we're never going to lose. All oh, right, sorry. I remember when I was a young bloke and the XDs, XEs, XS come out. I didn't really like them much. Yep. But now you see them, like yep. this one coming out now. I reckon they look awesome. Just make, I know, but I think what they do is they get the right size wheel, they get a nice wheel under them, they actually get that attention, give it that sort of drag or hot street stance, and then you can't resist them. Bill Henry, one of the toughest um, all steel Fords around. This Fairmont works well, 1028 at 130 mile an hour, showing some pretty decent horsepower and a 1423 there for the Holden. Yeah, well, there's the shape there, the uh, the XD shape, that nuggety square shape, the first time that Ford deviated from the, the XC shape, just like Holden finished with, like the HZ. And then what did Holden have to do next? Well, they went to Europe for that shape. It went from Opal, you know, Opal to the Commodore, and then Ford, well, again, that was... An Aussie developed Falcon. Yes, there was a car in the uh, in UK called the Ford Granada, looked very similar. Um, but still basing that world um, world styling that was around into uh, into the current shape. And when the XD came out, um, word is that even even Ford Australia was not interested in homologating the XD for touring car. They actually had a deal with Colin Bond at the same time with Cortinas for the Australian Rally Championship. So there was no allocated budget by Ford to go touring car racing. It was a certain Queensland or Dick Johnson who actually did lobby the Federation of Australian Motorsport to homologate the XD. And his initial flare package that he proposed, they knocked back because it was pretty wild. Uh, 11.03 there for the XD, 11.72 there for the big Dodge. But, um, and then when Ford, when cams finally decided to homologate it they said oh dick we forgot can you tell us what the curb weight is for one so we can make sure that's that so he went and found the 3.3 three on the tree taxi pack xd and said that's the weight 1369 or something so dickie's xd kind of came in at the barest minimum weight and that was the six cylinder Not the check this out from your merit carl sunholm beside him Fitter rage, it says on the back. There is a plumber, it says he's a plumber. Um, but Kelly, great cotton grower, of course, the Kelly family. Um, been uh, in the agricultural game for decades. 11 11, that's tough. 12 93, likewise. Here we go. Terry Mansfield French, he gets a crack now. 557 cubes from memory. So, big stroker, big box stroker. Ford, of course. And beside him, What's that, like VH Commodore, Ron Beeson. Wheels up here for the wagon, let's have a look. Yeah, just got an end. Yeah, that thing thunders with that big block forward. And the uh, Commodore right there beside him, they hit the stripe now. And it's an 11.60 to an 11.75. God, we can almost have our own gasser class here today, Phil. Yeah, that's a couple of tough street cars. All right, what's that word there from race control? All right, all right, all right. So the next category to come to the staging lanes, 28 versus 275, is that right? 28 v 275. So 28 v 275 to the lanes, please. 28 v 275 to the lanes and supercharged outlaws to the lanes, please. Supercharged outlaws to the lanes and 28 um, the, 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 that little pre 
Prefect absolutely hammer off the line. That's an angry thing. Beside him is Warren Sander. Good old was the HK Premier. 11.24 to a 12.89. Excuse me, sir. Can you turn that Tesla down, please? Cover your ears, folks. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, it's the opposite of that, isn't it? All right. If you're ever curious to what one of these... Is this a plate? I think it is a plate. It's one of the, the Model S's. Heaven knows what it can run. That's Peter Taylor. John Riley's got the uh, the one-tonner. But have a look at the old plate go from here. Like, it's a real deceptive car. 679 to the 660. And out the quarter mile, 1063. 1063. I don't know, is that, I'd love to know what Australia's quickest Tesla time is. Not that it's a huge subject I'm going to chase, but 10.63. That sounds like a pretty decent run for uh, a car you can't hear. He'll have to get the batteries on that, keep up the date. Well, yeah, you know. That's, I guess that's the, the future. They, they, they're telling us it's the future. And, you know, maybe instead of having a toolkit out in the pit, we'll have yeah, a... Multimeter. No, no, you <laughs> can't charge it. Mark Russo down there, 502 cubes. And uh, Ray Ross. Oh, yes, Ray Ross. Ross to an 074 mic. Both guys, absolute guns. Wait till they strap dial-ins on these things in racing tomorrow. Someone's going to be taking aim the very first Warwick Dragway quarter mile awards for best in category. 10.32 to an 11.85. So can we get 28V275 to the lanes, please? Outlaw bike to the lanes. Supercharged outlaws. And exhibition to the lanes, please. So exhibition, 28.75. Supercharged outlaws and uh, outlaw bike. It's testing the short-term memory there. Adam Rin and Travis Greaves. More forwards for the Blue Oval badge at. 143 in the 60 for the XC. 635 and a half track. That's one stout XC. Oh, 996 for Adam and Travis Greaves. 1092. Oh, every shape and form. Long roofs, we've got panel vans. We've got Utes, and we've got a fair share of uh, absolute classic, classic muscle, and they'll never die. They'll never fade away, because too many people like them, and there's a whole group of people outside that that like them as well. They're just not old enough to have them yet. Cooper Lay is in the uh, the utility there, license plate cooped. You've been cooped. Uh, Dennis Hurl beside in his Green Holden Commodore. So um, yeah, shoot a shoot a Ute with a shoot. That's quick to boot. Coop's just getting this thing in. So careful to shallow stage. You're trying to get it in. There we go. Comes off 06, yeah, 069 to an 078. It's got that start line sorted. Just rolling through on that last amber. And uh, that's the sort of stuff that's taken plenty of wins for uh, for Coop running um, in the real street class, I think, at IHRA. 1164. And 11.28 there for Dennis. Yeah, well, we talk about uh, drag racer being a simple sport, but then you see that sort of skill level where they you know, really take their time and, and really know exactly where they want to put the car for the staging. And, uh, you know, it, it is a simple sport, but there is a bit more to it than, than at first glance. Absolutely. John Oliver spins it through low gear, but that's an angry, angry V8 in that thing for Johnny. Listen to it out the back. 10.16 to an 11.23. Oh. Yeah, these, these things just continue to step up and more and more potent, every pairing. God, they're just coming out of everywhere. You can tell that um, this part of the world, Southeast Queensland, they've all got itchy right feet. 
they all want to get it down. Phil Halpin in the panel van, Jay Allen in that Tirana. Both cranky cars. Look for the front end up on the Torrey. Oh, a little bit, not much. Phil Halpin, though. Oh, gets that turbo on S lined up there. Look at that pano start to fly. Gets to half track, 6.20. And uh, drops the Sandman out the back door. Nine, <laughs> 9.67 for the panel van. 9.67. 11.41 there for the, uh, the Tirana. Yeah, how's that one? Nine race down there uh, better reaction time uh, for Jay Allen but way better obviously Phil help and nearly caught him yeah that's uh, that's a hell of a uh, combo there for Phil and when that thing actually does hook up fully it's big wheel stand time Craig White out there in the Tirana Phil Edwards the big um, machine yeah we even got one of them is in there, El Caminos, good stuff. 11.88 to an 11.66. All right, they continue to roll on. So another call for Outlaw Bikes, Supercharged Outlaws 28V275 and Exhibition. Another call for them to the lanes, Exhibition to the lanes, Outlaws to the lanes, 28V275 to the lanes, Outlaw Bike to the lanes, please. All right, they roll them up here now. Bruce Hedge in the Tirana. Johnny Nation in that Camaro. Good run both sides. 10.43 and 11.23 for the Tirana. So good numbers. All right. One more car in this particular session. So 28V275 should be in the lanes. I see a couple of them in there already. We need supercharged outlaws, exhibition and outlaw bike to the lanes, please. All right, so this is Mackenzie Garside. So I'd say Mackenzie doing a little bit of license or performance testing here. Oh, a bit of a, getting the skid, getting the skid sorted a bit. Anyway, time to put this thing in the beams, attempting the uh, attempting the skid. But then the crew decided, all right, let's just put you in the beams. Very careful and methodical, Mackenzie. So not rushing up to the beams. You know, say sometimes you see people rolling up and say, oh, you're going to miss this, miss this start line. But Mackenzie gets it this far. Bit of performance testing, I think. He's got to spin the tyre on the hit, which isn't really a surprise because yeah, we didn't have a lot of luck in the skid. But look, that's not a bad uh, recovery. Little pedal, that was good. Zing the tyres, but was able to recover and then get back on it. And uh, goes through for a 12.60 at 123. Plenty of potential in that car by the looks of it. Uh, as you said, in the burnout, looked like uh, couldn't hold it on the brake uh, to get those tyres really spinning. And because of that, not enough heat in the tyres. And But still a great little pass uh, for Mackenzie Garside. And the car sounded great and obviously has a lot of potential. Well, look, there's still plenty of potential uh, left in our field. This 28 V275 class. Now that's brought to us by uh, Viking Metalcraft. So... That's if you want to run it, you know, a 28-inch 28, 28 slick or a 275 radial. I mean, it's a little bit of both. So you can come here on a, on a slick, 28 slick, or a 275 radial. And uh, the cars I can see in the lanes there, I would assume, will be in that class. Maybe, probably the trappies. There's the, uh, the Hellraiser panel van um, of Aaron's. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, Chris Carsberg and Shane Baker. That goes without saying, being Warwick, their home track. They're normally all on a 275, those guys. They may not have the 28s on them. They would probably have the 275 on them. Um, but the option is there for some if they want to just put that 28 by 9 style slick on there. It works, works well on some cars. Um, there's, a good, uh, there's a good category that's been run for a few years at Jamboree called Street 289, where all it is is 28 by 9, that's slick. Um, 
some guys hook up a lot, some guys spin, some guys use the spin as, you know, a part of the car's combination. Um, you find that's a good sized tyre that can work with multiple types of power, whether it's um, big block or small boosted engines. So I'm interested to see actually, we'll have to, it's gonna be hard from where we are, we almost need the binoculars to just check the back tyres on these things, but radials have a certain way they sit, you know, stiffer side wall, um, that slick you'll normally see would be a you know, traditional little bit softer sidewall. Um, it'd be interesting to see who, um, who reigns supreme out of that. Of course that radial, uh, that radial prep, well a lot of the times it's just got to have a whole bunch of glue on them. The whole idea of a radial tyre in drag racing is especially to try and dead hook that tyre. In other words you want that tyre to fully just grab you, right, grab right off the line and then you apply power that way. You can't spin them. They don't like betting, those tyres don't like getting spun. So it's all about dead hooking it. So that means you've got to slip that torque converter or have that lower power delivery just to keep that tyre hooked and you start to accelerate. Then it's about how you bring all that power in over the top. Um, it, it, it's still a science. I certainly appreciate it. I was watching that the other week, uh, Lights Out 15, watching you know the baddest radial cars in the world and how much suspension travel they have to have it's part of how you make those cars go down the track. Big suspension travel. You are dead hooking that tyre. You are planting that shock absorber into the ground and these cars sort of lurch out of the hole. They've got that much gap in the wheel arch at the back as they've got the suspension at full extension um, and bobbing the front tyres off the ground on the way down running, you know, 350s in the eighth. Um, even the 275 guys were running 360s in Pro 275. Um, so it is an art and uh, people are still um, quite curious about the, um, the, the the fine art of trying to get all that horsepower down on a radial tyre, but this 28 uh, V275 class, it'll be interesting to see who actually goes the 28 inch tyre route there. So another call for exhibition to the lanes, uh, Supercharged Outlaws, Outlaw Bike um, to the lanes as well. Um, you are uh, due for a run in that 28 275 class as well. So. A little bit of spray going down on both lanes. Having our decadent donuts here, they're pretty good. How'd you go? How'd you go? Yeah, well, Dave still can't have one. I mean... Very delicious. They're great donuts. Uh, as, as I said earlier, the cinnamon-type donut is my my jam, so to speak. Yes. When it comes to donuts, and they're a very good uh, example, for sure. I think I've been my favourite for about 50 years, I think. Yeah, it was... Um, for me, I think. It was trained, trained behavior. It was trained behavior. Basically, we the only time we ever knew we were going to get them is that we had to be really well behaved when we went shopping. Um, I think Mum made the mistake once when she decided, because we were going past the donut shop to go shopping, that she loaded us up with sugar at the beginning of the shopping trip. It did not. It did. Yeah. It did not. It did not end well for her that day. Well, actually, let me let me rephrase that. It did not end well for us. Because um, mum, mum certainly did have a hell of a forehand on her. Yeah, she was she, she was a she was a premier sort of level squash player. So that forehand, when you, when you got hit with that forehand, you got you got hit with that. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that would normally then happen at the end of the shopping trip. You'd get your three cinnamons on the way out. But now that I'm a grown adult and have my own money in my, my wallet, I can go and buy six decadent donuts like I just did. Especially when the wife's not around. Well, that's her. She, she she would know. Um, how good was the uh, how good was the the wiener? Wiener was good too. Yeah, enjoyed that one. You went the spicy one too. I'm, I'm a little bit brave like that, and it was good. I enjoyed it. Just not too much spice, but just enough. That's right. That's good. That's perfect. And um, don't forget, I'm going to go and ask our our friend in the coffee shop over the uh, behind us here in the tower how he's been going. And, you know, one of the things that sometimes people don't feel like a hot coffee, you know, what's a big thing? Ice coffees, where if they can do ice ones, I'm going to come and probably grab one of them. And as I mentioned earlier... Ice coffee and donuts, yep. For a non-coffee drinker like myself, the hot chocolates, that's the way to mm, go. Mm. Good stuff. And uh, you find that most of these little coffee vans do an excellent hot chocolate. So even if you don't like coffee, certainly get over there and grab yourself, as you said, a uh, hot, hot chocolate or, as you said, maybe an iced coffee. Good stuff. Just having a bit of a look out there. They're doing a little bit of spraying there. Um, we had a few more, um, few more guys out there, maybe from some of the Aeroflow teams. Yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got the Exib 275 cars coming out now. 
And as you said, especially after that little chat we had from Chris there about the science behind the tyres, it's going to be very interesting to see how these cars go. And as you said, some of these cars running the 28 inch uh, slick and some with the 275 radials. So uh, it will be very, very interesting to see how they go, how they each type of tyre manages to hook up. And uh, so that was that was great listening to Chris talking about the, the, the science behind those two tyres. So uh, you guys out there will be able to watch these cars now and uh, and see how each type of tyre actually relax, reacts and how they're all set up. Anyone, uh, anyone missing a, a like a little lens extension, a lens shield off a camera? It'll be down. It's a lens hood. It's a lens hood. Um, it'll be down at scrutineering. A Tamron. All right, Ben Robertson. Just had a little trouble lighting the tyres up there. What a beautiful VZ. Beautiful, mind you. Look at Bakes V8. It's real sleeper. Ran seven second ETs at Drag Challenge down at Tail and Bend last year. Built in the shed here in Warwick. All right, Bakes. He's through the line by the sound of it. Let's see what his first hit's like. Socks. Oh, not happy, not happy. Might have just disturbed the 275 on the lead, but. That car, remember, that is still sporting the three, like five five Holden engine. So I do say three oh eight, but I, I think you know three five five. Most guys that want to stay with the Holden V eight engine, they go to that if they can get it. The VT, that last VT engine, roller cam. You might have that one. I don't know, but it is. Um, it's, it's one of Australia's fastest Holden powered street cars. I think he's only second behind uh, Bubba Medlin by about a tenth. Bakes, um, built all in the garage at uh, Shane's Bikes and Bits in Warwick. Here's another Warwick uh, guy that ran sevens down at Drag Challenge at uh, Taylor and Ben last year, Chris Carsberg. So the, the Warwick guys went all the way down there and drove around um, South Australia and Victoria last year with these cars and ran sevens on the last day. Aaron Gregory, what can you say about this? HR panel van. They're both turbo LS powered, these things. Let's see how they go getting it down. Now, Carsberg normally does just stay on that 275. I don't know, maybe Aaron might have, uh, yeah, he might have a 28.9 on. I'm just trying to have a look. Let's have a look at the attitude of the car as he leaves the line. Oh, oh just. Chris Carsberg, he sort of walked it off the line and that horsepower, look at that horsepower. So 593 to a 591 over the 660. 593 to a 591, do you see that was a heads up pro tree to the 660. 593 to a 591, but. kind of sort of rolled what it normally does it's, it's never real I've never seen the car hit extremely hard but it is just what happens in that first 60 feet that he walks that thing out and you can just see how much horsepower that car's got um, you know it's definitely um, one of Queensland's quickest street cars Greg Trapnell Trappy back says here 500 and well it says the HQ had 571 cubes this thing could vary a couple of hundred cubes who who would know what trappies have, trappies have put in it, you know? Hey, Jeffrey, is it? Oh, it's Greg on the entry, so Jeffrey, there's Greg. Jeffrey. So Trappy en enters it, but his brother drives it, so it is actually Jeffrey driving, I believe. No Greg. I think we're gonna send Trappy on his own, Jeffrey on his own. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, that was one of those. Let's just try everything uh, launch, see what it had, and that's what it had. All right, here we go. Alex Bamford coming through the water, and that might be Jaden Leeson, considering we saw saw photos on uh, YouTube.
And there goes his hat. There goes Chris O's hat. Woof, off it goes, off it goes. First hit. That's what happened on the lights out a couple of weeks ago. The blower cars come through the water and like 10 caps go into the air. Did you see that? Love that stuff. You're never ready for that. You never know where the zoomy, you never know when a zoomy header is actually lined right here. Got to get you right here, it does. Talk about blow your doors off, just about blow your ears off. So how's this, Alex Bamford, so blowing small, I think it's still a small block. Now Buster, I think he's got like a 350 Chev style engine on board, the little Corolla. How good does it look? 28 V275, but they're nearly all on a radial, they're nearly all on that radial. Another call, Supercharged Outlaws Exhibition and Outlaw Bike to the Lanes, please. All right. Jaden in the little Corolla. Alex already in. Well, you can tell when the blowing car's off the throttle, 650 to a 721 over the, uh, the 660 distance. So it hit, uh, it hit hard enough. It looked like it hit hard enough, but look, the tail of the tape shows 151 in the 60 for the HQ and a 157 in the 60 for Buster. So nearly, nearly identical 60s. Oh yeah, here we go. Juan Kudnick, what can we say about Juan? Multi-time Super Street and Super Sedan champion. Built, this was his street car that he's had for years. It was a um, like a centrifugally supercharged small block, and then he, he then he put a turbo in the boot, so then it was compound turbo blown with a shot of NOS in the middle. I don't know what wine's up to now, whether he's lost the blower and still kept the turbo. I don't know, where is it? So wine's got some stuff going on, but this is still like a 4,000 pound, normally pump gas, Streetcar, Leaf Spring, but let's see if it blows any. Maybe he might have gone to the magic door. Look at him go. One Kudnick over the 660, 582. That's what I said, 4,000 pound streetcar on Leaf Springs on a 275. He might even have less than that. He's tried 235 tyres before as well. 582 at 130 mile an hour. 712 there for Johnny Dark in beside. So you never see too many sets of dragway indies turned into a beadlock, but if, uh, if it can be done, Juan will be the man to do it. You will not be punished by silence. In fact, you will be greeted by some big super chat. Well, look at the uh, the black ute beside. No blower for him, but turbo's on a hemi. So yeah, he can be in that supercharged outlaws. And again, another Southeast Queensland car that if you've been around the scene long enough, have seen the evolution of this car. James Horrod, Full Race Fabrications and Torque Converters, has built this car. Initially started with a twin turbo Toyota V8. Got it down into the mid to low sevens. Then went to big block Chev, knock it on the sixes. Then he put a Hemi in it. And I think last year he ran his first three second eighth mile time. So he must be on a 275 or a 28 if he's in this class, which is a step down in tie size from what he's normally used to. He's normally he's normally on a 315. But this is supercharged outlaw, so he can be on a 315. I'm, I'm thinking we're still in that just because I'm looking at the small tire on the outlaw car. Steve Tatum. Who knows? Who knows? He could be a 28 on that. Could be a 28 on Steve Tatum's Avenger. Oh, he's just wheel spinning both sides. Now, of course, it was more obvious on Steve Tatum's side, but you can hear that big blown V8 as he pedals it. So they're both on 275s in. So that was the that was the uh, the hot news. Now Simon Graham, here we are. Like Simon's been putting this. Camaro together for a little while as well. He's been a guy that's had a few cars over the years, but you know, they come and they go and he finds something else he wants to do. And 
Here he is having a crack at this one. Was driving for the Dubelmans there as well. Great to see the uh, Yenko signage on the side too. He's sort of gone with the Yenko theme. And uh, anyone into Camaros would, would know that that's kind of like the the uh, the sacred cow of Camaros. And uh, so great to see he's uh, set up the car in that with that look. It looks absolutely magnificent out on the track like that. Yeah, Simon never sort of turns up with anything not half good looking. Sums up the bloke himself. He's a very good looking man. Used to call him the Gold Coast Glamour Boy many years ago. And I'm glad that I'm his mate, not his enemy. Because he's quite an imposing character if you were to see him. Don't judge a book by his cover. When you see him, you just go, whoa, I'm not talking to him. Ah, he's nice, just a big pussycat. Can steer. Yeah, blows the tyres off again. <laughs> it's got plenty. It's got plenty. 744 at 112 with not much of anything, but still plenty. Definitely plenty. Two, sometimes I like it when you see that demonstrational span. And sometimes it's better that it's, you know, power wheeling down the track and bobbing the front end in the air and the ET comes up. But sometimes I just love it when it doesn't hook up and they try to hook it up. That's when you actually sense how much horsepower these cars have got when they load and unload. Exactly. But he just especially as you said the car just unloaded the tires and that but then when it did get traction it took off like like the proverbial cat on a hot tin roof oh yeah they'll be uh, they'll all be on that combo so that's the one class there where you know we saw we saw it in super sedan we see it in modified you see the big tire cars the big slick tires they'll just go down these tracks a little bit lighter they don't have as much horsepower, but what we saw of that 28V275 class is a lot of horsepower everywhere. But that small tyre, that small tyre racing, and again, we can't really attribute to back, I suppose, when the small tyre revolution came into the sport. I suppose it came back to, it's always been little 28.9 class, or Outlaw 10.5 was massive worldwide. Remember when Outlaw 10.5 was out there? And everyone could compete, so it was blowing Hemi door slammers against imports and everything in between, and the 10 and a half inch tyre was the equaliser. Um, that's kind of what makes small tyre racing still quite appealing, is that that one common denominator is you got to hook it up on this tyre. Bring any power adder, bring any engine you want, and really, you could weigh just about anything you want. That tyre is going to dictate whether you do well or not, and uh, it is. It gives a false sense that you can end, get into entry level, and you can until you realise that you're not fast enough. Here we go, Dylan Lacey and Russell Lacey. Skull buggery is on the back of the black boozer. And how about the blue boozer? These are the outlaw bikes, what a category. Outlaw bike. Brought to us by SVO Transport. I'll put this one decadent donut over here. Kim uh, Kim Beans just messaged me to say that she actually got like the there was like a lemon, a lemon flavoured one. She said absolutely to die for. So it's the actual sort of frosting slash sugar mix is where the uh, that lemon frostings come in nicely. All right, keep your eye out here, folks. Why well, we got the red light up the top there? No, boys, boys, boys. Might have to roll back. See that red light come up in the middle on the tree? Both boys pumped to go. No, I'm trying to suss out why the red light popped up there. There's a little red staging light. Unless, unless that means one of the beams is out or something, maybe. I don't know. One of those front beams. I don't know. They, we, we, know that we, we know that they both put the bulbs on. So actually, we know that probably the staging beams are fine. Hopefully rectification won't be too far away. But that was just the one thing that stops the tree being thrown. It's just this one little red light's popped up in the middle.
I just wonder whether that's actually stopped it being able to throw. That's all right, the IT department's onto it and we're going to solve that out. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Phil. Just unscrew the bowl. But so let's just see. If To see if we can throw that, uh, th throw that scenario through. So we might just do a little test of the uh, little test stage there, or something. We might be sending, just going to send the quad bike down to make sure that that's indeed the thing. The last thing we want is these two guys to um, to go in there and go for a run and and not get a slip. I know that sometimes it happens, and it's. It's almost the worst thing that can happen sometimes when you reckon you've had a really good run. You go, man, that felt so good. What did I get? And then you realise, oh, I didn't get it. No time. Because just sometimes they... Um All right, so that looked like that worked. So that little tower, something called a tower ready lights come up there. So Jungus just wanted to make sure that that was going to um, break the beams the right way. And um, we're going to deal. We're going to deal with the red light district now. We're going to remove the red light. But that did just sort of pop up there, and we'll, we can solve that problem real quick. But Jago just wanted to go out and stage and make sure that that actually worked. And it's gone out by itself. So as soon as you go up the touch, it the thing's gone out. Very clever. All right, as you were, gentlemen, you might need another skid, or you're ready to go again. Jago's back. All right, so these are our outlaw bikes brought to us by SVO Transport and Couriers, the Lacey boys, Russell and Dylan. All right, that wasn't too long. There was a couple of minutes there. Maybe the guys will be right. They've got a sort of a square-sided slick on both, as much as you could call it square-sided. All right, the boys, the Lacey boys, ready to run their outlaw bikes. Bit of clutch slip there and a bit of moving around for Dylan. Got to see, uh, got a stuff coming through there and uh, no info forthcoming. No info forthcoming for that. So Russell, I'm sure, is happy that he just get, got nothing for that. pairing of outlaw bikes. Run through, run through, but no, uh, no time up for that. So we'll get on to that and see what's going on. Ah, right, we're going to roll that over. Yeah. There we go. Blown a hole. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. That's it's a relief that it happened there. Jung is right on it. Jung. Yeah, mo yeah mop, and bu mop and bucket to lane one, please. Mop and bucket to lane one. Whoa. That's uh, that's technically dropped its guts. Lucky enough, it's only its cooling system guts. Unless I know oil comes in all sorts of colours these days. I don't know what it is. It could be just cool it. It's all right. So if that's cool, it, that, look, that's a relief where it is. I mean, that's kind of our burnout area. If that was anywhere, heaven forbid, on our you know racing surface per se, you know, anywhere from start line anywhere down the track, that's not easy stuff to get up. Maybe at least 
there. After a few good skids, that area is probably very much mint, but so much harder to get that off a racing surface if it was out on the track. And, and I, look, heaven, heaven. Uh, well, imagine if uh, he was doing 100 mile an hour while that, when that happened. Oh yes, that would not be good to have it uh, go there. So we're just uh, sorting that out. And uh, we did have the, our other bike out there ready to, to rumble, but yeah, we've just had to go out for a little bit of a quick search out there on the quad as we scroll through and um, sort out some uh, other little knickknacks. But how's uh, how's that, eh? When it's going to go, it's going to go. Oh, and speaking of coming and going, the man's come up here. Right, so there we go. So we didn't see that, but Shags has seen it. And speaking of Shags, he's come all the way down from North Gladdy Harbour, normally working for probably the Harbour Master General by the look of it. Probably the best view in uh, best view in a workplace you can have any morning. But uh, he'll he'll travel a, he'll travel many a mile to come and see a drag race in Shags. It's uh, it's uh, it's good to see you, mate. You did a bit of fishing there as well, eh? Oh, I get a bit of fish in him when I can, eh? Got to live the life, mate. Got to live the life. Yeah, it was not a bad. Did you um, you caught that one and did you eat that? Mate, I caught that one and I've retired from fishing because that's about as big as it gets. But but I'll, I'll tell that story anyway. Well, I, for, for me about fishing, like you know, to me there's no point catching a hundred. I'd only catch what I wanted to eat. Did you eat that thing or what? Mate, we got through half of it at breakfast yesterday. Yeah, so and I picked the rest up from Bellbird Park on the way home because Jess is bringing it back with him. So who, and this is the other thing where I opt out of fishing, mate. I don't do the gutting, the cleaning, the scaling. You didn't do that? Nah, that's Jess's job. Je Jess can do that in his sleep, probably. 100%, mate. I don't do that. Hey. I don't even think Rex Hunt did his own, I think. You know, yebbita yebbita back in the day. Someone else cooked, uh, someone cleaned him. I'm such a bad fisherman that my mates actually stopped inviting me because I'd come fishing with my mates. I'd catch nothing and neither would they. Even though they had these top secret spots that they'd never fail at. When I was there, nothing. So I don't even get invited anymore. <laughs> That's all right. Plenty more weekends for drag racing. And what's your schedule looking like this year, Shags? What's uh, what's the, the, the next hit for you? Well, unfortunately, we're supposed to be in Mackay next weekend with Palmyra, but it's been raining non-stop for the last... So if you've been to Palmyra before, it's out in the cane fields, and it's basically a swamp at the moment. So they called it earlier, so no, nothing there. But I'm down here well, for a road trip in, uh, what have we got, four weeks, I think. Yeah, four weeks, mate. So, uh, looking forward to that. So, uh, yeah, hey, how yeah, good's that going to be? I mean, look at how good this place looks. I mean, we've all been coming here for plenty of years, and this place looks fantastic. And just walking around the pits today, mate, like everyone's saying, look how good's this, and we haven't even started racing yet. You know, like that's what it's all about. Uh, junior dragster and junior bike to the staging lanes, please. Staging lanes one and two. Junior dragster and junior bike, please. Thank you. Well, any good day, any day to drag strips a good day, mate. But I suppose is every day at work a good day too. I, know, I, know, I can't complain. Some of the hours are a bit ordinary, um, but no, I can't complain. I usually get one in the morning, one at night, and you know, just yeah, it's easy. It's pretty cruisy, mate. To be honest with you. So that's like a pilot job, is it? Is it, is it sort of you? You what are you got to do? Just you, you, you meet and greet and you charm in. I know I'm a dirty old deckhand on a timber boat. We go out with our seven metre timber boat up th against three th 300 metre ships and uh, they throw the mooring line down to me and I tie it up and take it over the wharf and we go home. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, tough gig, tough gig, mate. Anytime it gets on Facebook and sometimes it's a 4 a.m. sunrise or whatever, or yeah, it can happen anytime, eh? Do, do, do you know sort of in advance when you're getting these boats or it's random? Mate, I pretty much get six hours notice, sometimes 12 hours notice if I'm lucky. Sometimes you get a phone call like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. It's like, all right, I'll see you soon. So, I'm going to work. Yeah, we're going to work. But uh, no, nah, it's all good, eh? Like, you know, so I, oh, I can't complain, mate. Can't complain. And that's and you're living in Gladdy? Yeah, in Gladdy, mate. Yeah, been up there four years now. So had to get down here for this because I do, obviously, I miss a lot of people and uh, I miss coming out here to Warwick. And, you know, I, I, we did it um, no prep back in November, the Junga Bunga put on. And I come down and did that, and that was a cracker. So uh, you, you just couldn't miss this. Yeah, no, it's a good road trip to come there. And I, I suppose I don't know what's 
sometimes I think the trip down's not so bad. You'll you'll put up with the trip down because you know you're looking forward to everything, and yeah, and the adrenaline gets you there. That's the that's the big carrot in front of you. It's dangling, but going home sucks sometimes, doesn't it? Well, it's about eight hours for me. By the time you throw in a couple of fuel stops, and I've got to feed my fat gut. So uh, you know, you need some food along the way as well. And usually Goom the Gumeri uh, Bakery just I don't know, I can't I can't drive past it, so I've got to stop there. You know, so I'm going to that bakery next time I'm heading up that way, mate. That's like that's a good uh, recommendation. I'm sure she, I'm, I'm thinking I've seen Goomery Bakery somewhere on some of Shaggy's shirts. Maybe he's he's got some sort of contractual agreement there. I could probably hit him up for a sponsorship. Hey, I mean, we're talking about travel. This is Nathan Nielsen here. We just saw Vanessa, Nessa and uh, Nathan, are fiance. So they're uh, they're engaged to. Uh, well, actually, I let it. You know, I let it slip over the mic up there before they told anyone <laughs> a couple of years ago. But uh, so Nessa had some dramas there. Nathan out there now. <laughs> Jeez, that thing is no joke once he uh, tried to get that thing hooked up and uh, runs it on through for a uh, yeah, 978 at 108 mile an hour. But... Um, Yes, sir. And as you said before, like you saw the run, we didn't see the run. Uh, well, we didn't get the ET up there, but that one slipped under the radar. It looked quick. Rab 748, 180. I mean, that'll put you in the top half of the field of a pro stock bike. I mean, and he did it here right here at Warwick, mate. How cool is that? I mean, that shows you that, I mean, uh, I was talking to some of the boys from the Outlaw Funny Cars before, and they, they're they pretty happy with what they saw out there. And obviously, if Rabs can put a pass down like that, proof's in the pudding. Well, I like to see when the Outlaws come out and a few of the other categories. And, of course, we've got a nice little assortment there that's going to sort of give us more of an indication shortly. But, yeah, not just some nitro here at Warwick's going to be fantastic. It's going to be good, mate. And the boys always put on a good – well, the boys and the girls put on a fantastic show. They'll, they'll put every effort into getting those cars down the track. And the best part is they don't mind a bit of a pedal. And sometimes the yellow pedal's a bit more spectacular than a clean run, let's be honest. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, here we go. The next pairing coming up. Yeah, Brendan and Phil. Oh, little wheel stand in second gear. Gets the half track now. That's 5.28 to half track. Here comes the quarter. 8.34 at only 134 mile an hour. 8.34 at 134. A 9.71 beside there for, uh, for Brendan. But that was not a bad run at all. Second gear up, it came a little bit. And uh, off it uh, went from there. God, this is such a good assortment, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, it's been a nice little spell, bit of a dry spell. Of course, you know, Christmas done, New Year's done. The season, if there's such a season in Australia, it's when everyone's, anyone's ready to put an event on and telling everyone about it. And we knew this one was on the radar for a while. And um, the race of base, obviously very, 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 very keen to get underway for the 2024 season. Well, that's the thing, mate. Uh, drag racing is absolutely jumping at the moment, especially around this, around these parts, uh, with uh, both Warwick and Willowbank out for a, a while there. Um, but now we're back underway here at Warwick Dragway, of course, and Willowbank just about to get operational as well. So, yeah, everybody's been keen as a bean to get out there, and it's just jumping. Mate, they've been pulling the cars and the bikes out of the sheds. Michael Peters. <laughs> Sounds like it's not real clean at the moment. They'll go back and have a look at that. But, uh, yeah, 100%, everyone's chomping at the bit. And uh, they've chosen to come here to Warwick this weekend, which is just fantastic. So we've got the track. It looks like we're going to do a quick drag out there. You can hear a couple of those extreme bikes as they were going down, the, uh, turn the tyre in the top end. So it might give it a little bit of a drag. But, hey, the boys are probably throwing everything at it to see what it'll take. And then they'll go back to the pits and they'll make some changes from there. Yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to seeing how all these cars and bikes uh, fare as we move into, you know, second round of uh, qualifying and, and such for the different brackets. Uh, as you said, you know, the first first round is always a bit of a suck it and see sort of uh, situation. But uh, then we uh, start getting the fine tuning done and that's when the numbers really start uh, dropping and uh, cars and bikes really start performing. 
Well, essentially a new track, mate, isn't it? I mean, like, uh, with all the works that have gone over here in the last couple of years. So, I mean, even if you had some data from Warwick, maybe it's not 100% relevant anymore, but to give you a sort of a baseline to work from and you'll go back and have a look at that first round of qualifying, I say, OK, we'll need to adjust the clutch here. We need to uh, adjust some tyre pressure here. Well, start line revs, you know, we've got to get the RPM yeah. spot on there. I mean, that's exactly right, Shagger. This track is... You know, we say, oh, you know, the, the track was upgraded from eighth mile to the quarter mile, but there was a lot more involved than that. The whole track has actually been redone. So even even the first eighth mile, it's not like, as you said, you know, I, I knew what it could run at Warwick previously over the eighth mile. As you said, it's a completely new track. Everything's new. The surface is new. Uh, we've put in... You know, pretty much everything is brand new. So, as you said, everyone's starting from scratch. Clean slate, mate. Clean slate. So, uh, so they're coming up the head of the lanes now. You can see some of the outlaws down. Some tough cars down there, mate. I can tell you. David Johnson's about to come forward in this uh, this top arena. Wait till you see this thing. If you hadn't had a look at this thing, make sure you get in the pits. That's the beauty of here, mate. We, well, drag racing. You can go into the pits. You can get up close and personal, have a look at these things. So, guys, if you haven't been here before, get out in the pits and have a look around and get up and uh, have a look at these things. This thing's cool. That's exactly right. And uh, as you said, you know, drag racing is definitely the most accessible motorsport around, not just for races. We were talking about that early, that pretty much race almost anything. Uh, but also for spectators, you know, as you said, get out there in the breaks or whatever, get out there into the pits, chat to the racers, check out the cars up close. It's just so accessible. And also on the subject of Topolinos, one of my favourite type of race cars, Fiat Topolino, they are always spectacular. They look amazing. Most of them go pretty hard, so great to see. I'm actually driving a Fiat uh, Ducato. Is that anything the same? No, no. Slightly uh, longer wheelbase, not, not as classic as the Topolino? Uh, Fiat Ducato, no. That could be crickets going. Mate, I'm, I'm, driving out, I'm driving out there today, right, from Brisbane, and then I looked out at the steering wheel and I saw the word Fiat on the, on the steering wheel and I just sort of had this feeling of sort of depression. <laughs> Here I was driving a Fiat today. <laughs> it starts with duck, but it's more like a goose, I yeah, think, that thing. It's, it's, it's not the same. As I said earlier, I, I do, I, I have always loved the the altars. They just they just have something about them. You know, you're talking about top fuel drags. Is they're like the kings of the sport. Then you go to the nitro funny cars. They're the bad boys of the sport. But then you look talking about nitro alters, they're just out of control. So uh, and and it, and it sort of goes down through the different brackets as well. And then when you're talking about you know, Alters, there's a few different styles, obviously, and the Topolinos, I don't know, for some reason, they've just always caught my imagination. So I love them. So I'm looking forward to seeing this thing and uh, hopefully he puts in a great pass and it's going to be going to be fun to watch. Wayne Jones down there helping the team. And uh, if you know Jones, he's been around long enough. He's got a few quick cars down the track over the years. So uh, his input will be invaluable in trying to get this thing down. It's got the gear on it. I had a good look over it earlier. It's got all the gear on it. So, uh, David Johnson, maybe you ran that uh, ex Paul Massinio's Roadster there for a while. So, he had that. That was a beautiful car as well, but this thing's, uh, oh, she's mint. It certainly she was a beautiful mint. car. And uh, as you said, this Topolino also absolutely spectacular. So, I'm pretty sure Dave Knightley's new car in beside him. Yeah, and that is also a very pretty looking car, oh, the uh, EH, yeah. the blown EH. Almost, well, look at it, it's basically show class, like uh, finish on it and just looks amazing. So he's in beside him. We can see John Bailey in the funny car back there as well. Dumb truck Dave Glasson in the, uh, the long dragster. Yeah, well, this is uh, this uh, next bracket uh, that's coming out now. It is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, looking forward to it. Lost and found. Actually, this probably isn't the craziest lost and found. I remember Kerry up here one night. We made a call out that somebody had lost their brake pads on the, uh, the start line. That was a bit sketchy, that one, I can tell you. But we got... Um, Hey, Nessa, did you, Nessa, did you lose a cap, Nessa? 
We've got a little, uh, little cappy. It's probably about bike size, to be honest with you. And we got a belt. What's the old belt? We've got the rib belt, the poly rib. She's a 6PK780. If you're missing a 6PK780, we got that up here in the tower as well. Yeah, yeah, brake pads, eh? We had we called out some brake pads one night. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? What? How do you lose brake pads on the start line? That's a bit scary. We had a broken brake pedal. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of a touch up on the track out there. Got the sweepers out there. We got the the uh, the rubbers with you know pushing some new rubber into the track, making sure the track is in absolute pristine pristine condition. <laughs> Chris is uh, having a bit of a sniff of the, the rubber up here. You'll be able to tell you exactly what sort of oil's been used on that car. How, how old the the, fam, the belt is. It's a Falcon. What sort of model it's 20, 20 W50. Uh, oh, Johnny Lewis. We've got to identify no, Where was it made? Name and shame. Where's it made? China, oh, everything's made in China. China. Oh. <laughs> no. Mexico, That's why. Name and shame, Johnny Lewis with the uh, radiator cap. Yeah, look at that. Secret. Chai. I think it's a cold chai. Sure, yeah. sure you're not missing a belt as well? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but today only, yeah. you're getting a complimentary belt. Actually, that'll probably just be a fit you too now, Johnny. You've lost that much weight. You, that'll probably fit you, that 6PK 780. Good on you, mate. Great, uh, great crowd here at Warwick Dragway for this uh, grand reopening of the track with the uh, the first race meeting at the full quarter mile distance and great to see the crowds out in force here. Um, we can always fit some more, so uh, give, you, give a call out to your friends and uh, make sure they don't miss out on all the great action here at the 1320 Motorsports Warwick Dragway. Uh, as we said, we've got the uh, wheel standers coming out later. We've got... The Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars coming out later, and uh, you're not going to be much of a good friend if you let your, let your mates miss out on that sort of stuff. Not to mention the amazing cars in the staging lanes right now with the uh, supercharged Outlaws, and these things are going to put on an awesome show. Yeah, mate, they put 100% into every, uh, every effort that they put down the track. So uh, the guys take a lot of pride in what they, the show they put on as well. So, you know, they're coming all guns blazing. So we're looking forward to the uh, the Aeroflow teams coming out. We've got four pr funny cars on the property. Four. And the wheel standers. The girls in the wheel standers, the two lay girls in the wheel standers, I'll be out as well. So uh, Shelby and Chelsea will be... I actually saw a great ad with the girls last night where one was going, I'm the experienced sister, and the other one goes, yeah, but I'm the fast sister. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. So that's all ahead of it. Yeah, I mean, you spoke about it. If you've got fins on the facey or the Instagram or wherever else, or just get them on the phone. Remember, remember when you just used to ring people? Yeah. Remember those days? Remember, like, hey, mate, what are you up to? You don't have to anymore. You get it on Facebook. Now that you mention it, I do kind of remember that. <laughs> Back in the day. It was a while ago. Mate. No, we hate talking. <laughs> hate it. I'm a recluse. I just sit there watching YouTube. I don't watch great stand YouTube. That's what I do. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, that's not that, mate. I don't know, mate. I don't know. Especially if it's overtaking lane, right, boys? Yeah. Overtaking lane. YouTube channel. Make sure you get onto it right now. Oh, yeah? Are we that close? Oh. There you go, guys. The overtaken lane. Get on the YouTube channel and subscribe, and Dave will throw you a free shirt. Oh, is that what you said? Oh, sorry, mate. And a wiener. Well, I think, you, I think your microphone's breaking up. <laughs> I don't know if you want to use donut from Diggles. <laughs> heavy. Oh, this could end badly. We've got donuts flying around. At least, <laughs> at least it's not the weenus flying around, so that's okay. What's that? 
Fair Topolino. Tell you what, I was pretty impressed with Dave Knightley's burnout in the EH, but then Dave Johnson goes, how about them apples? Look at that. Nice strong burnout from the Topolino. Really finishes at the eighth mile at the end of the burnout. Jonesy in beside him, in behind him here, I should say, guiding him back. So this is going to be an awesome pairing between these two, Dave Johnston and Dave Knightley. Of course, the chemical clown here in the Golby's parts and fabrication lane. Dave Knightley in that beautiful EH sedan with the massive supercharger and bug catcher and all that sort of business coming through the bonnet over there in the PSR Pro Street Radials lane. This is going to be awesome. Sit back and enjoy the show. Awesome stuff. Red light for Dave Knightley, but David Johnson in the chemical clown goes through with a 735, 125 miles per hour, and the EH over there in the uh, PSR's Pro Street lane uh, with the red light, but 843, 131 miles per hour. Mate, Johnson was doing 150 mile an hour at the eighth mile marker, so it was on a pass. It was on a pretty handy pass. Uh, he used the, uh, the center line as a reference all the way down. But uh, pretty impressive pass. He was out of it early. He's washed off, you know, 25 mile an hour in the top half of the track. So Knightley was pretty handy. Actually, if you look at the chatter marks out there, 1-1-0 one, one over the 60 foot there for Johnson. You can see it hit the tyres pretty hard after that. But, you know, the most impressive thing I just watched down there, but of that race. So Dave Knightley backed up there. And Chris Loy, our own Chris Loy from the track here, jumped out and said, no, no, you need to be over here, mate, and put him on the spot. Where else would you see that? Where else? Well, that's exactly right, mate, uh, out here at Warwick Dragway. We want to make sure everyone has fun. We want to make sure everyone stays safe. We want to make sure everyone comes back. So, uh, as you said, not too many places you're going to see that. So plenty more supercharge action coming at you. John Bailey back there in the funny car. So he's got the body down. He's cocooned in there, mate. You ever sat in a funny car? have many 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 years ago as you said it's uh, it's, it's an experience <laughs> i don't do well with cross the probia and i can tell you i didn't didn't cope well that day it was an experience it was Aussie Steve Reed's car there you go many years ago Glasson in the left lane, he's in the drags. There's a big change for Glasson. He's gone from a dragster with a big block of evidence to a newer style dragster with the uh, the supercharged heavy. Actually, he just had to shut it off. They shut him off. I can see Daryl out there with the mop, so maybe Daryl spotted something. It certainly went quiet all of a sudden. Just uh, pushing the car back, and it looks like Daryl is uh, looking at something on the track there. Perhaps so, uh, maybe something's come a little bit of drift there. Daryl's our uh, fluid specialist out here at Warwicker. Yeah, he certainly does like his in, fluids. In many ways. Yes. He enjoys lots of fluids. Yeah. 
So a single here for John Bailey in the funny car. He's in the right-hand lane there. So the PSR Pro Straight Radials Lane. Very nice run there from John Bayless in the funny car. 698, 194 miles per hour. So very close to that 200 mile an hour pass. And uh, it was fairly straight, moved around slightly, but not too much. And uh, I'm sure that's uh, pretty good, pretty happy with that for a first pass here at Warwick Dragway on the brand new track. Mate, he will be happy with that. That car does run. It has gone a couple of tenths quicker than that. But uh, if you... I mean, John will be the first to admit it's a, it's a lot of older technology and he just makes it work. He makes it work and it works well. Ah, it didn't work. All right, Rodney Hanson, that'll do. I mean, put your hands together, of course, folks. I'm not, I'm not rousing on him. I'm just going, he's up. Come on, Rod. Hey, I tell you what, Rodney must have had a big week. You know what I mean? You can tell when a bloke's had a big week. The skid, that first skid's normally a big one. Just taking the shiny off him, mate. Just taking the shiny off him. Rod's another one that's uh, been out of action for about 18 months now. Had a little bit of an incident at another racetrack. Oh, yeah. And uh, had to do a bit of a rebuild. Basically, need a new front half on this thing. A few other bits and pieces. But good to have uh, As soon as you said that, I remembered that. I remember seeing the footage. Um, I haven't seen a run like that. There's a, there's, a, there's a pairing in New Zealand I saw with the guy, the Capri. The Capri, yeah. yeah. And then I saw that one at Benarabee, and you wouldn't believe it until you saw it again. And I'm amazed that didn't, as much as that was ugly to see, that's the sort of stuff that rates really well on YouTube. Yeah, 100%. Because that was unfortunate, and I forgot Rodney was in the crossfire there. He wasn't even really part of the whole thing uh, well, until he was. Well, the engine, the back half of the drags, the other lane snapped off. The engine come out of it and caught fire. It was pretty spectacular. Very spectacular. All at a regional track event. You know, it just who says you can't get some excitement at regional level? Takes it all the way out in low gear. 114 in the 60 foot. It's almost like he just really walked it out. 763 to 178 mile an hour. But welcome back, Rodney Hanson. The big burnout, a nice settler, 763. 178 mile an hour and that's a guy you can never discount when they start racing each other on dial your own handicap rodney hansen plenty of wins with that car and uh blowing big block just does it so well yeah of course hansen and uh pagey and the team down there they'll be happy with that they've done it for plenty of years and they know how to make that thing work so it's pretty solid yeah she's pretty much the uh the perfect big block combo 518 cubes nice big blower on it and uh power guy tranny as you could hear and I think even that's a world well chassis. There's a few little traits on that that kind of hint that it is. The front nose on it, the body on it. Um, gorgeous car. Uh, and again, another car sort of you know, produced within Queensland, you know. So, you know, not everything has to come from America. There's quite a lot of stuff gets built right here in the, in the Sunshine State and surrounds. And that's one that's definitely um, got our attention. And it's a good field of supercharged outlaws. Um, Shaggy, you and I are kind of in a little bit of heaven because there's quite an altered, quite a, 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 a lean towards the shorter wheelbase, altered style cars. And of course, you've still got your little altered beast to run when you get a chance as well. Mate, it was, uh, it's in the trailer and I looked at it a couple of weeks ago and with the humidity at like 85, 90% during the week leading up to the Benarabee round, I went, nah, this fat boy isn't getting in there this week. So it'll be ready for the next one. Shank has got to go on like a 12-day diuretic 
set up. Like, he, you know, he's, he's, you know, instead of the bacon and egg sandwich, you know, he's, he's having, you know, egg on toast instead of, you know, a three-course meal because he's getting into training because he's got to get in the thing. I get in there. It's the getting out that's a bar. But um, it's good that it's in the trailer yep. ready to go, though. <laughs> There's a name I haven't heard for a little while because when I saw the early... Well, the old car's here too, isn't it? Yeah. Saw the old prefit gasser and I thought, oh, yeah, Gary Cameron. And then, no, it wasn't. But here he is in a blown altered. See, as we said this morning, Phil, people getting to that, I always wanted this. So Gary's obviously, you know what, I fancy a blown altered. One day I'll be, be in one. And here he is. What a setup. Nice setup too because there's... I like the turtle deck on this. I, I like that, just that high amount there. I, you don't, everyone's got a different layout. Body, body height, like sectioning of the body as to where it sits around the driver and then turtle deck. I like that, got a bad little combo. No wings though, so it's all in the breeze. Gary Cameron, big block chef by the look of it. Give it, let it rip. Hey, good pedal, Gary. Good pedal. Hey, 108 in the 60 foot early roll off, and it still goes 782 at 130 mile an hour. Geez, that did well on the stab. That was, that was good, mate. Well, I was pretty impressed. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, he spot on. He felt it. He gave it a quick little stab, and uh, down it went. 782 out of the pedal early. Went 108 to the 60. We just saw Rodney Hanson go 114 to the 60. Uh, so Cameron was on a bit of a run, mate. And it's not like, you know, we can train every week and people can practice this stuff. It's not like, oh, yeah, I, I went out Wednesday, had to go. It, it, it just, it's, not, it's not an empty footy field where you can go and take a footy and kick it around. You've got to come to a, a decently prepared racetrack and not, they're not available midweek. So for him to hop in that car after God knows how long, hit that, feel that, like, you know, you, you would not think that lapse in that prefect over the years would get you to that stage, but you still, if you've got that little sense of what it reacts anything reacts like when you hit it and even for that he was ready for it um and that's still one of our best 60s of the day 108 yeah, that's solid. That's pretty good 60. so we know the track can go 108 let's just see who else can get near there i'd expect one of these outlaw cars to sort of you know give us give us something like that maybe a 10 or a 0.9 um who knows could be bart right now oh bart Bart, or Vartan Bedrosian, as his full name is, called me Bart. Had this car for a while too, and tell you what, had a decent amount of uh, success. It's a Pluger, look at that. So it is a, a Plu actual Pluger fuel, fuel car chassis. Mate, and these days just made the step up to the Hemi. Wow. So the Hemi in there, and he said he's still trying to get his head around it. There's, he said, with the Chev, you could just sort of go out and make a couple of changes, put fuel in it, away you go. He said, this thing needs a bit of finesse. In, so uh, he's getting, starting to get on top of it. Yeah, it's not the first time I've heard people talk about going to Hemi. And what, once you, well, it's a well-trodden path now, but once everyone who's never had one before goes to that, it's another little learning curve to get right. You know, you're on the valve train, a little bit more, you know, a lot of that stuff... You're getting good shaft mounted rockers there. You know, the big blocks are always just a little bit different. But then Hemis are supposed to give you that much more horsepower, aren't they? They're supposed to. It's it's almost every drag racer's hidden level to get to something where you can have a blow and Hemi. have even started with a small block had a small block in it 100 percent. definitely had a small block in it to start with so uh the evolution small block big block hemi of course bart's automotive down uh, down the gold coast one of your cars bart has to put out put out the door every week to fund the uh, the hemi. Under hemi yeah none of this stuff comes with a 20 hour week <laughs> in fact we should start a new cost control drag racing called the all right, we're going to means test you. All right, mate, you're a lower income earner. Let's go racing, all right? Uh, okay. Let's control the spending. <laughs> or have a successful business and build your dreams. Work hard 
and you can get to your dreams. Still got to have them though, don't you? Still got to have the dreams. So let's see what a blow on Hemi. I wonder what he's got gearbox wise in it, because sometimes that's a natural progression. You get maybe a centrifugal clutch, maybe a Lenko. Be interesting to see. Let's have a listen. Well, I can tell you what he's got, and that's probably a broken input shaft. Looking yeah. at that. Whatever, whatever that, whatever he had. You know, and, and you know, it's my fault for bringing it up. <laughs> I think it's a glide still in there, mate. But uh, you could, it sort of went, and then it didn't win. So it's either, uh, well, I mean, rule of thumb usually tells us it's broken an input shaft or it's uh, done a diff gear. Now that's, uh, it goes to show they're not quite ready to give it away yet. When I can still inflict the curse, like so quickly. That's good to, good to see. Well, I probably shouldn't bring up the conversation, but I was talking to him down there, and he goes, you know how it is. He goes, you upgrade this, and then you find the weak link. Well, he sort of scripted it, didn't he? Yeah, well, OK, if he's already talked about <laughs> sort of scripted it. scripted So there won't be too much surprise there when Bart gets out of the car. What do we do this time? And, and that's, a, that's a bit of a drag racing mentality. When you do have something go wrong, you go, what is it? Now, sometimes you can get out. Of, you've seen people in the past, they get out and they flip their lid and they do their nut. But a lot of the time now, we're a lot more philosophical. You get out, you almost got a smile on your face. What have I done now? What, what is it? Well, for the guys that do power wheelies and slam the thing down, they'll go, I hope that looked good because it hurt and it's, I've wrecked it. But normally a little smile comes up a little bit later on. Hopefully Bart can get a little smile out of that. And, and who knows? Knowing him, being pretty cluey, um, if there's something to be fixed, hey, we might have a call coming shortly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Spare glide or whatever, or Bart's ready to upgrade. Per personally for me, if I was ever to go to a comment like that, I've always loved the old traditional Crower glide, three-speed or four-speed Lenko. Now, Benny Gatt's one guy that used sort of that combo for years, a Crower glide clutch and a four-speed Lenko. Um, like that sort of combo, that's, that's an old tried and proven deal. Um, but yeah, crowd glides, that's, they're almost a thing of the past, you know, crowd glide. They were, they were a great, still a great racing clutch. And I don't know whether our outlaw funny car guys still run that type of clutch in there, like a, whether they slip them or not, you know what I mean? Because they do, especially if they are the, the outlaw cars, is you normally high gear only or two speed, normally just a two speed. So normally that might come with that uh, or a version of that. But yeah, they were a thing. Normally, you get all that. If you've got a couple of lazy, a couple of lazy thousand horsepower there, as our crowd glide still can work a treat. And the, and then of course there was the skill of how much base weight you put on it, how much, and, and you could hop the clutch up or take clutch out of it. Trouble is, when you took it out of it, the thick damn things would slip, and that's where you kind of want something with a lock up, because then everyone goes lock up, and then the lock up clutch was the thing. And then now, of course, now in the state, state of the art, the best torque converters you've ever had that are a lock up converter. So you can hear, especially, you know, back to those big radial cars, you hear all, and turbo cars, like that Pro Mod, when you listen to that, that 514 from the Pro Mod, you listen to that. So there's a lot of power management, there's a lot of controlled converter slippage that you're able to now do with a torque converter that you couldn't do 10 years ago, that you could maybe do if you had two-stage clutch, whatever. But now they can slide, like slip these converters a certain percent, and you can almost, you can put it five seconds to, to lock a converter up to give you, oh, I guess all of that 4,000 horsepower through the last couple of hundred feet of the 660 like they were running last weekend. But yeah, 220 in the eighth is 220 in the eighth, mate. That's uh, that just goes to show where technology is now. I mean, I've only got a, again, I'm sitting on the, on the periphery, you know, digesting the information that you know is kind of how, 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 would I, how would I be able to do it? I wouldn't know how to do it. I just know that's kind of where they're at. And the gurus that do know how to do that the results are in those amazing ETs, and and yeah, maybe maybe there'll be generations that wouldn't even know what a crowd glide clutch looked like if you showed them. You know what I mean? Because it'd be like, oh, that's an irrelevant, uh, an irrelevant part of drag racing development is the old crowd glide. But I don't think it goes too far. I'd like, I certainly would be if I was going to have a blown outlaws car, I'd probably go for that because you also see the horror stories, <laughs> the input. You could have that mega vasco billet input shaft but we know they break as well or planetaries or whatever and you know you can have the biggest glide in history and you can still break them and again the big, biggest converter in history and you can still do it but i liked the idea especially when especially the early wild bunch cars could go to a regional track or a track that's you know not a super track and play with that crowd glide so it can just get you down the track um 
I, I'd be I'd be up for that. And whether or not, you know what, you'd have to check whether they still make parts. Maybe they don't. I know if I went and rustled around the braze or something like that, they might have a couple of boxes on the shelf. There'd be one holding the door back as a doorstop or something like that, you know. It keeps that shed door open <laughs> and this one does. But it'd be... Um, It'd be interesting to see who still plays with the damn things because they worked really well and it is an old design. It is a centrifugal sort of design clutch um, where you can sort of throw those weights out. You know, you can either tighten them up or loosen them off, give them more air gap or whatever. But um, no, they're an interesting part that uh, some people use and I just hope whatever what is, whatever's happened to Bart, I mean, he's going to get to the bottom of it anyway. But yeah, that, that early, like we didn't quite get the 60 there, but it, it came out with a fair bit of aggro on it. Yeah, it hit, and uh, you could hear a bit of over-rev, and obviously that's a sign where it's lost drive. So somewhere along the uh, the drivetrain there isn't no longer connected. And it's so hard to explain to people that bump steer we saw after that. It's like, yeah. hang on, he, he may have blown a driveline part up, but then it goes like that. Um, it's, it's hard to explain. It's more like it doesn't really happen on them with... When they don't have front-wheel brakes... That, me- that whole steering mechanism doesn't seem to do it as much. Um, m- mine certainly doesn't do it with no front brakes, and mine's exactly the same steering setup, same as Shaggers. Any of these alters are normally... I haven't seen too many with a steering rack in them, but the old-fashioned altered steering system is as follows, isn't it, Shags? You've got the, the butterfly steering wheel. It's got, like, a steering box kind of mounted near your, near, near your kneecaps. A shaft goes out sideways to a, to a bell crank that literally pulls the linkage forwards or back. You've got this long arm that goes down one side of the chassis rail to another bell crank, and then there's a linkage to the other spindle. So you've got this sort of monkey linkage going on. <laughs> Actually, that's a bad word. I can't say the oh, word. No, can't say the word linkage. No. Um, so, <laughs> um, so um, yeah, but you know what I mean? And then if you've got front brakes, and we just saw that happen about then, if you tap those brakes, that whole thing can shudder because you've got lots of caster in that front end as well. And that's always hard to explain to people why did the front end wobble like that and it's like well listen that's kind of when it's not fully loaded and not going down the track it can do that quite easy you see after burnout sometimes they'd get that wobble up mm. jumping on the brakes um but um oh no they're all different um in your car shags do you have a brake lever like a hand lever or Mate, fl- i put no no i went hand lever and the main reason i did that is because a mate of mine when he licensed his altered Oh, back in the late 90s, had a foot pedal and it got into a bounce in the braking area and he found that he was bouncing on the brake pedal. So the, so the more it bounced, the higher it got and there was reports that it was about four foot off the ground in the brake and she flipped over. So I went, nah, well, I'm going with the hand. So, uh, hand lever, yeah. yeah. So, so to, put, to, to do the brakes, do you pull back pull on Pull back. Yeah, yeah, I did it the same. I've seen some guys use a push forward where you're actually staged by pushing the brake lever forward. So your mech... Yeah, so your mechanism is actually pushing forward to do brakes. So I've seen him do that way as well, which is not not sort of a bad way um, either way. I, I, I like pulling back on the lever. M- my car was an old fuel car, so it had whatever was there was there. But I like the idea of just holding back and you just kind of let it go. You, do you have a trans brake in your thing? I've got a trans Yeah, well, I don't even have. I didn't even have that, mate. That was ba- what I had there was basically <laughs> I had a butt for the two step, so I, I could get it on the converter. The two step would stop it creeping. The brake lever would stop it rolling, and then when you left, you just tried to, if you could remember to do it all at once, left thumb off the button, right hand off the lever, and then hopefully grab a steering wheel in between <laughs> there before reaching there. And where, and where do you shift from? Do you got a shifter beside you or in the middle? Yeah, in the middle, me in too. In the middle. Right down there in the middle, so uh, it's all by feel. What could you fit in there? Have you got a pro stick in there? Or? I got a no, I got a uh, the old Hurst. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The pro like a pro stick sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I, I got a little PPP. I couldn't fit that damn big thing in there. Yeah. That big shifter like. Oh, you got are you saying I got more room in there? Well, I tw- I why, yeah, I don't know why. We got to <laughs> let's 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 measure hoop widths later, <laughs> just to see where we're at. Let's measure some hoop widths later, but. I know that, um, and as you said, mate, you know, you've you, you, you got to go into a little bit of a dietary preparation before you sh- before you put yourself in. The first time I sat in mine with a full fire suit and everything, I had a panic attack. I had claustrophobia. I couldn't sit in it. And that was a worry, considering you spend a fair amount of money to do something, and then you sit in it going, I don't feel comfortable in this thing. I really don't feel comfortable. So one night I got a bit of Dutch courage up, and I actually sort of got, in, got into it sitting in the garage with a couple under me, and I actually said, no, I'm going to have a nap in here. So I actually went to sleep in the yeah. thing and 
that actually helped. A couple of hours just sitting in it, just sitting in it. A couple of hours got the got the anxiety out of the way where you became, I suppose it was an artificial seat time. I wasn't racing anything. I was just sitting there. Um, that helped. But, oh, mate, I'd, I'm so fang going to try and get that thing back to here especially because um, uh, my kids are old enough now to probably have a go at it. And if you get your races license, we can put we can have a clinic. Mate, it's... Uh it's tentatively penciled in for drag fest. I reckon. I reckon that that's what we need to do. Uh, October. October. Oh, we'll see how I go. I got to get on a Hoffman. Hoffman, get that get that two J running, or it's coming home and getting a carby in front of a turbo. I'm going back to that. Oh my God, he's John Canerly's going to have a crack here. Talk about bringing a fair bit of car. To, uh, to the opening of the, uh, the quarter mile here at, at uh, Warwick, but uh, not me, not my words, but the words are this. One of the most violent forms of drag racing machinery is an alcohol funny car. Why? Well, 125 inch wheelbase is one thing. Another reason, pedal clutch. Another reason, um, five to 8,000 RPM on the line, um, shifting three times normally on a run whilst trying to steer it. That's why it's a hard thing to drive. Um, and usually driving through pedal ties One of the best drivers in the country of said vehicle is this man, John Canooley. He has had a bat, like, like nearly everyone on the path to greatness, there's been many a hurdle. Whether it's the history of John Canooley driving an alcohol funny car, still one of the quickest ones in the world, by the way. I mean, we saw Gary Phillips the same thing. Baptism of fire. Clapper's had some issues in, in his thing, and he's multi, you know, our highest winning national top alcohol champion ever. It's this sort of carry-on that makes these an exciting vehicle. And there's nothing better when two come in together and they hit that first bit of throttle to try and get their launch RPM up. Sorry. Sorry. That's what it feels like a bit there. That's how that's how it feels. Right. <laughs> Two of them together, when they give it that first mash of the throttle to bring the revs up, there's nothing like it. They rock half a foot sideways. Then you've got to bring the thing in at the right launch RPM. What's he going to give us for the first run here? Hold on to your hats. No, all out of, all out of power on the launch there. Like, just... All that power and then no power, like no power. And, and look, not that I'm going to predict too much other than, you know, there is, a, there is a timing grid in these cars. So there's a certain amount of power management you can do, i.e. through ignition timing. Um, obviously, you hear the launch RPM. It's not like they leave with less RPM. It's just about how much power the engine's making. And normally, you can lose or gain hundreds of horsepower just by degrees of timing. It's almost like it just lost all its mojo, like just all its power. So maybe something to do with maybe what the timing did strange there. Strange one, it had, real strange one, that. It had nothing out of the hole. It did not like it at all. Um, there's the belt, though, so that's a clue. So that's not a good thing either. In fact, if that goes on the hit, that's why the whole thing just did what it did, if that's the case. Because where do we go so, there? I mean, it doesn't happen, but it's almost like it flooded. It is. It's almost like... And, and even where Dave went to get that, like that means it's done it on the hit. Like on that hit. belt's got to have gone on the hit. N nothing else makes sense because uh, once you lose See, all of that boost through that motor, that's why she's. When belts come off, sometimes they take other bits with them. So. Well, that's um, that's uh, that's a path they've been down before. It, it lost fire and everything, didn't it? In a hurry. Well, that's uh, that's the problem with the the, the the carbon body on them. Of course, it. Uh, well, it stops it flying off, but what's in front of it? You know, you've got fuel pump drive in there. You got a lot of plumbing in there. Um, that's it. Didn't see the belt until there it is. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, that's uh, that's what that used to be. And I'm not going to say that was Johnny's belt before he went on to die. Johnny Lewis's belt. <laughs> but there we go. That's uh, not getting used again. No, we don't need staples. We don't need craft glue. That is gone. That's uh, four hundred dollars right there. Is that what they are? I thought really current value. Well, I'm out, mate. I was just thinking about a change of top alcohol funny car, but now, now the price of belts are four hundred, mate. I'm 400 out. Four hundred dollars, we're right there. Oh, well, I'm done, mate. I'm done for the season. I'm done. I'm done. For, I'm done for the season. So that's double my fuel bill down and back home. <laughs> <Is that right? laughs>
Well, you're getting some pretty good economy there, mate. Not too bad, mate. D-Max life. Oh, is that what it is? No, well, I'd go back to the car I was driving, a Fiat. I didn't know they were so thirsty. But mind you, I am driving a block of flats, so the aero, the, there's no, aero's shocking. Aero's shocking. No problems keeping up, but, um, but yeah, it was just watching the fuel gauge go down. But no, that D-Max, nice and economical. Manual, auto? Manual. Oh, yeah, right. Old so school. that's extra. Got to drive it. Yeah. Yeah, Shagger likes I needed a tow pig, so the uh, the D Max was the perfect choice. That's perfect, mate. That is perfect. But uh, yeah, interested on looking down there. We had Morris McMillan, of course, uh, the main man over there at the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars. He was down there on the line with uh, Canuli having a look there. So, uh, you know, just gathering some visual data. All right, cover your ears or, or, or not. This thing's got a shriek to it like nothing else. Let's have a listen. Lloydie, honestly, I've, I've admired Colin Lloyd for years as a racer, as, as a, as a G-Gas racer, you know, when he was the V8 guy. He used to rally against the double D gas cars. He, 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 he hated double D, hated the Samets, he hated the little Sprite, he hated anything that wasn't a V8. Look where Lloydie ended up. Mate, you'd almost call this a transition. It is. Mate, he has transitioned. Because, he, like, as you said, I mean, I mean, you can't get more basic than a G-Gas, like single carb, off-the-shelf parts, you know, V8, old school. And, of course, he came from Super Gas before that. But uh, then to go to one of these things, isn't it? It's like chalk and cheese. So this is a 1JZ. So this is like a two-and-a-half-litre six-cylinder with a pro-charger, supercharger. And mechanical injection, I believe, and a Liberty 5 speed. So he's got all the fruit a completely different way. Eighth Mile Masters to the lanes and Super Sedan to the lanes, please. Eighth Mile Masters and Super Sedan to the lanes, please. Come on, Lloydie, let's get a good run out of him. I'm going to let this thing sing too, hey? Let's let it go. Let's just let it go. It sounds the fruit, sounds the gear. What a shriek! What a shriek! Look, 555 to the 660 ain't so bad. I think he was he, he put the clutch pedal in by then. Uh, one two one in the 60 had its little ring hanging out, two and a half litre engine. But um, that is a delicious little piece of fruit there. I must admit, like and um, you know, hats off the Lordy. As if I couldn't respect him anymore. Then he went and did that. I go, mate, that's even maximum respect because what you've, you've what you've done. I mean, you're, you're 20 years 20 years later than than everyone else. But no one in the world's doing it, and, and maybe there's a reason why. But because you can turbo the damn things and they do whatever. But but maybe Lordy's not fully transitioning. This is as much as he was willing to transition. You know what? I'll I'll have him. But I but he still I reckon he still has a hatred of turbos. Oh, that's that's what I'm reading. Oh, that's just, that's just what I'm reading on the surface. It's like he still hates turbos. Obviously, he's got that pro charger on it. Oh, it's a howler. Go and have a look. If you can get down and have a look at that with the front clip off it, like that's all him. That's you can't go and just buy that out of a catalogue like you can everything else too, Jay, pretty much. You can buy your plenum, you can buy your hot side, you can buy this, you can buy that. No one's selling you the pro charged one J deal, you know? And the right. yeah, have a look at these things when you uh, get a chance. Boys, I'm gonna do a runner. Thanks for uh, letting me invade your territory for a bit. No, right, well, We'll, we'll yell out the magic code word as well, Mount, <laughs> Mount, Mount Shagger. I'm going to have a donut. Oh, are you? Are you? Okay. Well, I wonder if you get a discount if you take this box back and say, listen, I've got a box here. It's low miles. Can I get a couple of dollars off? Thanks, Shags. Awesome, Shagger. Good to see you, mate. Thanks for coming up. We'll see you in a few, little while too. Yeah, that's not the, that shouldn't be the only time he comes up and has a go. I, I asked him if he was coming and he said yes. It's like, oh, well, come up and share, mate. There's no harm. No harm. We all want to We all want to get a a few runs on the board this year. This is the first one for me this year. Is it the first one for you this year? Uh, I've actually done all the meetings here so far. Uh, yeah, except obviously the... Oh, that was last year, wasn't it? Drag, drag Challenge? It was last year. The road, uh, the road trip, yeah. So the ones, the ones they've had here so far I've been for. Uh, so yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good. No, that's good. 
Well, first, first, first meeting here since the reopening was the VW Drags. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good meeting. Oh, it was. Six bang and that's when we get it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. Be great. Yeah. All that on the calendar. Another call for Super Sedan to the late. Super Sedan to the late. That's Alex Kidd and Jasmine Kidd running over the uh, the 660, 835 and 857. A uh, big field of kids racing here from age 8 to 17 and a great category thanks to Rolling Repairs. And this is uh, another great pairing side by side. Tyler Bellett in the tower lane and Carl Schultz in the yellow car. Yeah, if you if the cockpit was big enough, I'd have a go at these. I, I, I'd love to race one of these things. I want a, I'd want a bigger engine. I'd, I'd want the seven second engine. That's what I'd want. Yeah, you'd want to go with the big block. Yeah, I'd, I'd need a bigger engine than that. You know, in New Zealand, in the rule book, you can use a motorbike engine in New Zealand. So. Nice, nice. Maybe we need to go to New Zealand. Yeah. All right, Carl and Tyler. I wonder how old Tyler is. Of course, that Bellet family. What a. You want some advice? You want some advice? Talk to your uncle or your dad. Yeah, yeah, it's in the jeans for sure. They hit the stripe here at the 660, 811 to an 828. So that's a couple of the AJDs you would assume. Now A means that I think. I don't know what the year cutoff is, but it's normally 15 to 17, I think, or, fi or 14 to 17, it's something like that. So you've got to be older to have the faster ET. So you can go down to 790 on an A, and then CJD, you've basically got to be age 8, 8 to 10 or 11 or whatever. You get a C engine, so you can only run a certain ET, and then there's a B engine. So. And did you see that heartbreaker red light there from Carl Schultz over there? Triple O four. that's... Uh that's that's you got to have them every now and then otherwise you're not trying hard enough but yeah a bit of a heartbreaker all right fletcher russia and neela paul bumping in the stage now neela's got one bulb on so has fletcher neela's got both on fletcher's looking for the beams he's got one there he goes and you can tell the difference between the a's and the c's just in that performance difference Neil Paul goes through 8.27 and the CJD of Fletcher Russia rolls on through for a 12.86. How's this one? How good do these things look? More pocket money on the side of this one. Got the wheelie bar and everything. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, a lot going on with that car, but it looks amazing. I'm not sure if that's paint or whether it's a wrap, but either way, it's very well done. That's uh, Max rolling. And Kyle Day in the far lane. Yeah, that that's a that's a hell of a hell of a deal. And Kyle Day, I think that's Doug Day's uh, Doug Day's son. I mean, this thing just went one six six in the sixty foot. So this is going to be a low eight here. This goes. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, hey, whoops. Look at that. Whoops. <laughs> whoops. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I don't think it matters up here. There we go. Set. Nah, we don't. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't matter. 85 mile an hour. <laughs> well, that's right. We're racers here. So, uh, there we go. Sure. 774. I'd love to know what our quickest ET is in this country. That's a good number. It looked it went 166 in the 60. Yeah, it looked great right off the start line and looked good all the way down the track. So uh, great pass there from the more pocket money car. A uh, big shout out watching on the overtaking lane live stream. I missed this. It was about an hour ago, but uh, get to Chris Honor watching from uh, up north. I had the phone in the pocket. I. He's just going watching over taking late, so he wanted to shout out. There you go, Chris Honor. It's only an hour late. Like and share, just remember. Like and share. Don't forget to uh, subscribe as well. So 
So we've got a uh, we've got a word that the quickest CT in Australia is around seven flat. Ooh, crikey! So yeah, thank you, Jacob, for that info. Seven double oh one, Ethan. Seven double oh one. So that's kind of what they've been. So, and again, you you couldn't do that more than once before you're absolutely <laughs> booted to the stratosphere if you're under most sanctioning bodies. Uh, what CC? Okay, so some of these engines. See, so we just had an, a question on overtaking lane. Um, some of these engines. I mean, they're really sort of based 210 CC was what they were based on. But I think we've seen them nearly 500 CC. You can bore and stroke them. There's not really a capacity check on them. It's an ET cutoff, right? So in Australia, at most well, IHRA and tracks, you can't run quicker than 790. So it's more of an ET thing, not a capacity limit. But I do know that a lot of the C junior dragster engines are close to that 200, uh, 210, 250 cc, and that the big AJDs are in the 400 plus cc. So a big single, those things are like 17 to one billet, the whole thing's billet, billet case, billet head. Still a side valve engine. So the cylinder head is literally a solid piece of aluminium with a couple of little valve reliefs, essentially. <laughs> That's about all it is. Nice mix up here of Charlie Usher and Nevaeh uh, McDougall. Just listen to these things crackle. Mate, you can get the lawn done in about 10 minutes with a lawnmower rider like this. <laughs> and look at the flex even in this one here of Nevaeh. You can see these things are kind of designed to do a little bit of flexing. That sort of helps, and that's their suspension. And some of these, some of the state of the arts have actually ended up with a swing arm style suspension in them. So they're not just your traditional solid mounted axle like a go kart axle, which a lot of them are. Some of them just have a bit more flex than others, and some I've seen with a mono shock style. Uh, took a little bounce there, Nevaeus, but uh, Charlie Usher is out and gone. They hit that 660 stripe, 46 to an 885. Look at the speed, though, 78 mile an hour, 74 mile an hour. Another call for eighth mile masters and super sedans. Yes, uh, Damo Boyce, there will be some radial cars in the 28 versus 275 class. So we've got Carsberg, Baker, um, Aaron Gregory, um, Jeffrey Trapnell. Um, there's a few radial cars here, Boise, in the 28 versus 275. All right, Nixon Canooley out there, Kendra Glasson beside. Just issues there trying to get the thing to um sometimes i think the thing's idle high and it's hard to uh get the things to engage there we go mum and dad on the nice dry hop there from nixon there's father john on the carby making sure it's back to idle nixon and kendra coming up Okay, Nixon, he can't move any further. He's gone in deep. Here comes the lights. Go, son. Not bad. Triple O, well, is that 003 for Kendra? 003 on the tree. That'll make a lot of sense later on when we go racing. But right now, 834 to an 834. 834 to an 834. Nice. They, uh, they both got the job done. 60 foots, 185, 187. 531 to a 531, 834 and an 834, 79.9, 79.6. They're nearly identical in every increment there. So it uh, goes to prove they're not, they don't all look the same, but gee, sometimes they can perform nearly identical. But how's that 003? Well, yeah, well that's, the well, that's the thing. Nixon uh, pulled a, quite a nice light uh, with the, the, the 08. And then, but in the other lane, just got blown away with the uh, 003. So as you said, just a just a lightning reflex uh, lights there from both sides of the track, but but especially uh, from the PSR Pro Street Radials lane. 
All right, looks like that's the end of the drags as it's now time for the bikes. And would you believe entry level, I suppose the bikes might be cheaper than the cars. You know what I mean? I just think they would be. I don't know what a Lamb's bike's worth these days, but you know what I mean? For our kids to hop on them. And maybe you don't need such a big trailer either. You know what I mean? Like you could probably get away with one in a ute or a box trailer. So maybe they are a little bit cheaper entry level, junior bikes, other than the initial cost. Really, you might be putting a clutch in it once a year, but the th you shouldn't wear the thing out. <laughs> Especially they all run on pump fuel too, you know what I mean? No yeah. one's on the methanol, like nearly every June that we just saw is kind of on methanol, all the big ones. That's Xavier Mansfield French against Alex Redmond. <laughs> They're having a lot of fun on those. They get the shift gears too, which is a great uh, thing about junior bike, is that the, you, you, you've got all of that facets of running anything bigger from here on end. Um, and uh, you can get all that racecraft uh, sorted right from the first bike. 9.28 and 9.55, but still, as you can see, um, not quite as fast as those full tilt junior dragsters. Mm. Not yet. Not I know that, I know that, you know, we haven't really delved into the rules as into engine modifications on the bikes. Yep. I'm sure before too long. And there's not that there's much of a tuner. Some of these bikes, there's just no aftermarket for them because they're not designed to be a performance bike. Mind you, you can treat them like one. <laughs> yeah, Ma and as we said earlier, it is it is a, a very new class here in Australia. Uh, it's been around obviously overseas for quite a long time, but great to see the uh, junior bikes finally making their mark here in this country. Well, the argument was, oh, we can't have kids running junior bikes, and it's like, hang on, you got kids on dirt bikes at age five. You know what I mean? You can go down to Gap Creek Moto and watch a kid that's five years old building a you know a 50 or an 80 or it go boys marcus mcdonald so that's scarlet out there beside so marcus mcdonald big uh, launch big launch rpm banging through the gears scarlet mansfield french that was a little bit better launch from her she's just finding her way 1286 for her 1228 for marcus yeah, he doesn't leave anything in the tank, Marcus, does he? No, no. And, and with uh, Scarlet Mansfield French there, I believe the last uh, event here was her first ever event. Um, so this is only her second event. And she's definitely uh, getting better with every single pass I've seen from her. Um, just getting a handle on the bike and, and how to ride it and how to uh, put it down the track. But definitely uh, it, you can see the, uh, the incremental improvements every pass. So it's uh, good to see from Scarlet. Mansfield French. Do a bit more super sedan. Looks like it. I suffer that myself. Folks, so uh, we are going into up next the 1 8th mile Masters. So uh, sticking with the 8th mile theme. It's pretty pretty smart to do it that way. We've got the, the junior drags, the junior bikes, all at, uh, both at 1 8th mile. So we keep the everything the same for the 8th mile Masters. Uh, so some really uh, cool cars, some really quick cars in this 8th uh, mile Masters actually. I was, uh, when they announced they were going to run that, I'm thinking, uh, is you know, I mean, I love eighth mile racing, but is there going to be enough people that want to stick with eighth mile when there is quarter mile racing on offer? And the answer is yes, there's plenty of people who, just like me, love the eighth mile racing. So uh, that's always good to see. We've got some very quick cars in this bracket. Ashley Thompson in the Golby's Parts and Fabrication Lane in that beautiful green Falcon Ute. And he's lining up against Lee Dark. Lee Dark has that very cool looking, patriotic looking uh, statesman over there, the late model Stato in the PSR Pro Street Radials Lane. 
This is the second qualifying round for these guys, uh, as it was also for the uh, junior dragsters and the junior bikes. So basically the rest of uh, uh, these cars will all be on their second qualifier. For the Falcon Ute of Ashley Thompson. It looks like he's going to come back and give it a good crack, and he does. He runs around the outside of Lee Dark, who also uh, pulled a 0.01 red light. So we are 710 at 107 miles per hour for Ashley and Lee Dark with a 705. As we see this awesome Mopar muscle car of uh, Rob Adams coming out into the Golby Parts of Fabrication Lane, lining up against Nicholas Smith in the classic Holden Station Wagon. But uh, as we said earlier, uh, may look very stock, even got the Venetians in the back. The old school Venetians always look really cool. Uh, not a performance item, but this car definitely has some good performance about it. Sounds great, looks great, goes great. Let's see how it goes up against the mighty Mopar. Nope, we're gonna shut them down. Do we have something on the track? Yes, that's what it looks like. Cars on the track. That's, that's a weird place for cars to be on the racetrack. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> the hill is a bit steep. If you manage to somehow lose power, you're not going to roll up there, unless you're in something like a funny car or a supercharged outlaw or something like that. But uh, don't forget, folks, we do have turn-offs before that if it's safe to get off the track before you go up the hill. The, that's uh, always a great idea. But once we get those cars off the hill there, they're, they're actually both stuck up there, which is unusual. It's usually just one or the other. Uh, but this time it's both cars stuck up there. So, as uh, I mentioned, we've got a couple of cars up there stuck on the hill. Just uh, getting rid of those. Looks like we might be almost... Oh, no, we've still got one there. Might have to uh, just wait for the, the four-wheeler to come back, get rid of him. And so we will have to have a very short, very, very short um, break. And so it gives us time to talk about all sorts of stuff. Of course, our sponsors this this meeting of course we've got our naming sponsors the big one 1320 motorsports uh warwick dragway is actually known now as 1320 motorsports warwick dragway uh our left lane sponsor is golby's parts and fabrication and our right right lane of course psr pro street radials we also have loy and sons earth moving long boost performance pulsar turbos zuma signs uh, so they're all our kind of regular sponsors and then, of course, all our brackets have sponsors as well, which we, uh, as I said, as I keep saying over and over every race meeting, we need to really concentrate on supporting our sponsors because uh, without that sponsorship support, these types of events just do not happen. So we, to we, today we've got Supercharged Outlaws brought, brought to us by Loy and Sons Earth Moving. We've got 28 versus 275 Viking Metalcraft. We've got Outlaw Bike, SVO Transport and Couriers. We've got uh, Peter Lay, Custom Imports Modified. Uh, and we'll just interrupt that with uh, Street Bike and Mod Bike to the staging lines, please. Okay, Street Bike and Mod Bike uh, to the staging lines, please. Street, light, street bike and mod bike to the staging lanes, please. 
Also, going back to those sponsors, Junior Dragster, sponsored by Rolling Repairs, and, of course, the Eight Mile Masters. Jungabunga Racing is uh, bringing that to us this weekend. But just to repeat, street bike and mod bike to the staging lanes, please. And street. Street bike or street cars? To street cars, yes. Street to the staging lanes. I'm getting confused. <laughs> it's not hard to confuse me. Yes. Just street. Don't forget to go grab yourself a coffee from the coffee vans. We've got two coffee vans here uh, today, one on each side of the track, and one is down near all the rest of the uh, food vans, and the other one, the secret one, which is the best one to go to because there won't be a lineup, is the one over here behind our control tower. And uh, if you want a coffee or a hot chocolate or a iced coffee or whatever else they can make for you. Make sure you head your way over there to the uh, coffee van. It's called Total Coffee and uh, I have been told they make an awesome coffee and as I said I'm looking at it right now and there's no lineup. so uh, get on over there, get yourself a coffee. Well, it seems like uh, a little bit of an issue getting uh, the final car off the uh, braking area there. Can't quite see exactly what's happening from here, but we've also got a little bit of a action happening on the track with the uh, a bit of a clean up there as well by the looks of it. So uh, not sure exactly what's happening yet, but uh, I will endeavor to find out.
Damien Hannigan. Front wheels in the air. 1.3 seconds to the 60 foot. And he goes through 594, 118 miles per hour in the eighth mile, Masters. Beautiful Camaro, that one. And as we were talking about earlier, it's got some nice rubber on the back of it. Makes the uh, stance just right on that car. Damien Morris and Brett Page. Of course, Brett Page over there in the PSR Pro Street radial lane in the big, big fair lane blown. 383 Cleveland. Damien Morris has this uh, very tough 383 powered Holden Monaro, the HQ. Carries the front wheels off the deck, but red lights by just 0.002. Of a second, that's another heartbreaker there from Damian Morris. But uh, qualifying doesn't, it probably won't worry him too much. 10.05 at 133 miles per hour. Meanwhile, the big fair lane of Brett Page ran a 9.70 at 139.6, just shy of 140 miles per hour. <coughs> All right. Les Rice in the HB Tirana up against that very cool looking Plymouth Arrow of Troy Curry. Very popular race car in the States back in the day, but uh, not all overly popular here in Australia. We didn't get too many of them uh, making their way over here, but uh, when you see a car like that one, you gotta wonder why. It's a great looking little race car. Running the 360 Mopar engine. Of course, this is a super sedan brought to us by Unreal Plates. This is their second round of qualifying. Les Rice gets out, moves around a little bit, as does Troy Curry in the Plymouth Arrow. Both cars get down nicely, though. The Arrow runs at uh, 10.15, 134 miles per hour, and Les Rice in that little black Tirana goes 7, uh, sorry, 10.75. Well, it looks good to see uh, Dave Goldie out there. Sorry, Dave Gall out there in the uh, Mighty Mouse. Uh, he had a little bit of an issue earlier on his first pass, broke the brake pedal. So uh, the word went out and obviously somebody helped him out with a welder. They were able to fix that brake pedal and get Mighty Mouse back out there in time for round two of qualifying for Super Sedan. Absolute legend of a car, absolute legend of a racer in Southeast Queensland. David Gall in the Mighty Mouse, lifts the front wheels, as does Dennis Ryan. Dennis Ryan in the Tirana. Beautiful launches, both sides of the track there. David Gall in the Mighty Mouse goes 10-1-1, 131 miles per hour. But that beautiful Tirana of Dennis Ryan runs an 8.85 at 153.65 miles per hour. Look at this beautiful little... Uh, TA Celica, TA22 Celica. Uh, my first car, I think I mentioned earlier, was a 1972 Celica like this. Mine wasn't quite as nice as this one, but it was a great car to learn to drive in and uh, learn to what they call these days drift in. We just called it uh, going too fast around corners. 
but uh, learning car control it was great. It was a great little car to throw around like that, actually. I love that car, and I'd love to get another one, but they're worth too much money these days. But uh, love seeing this thing of Eric Rowley's. The bright yellow paint looks awesome. And of course, Tony Misty Ebden over there in the far lane, the PSR Pro Street Radials lane with the big Dodge Coronet. Uh, this thing pulling 1,000 horsepower these days at the rear tyres. Couple of shots of nitrous. He said he's going to try and tame it down for the start line and get off the line. I think he's tamed it down too much. Might have been feathering off the line. Look at that little Salika go. Eric Rowley runs a 10 1 1, 133 miles per hour. Tony Ebden not too far behind with 11 23 at just shy of 100 miles per hour. Patrick Barron now in the Chevy Beretta. It was the uh, Chevy Berettas, uh, American cars, but uh, of course, being a Chevy, but uh, never really, I don't think they ever sold them here in Australia, but they did make their way over here. Quite uh, a popular car for, especially in the uh, super stock and pro stock ranks back in the 90s. Uh, great to see, I haven't seen one in quite a while, so it's great to see this car of Patrick Barron's out there. And of course, Judy Pukas in the Classic Valiant over there, Coyote Racing with the Superstar. Look at that car of Patrick Barron's go. And he runs an 8.64. Judy rolls through with a 10.67. Sorry about that, Phil. There was a line up at the toilets, but you know what happens when you turn up at a lovely racetrack, you end up running into people and talking to them. And uh, good to catch up with a few. Uh, well, we're all on the same church. If this is a church, what a congregation. Eh? I'm loving every ceremony we see here. Dale O'Dwyer on the big tyre. Kirsten Colston, great looking AU XR8. I would say by those license plates, 1989 is her birthday. So that's given away her age there. Hey, hats off to you, Kirsten. Dale O'Dwyer, 019, 116 in the 60, half track 515, and the quarter mile in an 816 at 156 mile an hour. I'll tell you what, mate, if my birthday was 1989, I'd be happy to give it away. Uh, I was... Well, yeah, I had to s subtract 19 years from my age to work out how old she is, but well, she's not an 18-year-old anyway. But it's good to say, yeah, good to see that, you know, because I know, that, I think that was one of the first cars Carpenter built in the AU shape. I'm nice. sure it's yeah. that car. Yeah, uh, it does look like that car. Yeah. Maybe, that, maybe it ended up in Doe Blaine's hands at some stage. It's something's triggering the memory banks that maybe that may or may not have happened, but she's got it now. So it was Darren Ramsey and Pete Wilson. How about this pano? Him and Phil Helpin should match race each other. Oh, definitely, definitely. Look at this thing coming in. It's a real crowd pleaser. Pete Wilson, Darren Ramsey, super sedan. Putting it on here at Warwick. Look at him go, just does it so easy. That's a, such a great blow and combo. 9.16, 151, it's best for the day. 9.42 or 145 for Darren Ramsey. They're just everywhere, in every shape or form. Like 57 utes, like. <laughs> they're everywhere. Well, they're not everywhere. 
It's about the only one in existence. And well, I've, I've got a 52 Chevy Ute. Yes, but mine was actually built that way here in Australia. They never made it to 57 doing that. So, uh, as you said, I think this is probably the only one in the world. It's, it's, uh, it's a funny story in regards to, of course, you know, Peter Gratz had the Valvoline 57 Chevy years ago. Yep. This is comprising back half and front half sections of that body when he went to the Daytona. I'd, I would say that's when this sort of body stuff was available. And they've done a really good job of it because it's also sectioned like... It's, it's, it's been chopped and channeled, and from different angles, it's got different... Um, it does work. Absolutely works. Look at this run for him. 894, 154. And 946 for, uh, for Noel Green. All right, Ford fans. Yeah, they've all got the rush of blood, eh? I, I saw the big burnout from Misty Mopar. I, I saw the burnout from the uh, from the Camaro. That's one very liberating part of owning a vehicle like this is you have the freedom to do the burnout the way you want. That's exactly right. And Mark Sugars, he doesn't uh, doesn't spare it. I keep needling him, uh, needling Mark about this car. I go, Mark, it's such a beautiful car. Why doesn't it have a clutch pedal in it? <laughs> Just because it, it you know. You, you love that that old gasser style. Got issues here. Issues for the uh, wild 408 of Ian Pimble. Some leakage. I don't know what it is. Is it oil? Is it fuel? So Sugar's on his own. But this thing came out straight as a die last run. Let's see if it does it again here. Very photogenic, is it not? It goes 1-4-0 on the 60-foot, probably on the back tyres, and uh, belts out a 10-1-3 to 134 mile an hour. Yeah, I was about to say just before he launched that car that the photographers will be ready and waiting for him, and he didn't disappoint, did he? It's the sort of car you always dream of owning, you know? One that you know it's going to do a certain thing, and it's spectacular. That is, you know, because... That's why motocross is so popular because freestyle motocross because you get air so the only air we can get in drag racing is those front wheels normally you know you can still get a whole good run in with air there's good air and bad air there's there's well, big wheelie yes. air then there's full lamartina air <laughs> and that's not good air that yeah, one no, that's right when you see that air you know things have gone very wrong that's not good air all right wayne height and Hamish Strawn, Hamish in the Commodore, weighed in this immaculate Toyota Celica, 406 cubes of Chev. I'm pretty sure that's the S Master Nargs G Gas Celica from years ago because not too many Celica full tube cars were built um, in this country. Looks the. Just a little hassle of the big tyre as he left the line, 134 in the 60 foot, half track 625. It uh, rolls it through the quarter mile, 9.83, 135 mile an hour. And for Hamish, 9.99, lighting up all PBs for him today, at 137 mile an hour. A hell of a field here for Unreal Plates Super Sedan. And uh, the fully fended bruises have been very good to see. It looks like we've got some streeters to come up, tons of motorcycles. Do we need any, anyone else called out there, Race Control? She's not offering up a lot of answers there. She don't care. Right, you are. I right. did notice uh, the nitro, well, at least one of the nitro funny cars, a little oh. bit of a warm up earlier. That uh, always tickles the eardrums. The throttle whack. Yeah, yeah throttle I, I, was, whack. Uh, I was on the toilet when that happened. <laughs> Oh, oh, that would have helped. For about half a second, I wasn't on the toilet, if you know <laughs> what I mean. After he gave it the throttle whack, I, well, I got some air. Back to that air. <laughs> Again, good air or bad air? Oh, well, problem. I don't know. I mean, it was probably bad at the end, but it was good on the hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was, probably helped, helped it, things along. Oh, there's no, no, better, no, no better thing. And, and you know when they fire those things up, there'll be one of that group that, that love the throttle whack. And, I, and I'm sure 
Mr. Graham Cowan, who's here this weekend. Big shout out to you, Mr. GC. Is that he loves the good throttle whack too? He that'll be one thing that he would never want to see out of the sport is that fire up, that warm up, and that throttle whack. Oh, because sure. that's what got me. That's that was the hook that got me. When you could hear an engine respond like that on the hit. Let's see that in Formula One. It doesn't exist in any other motorsport. There's nowhere else in motorsport that gives you that throttle whack when the thing's warming up. That's, That's just exactly sitting there right. at three metres from you when it's doing it. You know what I mean? Like, And that goes back to what we were saying before about the accessibility of uh, drag racing. Go to the pits and actually experience that, as you said, three feet away from you. And uh, as you said, there's nothing else like it anywhere else in the world. That, that throttle whack where it goes from... Not much horsepower to everything. Tons and tons of horsepower in an absolute instant. Um, what's that thing that went, went a bit viral on YouTube? Is the funny car out in the desert? Have you seen that one where they're warming the thing up? It's got no body on it. It's out there sitting up on jack stands, but it's in this sort of desert area. And they've hit this thing sort of just on dusk by the look of it. So it's all flame. And then you could imagine what the echo would have sounded like. Wow, Actually, yeah. to hear that from a couple of miles away would be interesting. But... Um, yeah, it was the same. Even you know when we'd camp at the uh, the Winter Nationals, we'd camp up at the caravan park, mm. and on a still night when the nitro cars came through, yep. there was probably upwards of a. It was a. I can't remember exactly how many seconds delay it was, but it was <laughs> a considerable delay, not not just three second delay. It was it, right. it was it was maybe seven to ten second delay because we could hear it listening to eighty eight FM, so you could hear it live. Um, yep through 88 fm but then you could not hear it where you were a couple of miles away but then when it did get to you it's like wow you can really hear them all the way over here and i'm and i'm sure even in sydney they get that as well i'm sure at night i'm sure they must do yeah. somewhere somewhere in blacktown they know when the fuel cars go down you know what i mean like um yeah. i'm sure that's what works and, and here i suppose we're a bit out of town so you're not going to hear too much of it um although if the wind's blowing the right way i've, I've heard the circuit track sort of from near town there it's not a bad sound. In fact, that's the sound of industry turning. It's a different sort of industry turning. Oh, yes. So uh, Lynn, Lynn is into it. He can hear it out the back door at home. So there we go. So um, Meltdown Under can hear us out the back door at home. Oh, he can hear us at the back door. Is that right? Hello, hello. If you can give us his real name, I'll give him a personal shout out. He can take his neighbours out the back and go, listen to this. I'm going to get a personal shout out through the wind. I'm famous. <laughs> I've, I've got connections, you know. <laughs> hello. <laughs> It'd be like one of those, I can hear something on the wind. Wind, wind. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, it, good. Good sound travels. Good sound travels. And um, the sounds of motorsport are sounds of industry turning. And... Um, I'm lucky. I live in a. I live in suburban Brisbane. However, my next door neighbour, she's a rally driver. So it's nearly every weekend there's motorsport happening somewhere. Or the son, he, he's, she's got a son who's a drifter. So he's working on the drift car, and then across the road, the kid across the road's a go karter. So this is just in suburban Brisbane. So um, we don't hear the racetrack, but we've got plenty of that stuff in our own street. What? It, oh, your street probably is like a no prep, <laughs> no prep little area down the back. Some people have got more room than others. Yeah. Their shed is often a burnout pad, so... Yes, you know. <laughs> well, some people have got more room than others, don't they? That's a very heavy bag you've got there. My God, is that normally what you carry around? Oh, she, right. She's one of the most important people here, is young Brittany. We're not recognising it on race And um, looks like she's found a perfect spot down there on the floor, wheeling out the, uh, wheeling out the laptop. So we've heard them warm up there. So normally they don't normally uh, do that unless, you know, they're ready for a little bit of a ding-dong battle. And it wouldn't take much for them to tow out whenever they are ready. But uh, take the opportunity to get around and uh, see their setup. They, um, they sort of stack them in there, facing them in so they can work on all, all of them at, uh, at once. And, uh, yeah, the warming them up's the same. They've got them right there and they just... Um, just do it when they need. So when they're warm, they're ready. Oh, hello, Ferret. Hello, Fez. You can hear us from your, hear him, hear us from your back door. Hello, Fezza. Fezza, come in, Fezza. Can you hear us through the wind? Did the wind blow the right way for you then, Fezza? Thank you for that. And that's someone watching on the live stream. Actually, if that bloke is watching the live stream and he can hear us from the back door, why the bloody hell isn't he here then? 
why isn't it because of the wind? You reckon he can't get here because of the wind? Oh, is it really? Well, now, now I'm going to send another message through the wind to Fez. Ready, Fez? You ready for this? Soft. Soft. Fez, get, if he's hearing us from his back door, wherever he is over here, over the PA, he's watching it on the live stream. He's hearing himself out the back door, but yet Fez can't get here. Soft. Fez, I'm coming to get you. Hey, get him to text me address. I'm going to go get him. I'm going to go get Fez. How are you, Junga Bunga? Good, mate. He's just still pumping along here. He's gone. No, he's, he's flat out, Junga. He's running around. Yeah, so Fez needs to get down here. Like all of you fine folk have made the effort to come down here and, uh, and welcome. This is just one of the best damn little race tracks that we've got in this country. Uh, and all the more better because you're all here. Um, I'm a bit biased too because it's Queensland. I love that. We're parochial Queenslanders, all the Loy family and all the great group of volunteers here. They put in a lot of effort to keep this uh, racetrack not only sort of going throughout the years but throughout the upgrades. Remember the council, we've got to thank the council uh, for uh, obviously tipping in the, uh, the money which helped us get to quarter mile. But, you know, a lot of that work behind the scenes and, well, right in front of us here, of course, the Loy family and all of their volunteers. We've got a quarter mile drag strip, beautiful uphill braking area. And, uh, geez, you know, neatly manicured, primed, primed pit areas. It's a lot of prim, primed pit areas there, wasn't it? Prim, primed pit areas. We've got plenty of prim, primed pit areas oh Phil's Phil's got the commitments and off he goes there we go Brit the per personal assistants come up and provided that no well, no that's all right you can just are you playing NRLW are you or something eh? actually she'd be a good NRLW player she'd lo she'd love to bloody sink the elbow in there I reckon Gary Steinberger out there in the big ram and Jake Roberts beside in the Falcon Ute So Phil's just had to go out for some other uh, other commitments. Brittany slams the door in my face. And we're off. Thanks, Pete. Thanks for that. Be really good. There we go. So that big ram, can it run a 14-something? It ran 15-something uh, on the last run. 15.37, 15.41. Oh, I love a good Super Street. Love a good... You can have just as much white knuckle, high impact drag racing experience in Super Street than you can in any category. And I love these things. Still got to drive them. Check our bar black Commodore out there of Andrew Faulkner. Cameron Hunt beside him in the, uh, the VY. Super Street category brought to us by Swellings Painters. Quite a few in this category, all with a chance. Remember, we normally dial your own eliminations. Oh, well, race control are taking on Chicago Shootout tomorrow. There'll be a lot of, a lot of pencils and paper here. It's, it's actually, you know what? It's still probably the best way to do it sometimes. Um, over three rounds of Chicago Shootout. Cameron Hunt and Andrew Fortner, 13.57, So um, you can just about run anything you want in here, i.e. Our, uh, our tray back, Daniel Shaper. Stuart Tolhurst beside in his 202 from Laidley. Doesn't go too bad, the commie, does it? 202 on board, auto. Aspo, you would assume. And it's getting it done. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to Damien Holyoke. He's 10 minutes away um, fixing my high ace. Told myself can't come till I fixed it. Yeah, okay. Well, that's your excuse. That's your excuse there, Damien. But Fez, doesn't sound like Fez has got anything to cover, but if you're fixing your high ace day, mate, you just listen to the uh, listen to the live stream or if you can also weirdly hear us at your back door there as well. Good on you. Good on you, Fez. Yep, yeah, understood. Looks like he's definitely been listening to us. <laughs> Nicholas Brig and Darren Otto. Well, that's that blowing six banger that he built during COVID and we got a 
boosted boosted Gemini over here. He built this during COVID, he reckons, Darren Otto. And look at the thing, blowing 202 track rod out there in the open. Watch out, it might go quick, 1333 at 100 mile an hour. That's enough. 1329 there for Nicholas Brigg in the, uh, the Gemini TC station wagon. On your demo and Fez. All right, Don Baird leaves the line. He's been the Willowbank Street Series champ. 307 runs in one year, races everywhere. His occupation is a drag racer. Sydney track champ street bike as well, Don Baird. Well, Don Baird not only is on his entry form giving us his name, he's given us his resume. And when you read all that out, that's a hell of a lot of achievement. So watch him in Super Street, because he can't stop racing by the look of it. Don Baird. Sydney Track Champ Street Bike, Willowbank Street Series Champ, 307 runs in one year between, how about that, between 2014 and 2015. Yep. Okay, so whatever's left in the lanes is what we're running, and then there'll be a bit of an increase in the intensity when the Nitro Funny Car's coming soon. So if you've got friends on their way out or people not quite here yet, you better let them know that those funnies are coming out shortly. So don't be anywhere. You thought about heading home or ducking home? Don't. Get yourself somewhere to see how these fuel coops go down this, uh, this fantastic Warwick quarter mile. So whatever we've got in the lanes is what we've got. And then those nitros are right. Oh yeah, well we've got the bikes. So here comes plenty of minutes of excitement here as they have their second run at the track. Bobby Nicole Schluter in the far lane. And the high boozer here ready to go. There it is on the swing arm. It's just those first numbers you can see there on the swing arm. There they are. So Bobby Nicole's ready to go. Just give us a moment here, folks. Just give us a moment. Just hold the phone for a sec, guys. We're just getting all our numbers right here for everyone. So the ET numbers, would, I'm sure, wouldn't be a problem, except we wouldn't be able to allocate the one in the, uh, the near lane. We just haven't got that racer number in, which I think was 327, but the screen's just locking up on us here. All sorted. That's Justin Malloy. Thank you, guys. Bobby Nicole knows how to ride that off the line with big revs. She is loving the launching on this bike. She's got it down pat. Big RPM, a little bit of slip, and rides that thing. 11.74 at 120. Around comes Justin Malloy with a lot more motorbike, 11 one But yeah, Bobby Nicole on the launch. You can see the difference in the way you are uh, to attack the start line. Bobby, smaller engine, bigger RPM, bit of slip, and that's come out nicely. Yeah.
All right, Andrew Fitzgerald, Tower Lane, Adam Hill. Far lane there. Whole lot of E-twin right there. 11.45 for Adam, 12.47 there for Gus. They deliberately sorted this out, the V-twins running each other. Don't mind it, don't mind it actually. Put all that V-twin grunt together in one pairing. Glenn Prowse, the Harley Diner here in the tower lane. Aaron Potts in the far lane. Oh, here he is. They are. There we go. Oh, Prousey. Glenn Prowse knows how to show off. Rides that Harley Diner out with a little bit of wheels, uh, wheel in the air. 11.24 to an 11.08 there for Aaron Potts. You never know, Shags. Mark Gordon out there and Jack Roberts. I'm sure that's what we're seeing. Yes. Yes, that is a little moped out there. Yes, I don't know where the bag is on the back of it that I normally see. And why am I hungry all of a sudden? 10 one there for Mark Gordon. Jack Roberts. My food will be here soon. 22.94 at 50. We joke, but honestly, too many times one of those bikes turns up with dinner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gagan, Gagan, Gagan. It's never Peter or Bob or Brian. Brian has just delivered your Uber. It's never Brian, is it? You never get Brian delivering. <laughs> Rupert, Rupert's just. <laughs> Pablo just delivered your meal but made off with your letterbox. Like, you know, I don't know, you could put that as a note. Uh, Max Jordan and Anthony Anderson now. This is the Z900. It's an immaculate bike. He's kind of got some sort of protective tank thing on it there. I don't know, probably to protect him from scratching the Juco. Still wants to ride it. The old Z-based engine almost. Could be Z1000, but look at that old school. It ran a 10 before. 11.11 11 at 124. 12.01 there for Max Jordan. They were the coolest bikes. And you know what? In 1987, I had the opportunity to buy a bike off an old racer called Ray Gibson. And I couldn't come up, this, this is how far I've come. I couldn't come up with the $1,800 that I needed for the bike. That's all I needed was $1,800. This thing ran 1160s, this thing, and it was $1,800 he was willing to sell it to me for. I, I could have asked my parents for money, but I knew what the answer was already. Um, you know, I was on a wrong way to nowhere in 1987. And they were certainly not going to lend me money to buy an 11 second Z900, but I wish I got it because the damn thing would be worth what now? So I could really blame my parents for that. 1297, I mean, that's if I asked them, which I didn't, so it's really just back to me. 1297 at 102, 1140 at 127 there for Chris Shaper. So he got the hang of it then. I think he sort of bogged the first run, but didn't make that mistake the next time. Plenty of opportunities in the motorbikes, isn't it? These guys just. More and more guys just uh, hopping on something. Paul Walsh and Cherie Ivory, and more ladies too. That's it, Cherie.
She's got the red light though, but she's now got that thing wound up. And, and you know, that launch, everyone's got a different way. Some people want to be more aggressive there. Some people are happy to just walk that off and then enjoy banging those gears up later, which she's done. 11 won seven at 130. And beside there, 11.07 at 128 there for Paul Walsh. So not too far away from a bit of a nitro burning action. Yeah. I was always going to I was always going to wonder what fuel funny cars felt like at Warwick and why wouldn't you have driven 7 hours to be here Shagar you wanted to see it too They're all here they want to see it that's good that's good um, it's it's almost a little perfect and a fitting fitting place to do it here because Warwick does deserve the razzmatazz it can be you know a big meeting venue um, we can have some big stuff here Braden Charters now and Bailey Davis. So the bikes got just a little bit longer in some cases. Because I'm sure that ZX14. And that ZX9 don't appear to be standard wheelbase anymore. So they've got that little bit of the drag bike bug. And they're going to lay it down here. These bike uh, categories, I don't know whether they're quite technically into outlaw bike or not, but we're running them all through. Different ways people ride too. Look for the people on tippy toes. Look for the people with flat feet as they go into stage. How many of them hop into stage with one foot on the peg? How many people stage with two feet? Different rider attitudes. Nothing to report there from both of those. They're both caught well with no rpm and two wasted runs uh, coming up here 1037 for braden charters and a 1325 it didn't all go right there that time but all right let's do a critique let's look at the poison stance of tammy goldthorpe one of the most decorated unsung sportsman drag races in, in this country can't see her from here, which is unfortunate, because I want to see if she's, is she the double tippy toe? Is she the single foot? Is she the single foot into stage? Like, you've got this, Steve Day, he's all back behind the peg, just top of his toes there. It's, she's a single footer. She's already got one foot on the peg, Tammy. She's a single foot stage. We can see double tippy toes here for Stephen Day. Hold on to it, Steve. Yeah. She, look at that. So that's... Well spotted there, Shag. She has that left foot already on the peg, right foot to stage at 9.08 at 152 mile an hour. 10.47 for Steve. And sometimes I think it's also too, if you're a slick and wheelie bar rider, you'd be mad. You might as well let both feet hang back. And they look like they do hang back a bit because when you leave, you know, you've, they're almost out the back for balance. You need to get them out of the way. So instead of having them here and getting them thrust back, you might as well have them dangling, ready to be flung backwards. Oh, pulls it up in second, bow strike. Yeah, even these V-twins can hoik the wheels up with a bit of mid-range grunt. You'd expect they should, but sometimes it is too damn heavy to do it. 995 ain't mucking around. 134 mile an hour on the fat bob. 1057 there for Rochelle. We're going to add up, we're going to start writing our ladies list because we've got that many girls uh, racing here today. It's incredible. Another one over here. So we have got the ladies coming through more than ever. That's been the one thing that has really sprung to uh, my attention for my first hit here this, week, uh, this year is to see what we've got. It's a bit of a sample. What's 2024 look like? Well, lots more families, lots more ladies. Ben Moore, Rachel Redman. She's an apprentice. Oh! Benny Moore strikes the tire. It was all RPM from Ben Moore, and Rachel Redman just got about business and puts it through for a 1075 at 127. 1066 with way more horsepower on board there for Ben, but spent so much time spinning there. 230 to the 60, 171 there for Rachel. Successful launch for her. This thing, if this is new, it's again, I'm feeling really good for 2024. We are just seeing at least what everyone's been working on in the sheds. Eric Redman. So the Redman family are in deep here. They love their stuff. 
Take a seat, mate. Are oh, you right? Malcolm Brooks, Brooksy out there. Back in the saddle, as comfortable as ever. In the happy place. Eric Redman. Last time this thing sort of bogged and bounced on the back tyre. Let's see if he's got a little bit more launch RPM up, the, up his sleeve. Gorgeous bike, like just state of the art. Pro stock style bike. Getting himself ready, bit of a line up there. That's a bike where you gotta be double tippy toes just about, you know, the, the fairing kinda lets you just have the foot down. That'll do, that'll do. He's out and gone. Brooksy just walks the throttle off there. 10.04. Now he starts banging the gears through the top end. It's going to be a nice big speed. 10.24 at 1.46. And he got there, Eric Redman. 10.75 at 116. And uh, getting, getting the hang of it uh, run after run. <laughs> Here he is. Can you read those letters there? What's that say on the leathers is? Something cheese. Is it cheddar cheese? Cheers. Is it? I can't read it. Cheers. Oh, is it cheers? I thought it was cheese. Jason Clarkin and Alan Annis Jr. So Alan Ellis Jr. I don't think that's a 600. It doesn't sound like a 600. It sounds bigger than that. Whatever it's got, it's got plenty of uh, grunt. 9.33 at 1.41, 10.09 there for cheese. <laughs> All right, line them up. This one, Mark Gord, Matt Wilson. Yep. Looks like a two-wheeled spacecraft. Two-wheeled spacecraft here, Matt Wilson. This thing is a rocket sled. Mark Gordon, a couple of bikes entered uh, this weekend. Oh yeah, they mean business. Could be some uh, PBs here on this run. Yep, lights up, bigger speed for Matt Wilson. 9.32 for him at 146. Mark Gordon, 9.60 at 140. No improvement on his first run today. Here we go. And then this is what I term as an old modified bike. This is the stuff. You don't see too many of these anymore. Yeah, I love an old drag bikes. Love an old lay down. Love a lay down. Shane Ball, 14... 1,427cc square tyre, wheelie bars on the back. Love that, love that ride. That, that's, I'd, I'd be more comfortable on that than a street bike. I think that'd suit my frame a bit. That frame would suit my frame a bit better. Like a little bit of the gut rest over the rocker covers. I like that, I like that. That'd be me though, not him. I don't know what's happening with him. I didn't see it, but that'd be me. I might accidentally, you know, clog the carbies or something. I'd have to be careful. I'd, 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 I'd have to wear one of those super tight ones, you know. Just hold everything in. But I'd love, I love a lay down. I just think it's, you can, you're going to work that wheelie bar. You know, you're really relying on the flat slick as well, like that, that, that wide square sided slick. It meant maximum impact. Slipping and a sliding through the clutch. I know what colour oil that's going to be soon. 9.32 at 145 mile an hour. You can hear a lot of slip there. And, and, and that sometimes, if depends how much power they're making. If you're too slippy on that launch, it, sometimes the thing gets hot and it just won't hook up. And that's what it sounded like there. You've normally got to murder those clutches a little bit to do a drag launch. And I remember my good mate Paulie, Paulie Pyers having to pull that thing apart every second run or th third run running in street bike, just knowing that if you don't do it, you are going to wear the thing out. So he'd know how to do the clutch on them. Yeah, that's good old fashioned lay down right there. Love that. And again, that, that original design, the fuel tank in the top, top tube there. Fuel tank in the top tube. 
All right, a few more in this class. And, uh, oh, yes, there is nothing. You know, every time I see a funny car coming down a staging lane with the bodies up, I flash back to Surface Paradise 1979 when I saw my first fuel funny cars at Surface Paradise back when I was nine, right? Back when I was nine, right? Um, I was, uh, you'd see these things come and you couldn't believe that the actual car body was just this body. But you just remember the stick holding them up. Mate, you'd go home and play Lego for a month after after what you saw there today. But you were building funny cars, you were building drag strips. Um, that memory. And now every time I see that and you see them coming down like that, I just think straight away back to the first time I ever saw them. Um, nowhere else in motorsport kind of gives you that anticipation. Because, you know, when those bodies go down, it's business. Oh. Clinton Swally get all hooked up. Look at the gears now. So let's just put that pass down to, um, oh, we won't keep that time slip. Uh, 10.96 there for Wayne Merkins. It looks like it's gone all right for him. Previous PB of a 10.90. So a 10.96 ain't too bad. And uh, yeah, Clinton throw the 15.08 away. I know he's gone as quick as 11.50s. And then there's guys that just treat them like little toys. Mick, Mick Mundy just stands there and decides, you know what, I'm going to throw this thing, you know, into multiple 60-degree angles to get that tyre warm. Brian Alvizio, here we go. So that previous, what, 740, 180 mile an hour. Let's see what Brian does here. So these two guys, a couple of thousand passes between them on drag bikes. does it doesn't it just goes through the motions 572 takes it all the way down the deep end 901 146 901 146 11 12 at 125 no i got might have got the guys mixed up myself there too look how good these things look fit for purpose Woof. Michael Yiani in on the green bike. Peter Deal here on the uh, the orange machine. Just trying to spot what they are. Shags, can you see them from here? I can't. Quackers. Yeah, we've got a pair, maybe. Maybe a pair of them. It's going to be music to the ears here. Both bikes fit for purpose. They do look, look at the size of the boys on them. They do kind of look like, look like little toys. Yanni is, yeah, but Deal's still got a fair bit of size to it. Still got plenty of mumbo for the smaller capacity. 1088 and Michael 1258. All right. All right. So just another call. We've had a we've had a belt handed in. If anyone's by now hasn't realised that they've lost the belt. We got the belt in the tower. Someone's either got really heavy power steering or no charge to their alternator, and I want you to own up. I've got the belt up here. It's the 6PK 780. If it doesn't go in the next 10 minutes, I'm putting it on Marketplace. It's autographed. It'll be autographed by Shagger and, and be available on Marketplace in the next 20 minutes if uh, the owner of the belt doesn't come up. Maybe they don't know it's missing. Have a look for a empty belt area. Carl Pacey. A little bit better, but then the thing's lost fire. No problems for Carl Pacey. In fact, this is a good one. Sounds the business. 982, 132 mile an hour, but unfortunately, 
our lay down bike has again either fueled up or, or played up and um, it's going to be all um, a, a slow negotiation back for our uh, for our bike. Now it looks like we're going to do a little bit of prep here as you can see folks because guess what only in a matter of minutes you can see them in the staging lanes our Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars are going to run very, very shortly. But we're just going to put a little bit of the glue down, getting our bike off the track for now. And uh, that prep has, uh, has started. A little light spray. Beautiful conditions right now, actually, as the sun comes down. We were lucky enough to get that really, once the, the rain kind of came through and made it wet, when the sun did come back out, like it, it took no time at all. And even when we're walking around on the ground, on the dirt here, it's dry like it was so we we're so lucky that we got such a light hit of it that the thing dried up in no time flat and uh, we we're able to get underway with uh, with more um, qualifying coming down to this moment where um, to uh, of course commemorate the uh, official grand re well you can't even say reopening it's the grand opening of the quarter mile distance here at Warwick Dragway it's simple as that we've been ra running here over the 660 for the uh, the last um, you know few months, as the track uh, got itself um, back up to scratch, and of course then part of that was the uh, the quarter mile upgrade. So we've had the date here it is, and uh, to commemorate that we have got the Nitro Funny Cars here as part of that. So we have quite a few of our dignitaries down there um, to be a part of this uh, momentous occasion, and I'm sure before too long we'll be uh, going through some of those formalities in regards to that. You can see a lot of our um, VIPs down there. They've got the obligatory. Um, you are going to need the. Uh, you are going to need those headphones. You're definitely going to need those headphones, um, because before too long, you'll know exactly what makes drag racing such. Well, if you haven't already found out how exciting the sport is, well, this is a good way to really sort of turn it up to 11, and uh, we'll uh, we'll give you a really good example of that in the next uh, couple of minutes folks as we do a little bit of track prep and uh, looks like we've got uh, on the roll a, um, all of our, our dignitaries and VIPs uh, because it is a great occasion um, it's so good that a, uh, a let's call it a regional, a regional racing facility and of course for us being biased a drag strip that it's good that you know that there is some investment into this infrastructure they can hopefully see and I, I'm sure everyone can see where the investment has gone. It, it's been mainly to the surface, uh, the racing surface and its distance. Of course, great cultivation of the land, the additional distance, that uphill braking area, which is beautiful braking area. Dangerous Dave's already been up that braking area. The timing boards, that's right, the timing boards as well. Um, and in general, you know, it's, sometimes it's a lot of the things that you don't always see, that adds up as well. But, um, you know, when we rolled in this morning, we had all the flags up on the driveway. We've got all the pit areas all finely manicured. Nearly 200-odd entries in here. So many people here just so committed to, um, to seeing this drag strip not only, you know, step up, but uh, continue to flourish. Because guess what? This sport ain't going backwards. Not, not anywhere in this country or anywhere in the world that I've seen. And, and, and not with well, we can only do We can only do so much. All the people that normally come and race can do the rest. Um, and then we just multiply that per track and we know that the sport is growing all over the world. We already mentioned about some of the great things that have happened, especially through the world of YouTube and social media over the last few years. And I keep using Cletus and 1320 video as two YouTubers that give, between them got six million. You know, you throw in, um, you know, any other bunch of them sort of under that and every single one of them, no matter how many people that they've got, as, uh, as followers or subscribers, they're all watching it for the one reason, they want to see drag racing. And that is more than ever before. That's, that's what will be happening shortly, Dave, I think. I'm uh, keeping an eye and an ear out. Yep. Yes, yeah, so nearly all in, nearly, nearly all in readiness. But uh, I can certainly guarantee for all you people here today and where you come from, obviously you don't mind the sport of drag racing, as we don't mind the sport. We know 
millions of other people around the world are uh, either into it or catching on to it. Um, it's good when we convert new people, isn't it? And sometimes you've, it, it takes a long time to convert new people to it. Um, but boy, everywhere we've seen throughout the sport, we've got more interested people coming, not only in either as a competitor, that's where it all mainly comes in, by the way, because it's a hell of a sport to do. It's a hell of a fun sport to do. Um, but uh, coming in to, um, to uh, support a racer base, it's good for the economies. Uh, you know, when, when people come to race, they, they, they normally, you know, they'll, they'll, fill their, they'll fill their vehicles up down at the local server. They'll stay in the local hotels. They'll eat in, those, uh, eat in the restaurants. Uh, jobs to the regional area continue as long as there's a racetrack around. I don't know too many economic models that don't work without the, uh, that, in, that beautiful uh, economic impact of a racetrack nearby. Um, it definitely an investment um, in the area. When, uh, when there's a racetrack around. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming along here to uh, Warwick Dragway, the grand reopening of Warwick Dragway. Today, we would like to welcome the Honourable David Littleproud, leader of the National Party. Uh, we've got the Southern... Sorry? Oh. <laughs> we've got the Southern District Downs Regional Council Mayor, Vic Panisi, and we've also got the Deputy Mayor, Rod Bartley, and Councillors Stephen Tancred and Andrew Gale here today to officially open Warwick Dragway's new quarter mile facility. Big round of applause, thank you. It's been a long time coming and we're very, very excited. Uh, this project has been jointly funded by the Australian and Queensland governments under the Disaster Recovery fund Funding Arrangements Local Economic Recovery Program. Uh, Southern Downs, a great place to live, work, play and stay. I would now like to invite Mayor Vic Panisi up to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor Vic. Stay where you are, you're fine. Uh, good morning, good afternoon everyone and welcome. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Um, uh, David, uh, thank you so much for caring for our community uh, and understanding what the potential was here and for the money that your government uh, uh, gave to us for this facility to, to turn it into a world-class facility and I look forward to uh, what we can do from here. To, uh, to Chris and John, uh, thank you for the contribution that you guys make to our community. Uh, this wouldn't happen if it wasn't for you and your committee and the volunteers that you do have. So thank you so much for, for that. Uh, I look forward to you guys and to see what's, what's coming. Um, to, to my colleagues, uh, thank you for the support. It, without the colleagues' support in the chambers, uh, we certainly wouldn't have had this project, uh, uh, I guess, elevated to a project that we wanted some money for. Uh, Thank you one and all for your attendance here. It's great to see it come to this 
uh, to this finally. I remember the first day when the first bit of concrete was laid here. That was a fair while ago. And, and it was exciting then and it's even more exciting now. And I hope that the competitors can appreciate uh, the, what the track that we have here uh, and that you keep coming uh, so that uh, we can get some enjoyment or so the spectators can enjoy um, uh, their sport uh, and, and the love of their sport. Uh, thank you very much and I might hand... Did you want to say a few words, Dave? Is that the, is that the program? Uh, yep, sure. Next one. Yep. Uh, well, thanks, Vic, to you and the councillors, but to uh, Chris and John and his this is a day for you. Uh, they made money about three years ago for this. Uh, it was their vision, and this is what it looks like, a world-class facility that you should be proud of, that this community should be proud of, because you are... Whether it be this or Morgan Park uh, Raceway next door, we have world-class racing facilities here because of the people who are prepared to give their time and energy for nothing. They have done this not being paid, but because they believe in their sport and they believe in our community. So to you, this is your day. This isn't my day. This isn't the council's day. This is a day for the community and those that are prepared to put their hand up and have a go. So to you two boys and all your team at the Dragways, this is your night. Have a great night. Well done. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, now we will invite the Honourable David Little Proud and Mayor Panisi to cut the ribbon. This is the official cutting of the ribbon. We'll see how many people can hold a, hold a pair of scissors at one time. Thank you. Big round of applause, everybody. And uh, we can officially uh, announce Warwick Dragway's upgrade as open. Well done, Phil. Well done. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the ceremony on the uh, on the start line there. It is a, uh, you can obviously see all the time and effort and that investment has gone definitely value for the investment that here we are on the start line of one of the best damn drag strips that uh, you'll get anywhere in this country and uh, we're doing it here in Warwick and that's coming from someone with 25 years experience in being at racetracks around this country and uh, I do have a soft spot for the regional tracks but I certainly do have a soft spot for uh, for this crew, this team, this uh, this town, and uh, and this group, because um, you know they do it their own way, and they they sometimes make the big tracks look like they, you know, maybe to do, need to do a bit more sometimes. But uh, that is the joys of that um, regional track. Is normally a lot of the times you've just got to make your own stuff happen, and this is what they do very very well. And uh, Junga Bunga is the uh, is the uh, the young fellow that's probably going to have many many years as the as the the boss dog around here, mate. He's going to be the, He's definitely the hardest working bloke around here. The whole Loy family. But I mean, I've watched this guy grow up since he was a kid and pretty good drag racer in his own right. Uh, but now running a racetrack. Well, that takes a whole lot more um, uh, attention to detail to be required. You need a good group around him, and he's got a good group around him. They want to work for the Junger. Uh, he doesn't blow up too much. He just get, he just gets results. Um, and that, I think that's the key to having a good volunteer group is you've got to have a good team and, and he's, he's definitely that sort of infectious personality that just wants to you know, get on with it, get the work done and, uh, and keep that drag strip uh, in um, tip-top shape and make the races happy. And that's the key ingredient with the regional track is that you make your races happy. If your races are happy to come there, they're going to roll in the gate every time you say that you're going to have an event and they're happy to set up and they're happy to stay a couple of days and and race this, this is as we said earlier on today sometimes you don't think we need to call it motorsport anymore it is a big form of recreation in this country dollar for dollar there's a lot of people on their own money racing and using and, and racing as a recreation it's not fishing yes there's there's hundreds of thousands of people out there on boats fishing there's a hundred thousands hundreds of thousands of people out there camping but there's also thousands of people racing every weekend at different tracks around the country and around the world, and it can't be ignored, And especially since the growth curve is on the way up as far as um, not only 
motorsport, but especially drag racing, it uh, it is a motorsport. It is sometimes the tightest, closest, the most exciting racing you'll ever see, and you won't see any other motorsport with it. However, also, it's opportunity to kick back and uh, when you roll through the pits here after you know, when everyone's finished racing, that's the recreation. That also was a big part of camaraderie, being of a similar group uh, and travelling to be here as part of it. Making your decision on your own corn, your own time, your own effort, your own blood, sweat and tears to come out here and hopefully have a good day's racing. And even if you don't, you've caught up with your people and you've had a, uh, you've had a good time any day. As they say, a bad day at the racetrack's better than a good day at work. Except if a shagger where every day is a good day at work. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. What else can we do to use utilise your time, Shagger, on the way in and out on the boats there? Can we throw an underwater camera in there and see if we can catch some marine life on the way out or something? Can we get some scuba gear on him or something? You know, he's, he arrives, they reckon the boat's still another hour away, so Shagger whacks the wetsuit on and dives. <laughs> you, won't get, you won't get Harper. He, found Mig he might have found Migaloo, though, but... Shaker reckons he'd get, get harpoon. All right. Oh, well, hold on to your hats, folks, because what we've got coming up shortly, worthy of your attention. In fact, you would, would have to check your pulse to see if you weren't affected by what's coming up shortly. Um, in the Bandit Nitro Funny Car will be Josh Lay, and in the Nitro Express 57 will be Morris McMillan. Then the Stormtrooper and King Kong. Who's in Stormtrooper? Brandon Gosbell uh, and Terminator, isn't it? Oh, oh, sorry, Terminator now. Sorry, I'll... Justin's in Terminator. Justin Walsh. Brandon, Brandon Gosball's in King Kong. There we go. I had to get that sorted. And then we've got the lay girls in the, in the wheelies, the wheel standers. So that's what we've got coming up for you very, very shortly. And, uh, geez, if you add up the laps that these guys have had over the years, and you know what, when you think about it, and, and look, the sport in general, if you follow drag racing in Australia... Um, We've had multiple administrations over the last few years. Multiple products continue to evolve. One that sort of came out on its own was the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Car Series. Run, of course, with, you know, of course, big help, Graham Cowan and Rocket and Aeroflow, of course, being the, the uh, you know, a, a Rocket product, um, to do this Outlaw Nitro Funny Car Series. So that was basically Graham turning his back on the traditional form of what was out there, top fuelers. He had, he had two of the most state-of-the-art, GC's always had the good stuff. It's state-of-the-art fuelers to decide to get rid of the fuelers and let's just run a group of funny cars on the older rules, two-speed gearboxes, little blowers. That's how it started and that's how appealing it was that we started running five side-by-side, side, no better show. Took that all around the country. For years has taken that around the country, all at his own money. Here he is still doing it. And if anything, now he's got a few super serious nitro funny cars that pop up in NDRC level. But it's so good to see that you can still pop out the old favourites and then for him to say, you know what, I want to come to Warwick and I want to run these things sing at Warwick um, for the crowd. You know, that just goes to show how much the man's willing to give to the sport because he, he, he loves it at every level, whether it is state-of-the-art level or these things, which eventually stopped being the low-tech, low-budget cars. And in fact, we've got, yeah, slightly bigger diffs, bigger blowers, bigger mags, bigger everything on them than what they used to. So these things ain't no joke. I mean, you know, we, we used to be doing handstands when these things are in side-by-side -side fives. These things go like 40s if, if you really want them to. They're going five 40s for heaven's sake. Two 30s, 270 mile an hour. I mean, these things ain't no joke. These things are hopped up. So this is what Graham's got laying around. Yeah, I was just going to say spare in the shed. He's just, he sold a few off. There's one in New Zealand. There's a few going around the place. Guys have picked up the ones that he sort of has had. And again, that's another contribution to the sport that we don't acknowledge as much as we should, is that more and more people have, you know, got the same bug that Graham, that bit Graham years ago as well and continues to, it's good to see it still bites Graham now, that, um, that he still keeps a couple of the favourites and they are such a good show, out of the box, whatever. And then getting back to what my initial point was, the guys are driving it like Morris and, and you know, um, um, yeah, Brandon, Brandon especially there as well. And, uh, of course, that lay kid, like, you know, he just hopped in that. You know, but, again, it hasn't been a free ride. Like, Graham will let you drive them, but you kind of got to run them and work them. GC waves the magic wand maybe over there at the end. Any, anywhere the magic wand's needed, I think the magic wand comes out. But, the, again, that's just the, that, again, that's just lending the knowledge and the information and sharing it because, overall, no need for secret squirrels here. The general 
idea is to just have good side-by-side -side drag racing and, you know, a spectacle. Um, and that's just what this guy's done for years with these things. Um, and, you know, the laps that they've done at different tracks around the country. So you're in good hands here, folks. Some pretty good pilots, some pretty good equipment and the right fuel in the tank. It's only a few seconds away. We're in that ready position. The bodies are up. Here it comes, folks. To all of our VIPs and dignitaries that just put on their headphones, welcome. They couldn't hear that. What do I say? Earphones. I don't, muffs. Put on the cans, boys. You're going to need the cans. All right. Watch your ears, folks. Watch the boys on the start line. Oh, the limiter, limiter. I'm glad you guys didn't stab it right in front of our mayor and everything here. They got a bit of a, uh, he's reaching for the phone. They all want to film it. I, I love this. I love watching dignitaries get blown away by funny. I, mate, I'll keep fast forwarding that, rewinding that Pauline Hanson. I want that. No more explaining on that one. All right. The man, where is he? There he is. There he is. There he is. Okay, what's GC got in the magic can this time? He lets the boys make a lot of their decisions, but here's the track. He's read the track. What are they going to put down as their first hit here this afternoon? Aeroflow. Outlaw Nitro, funny cars, quarter mile action here at Warwick Dragway. 13, 20 motorsports. Be pretty sticky out there. Mrs. Lay adjusts the hat. Check the idle. Boris McMillan is ready. Joshua Lay is ready. Shake down, Morris McMillan thunders it through 491. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 491, 235. Morris McMillan decides to bury that 57 right through the quarter mile here at Warwick, and it's first ever for second time. Oh, hang on, we're four, hang on, 491. We got a thousand. 491. It's still 200 mile an hour at half track, by the way. Can we pull that incremental back up? Here we go. It's back up here. We got it. Chag has grabbed it. Chag is right on the instant replay. Okay, there we go. One zero zero to the sixty foot for Morris. So here we go. One zero zero to the sixty foot for Morris. One one seven there for for uh, for Lay. It started to shake. He was off the throttle. I mean, it shook hard. Um, that's how good the track was. There's good glue on that. Morris gets to half track, 386 at 200 mile an hour. Then it is the 1,000 foot time we're looking at. 491, 235, 491, 235. So I thought he got, because he kept taking that. You could hear that thundering through the valley here. And I thought he's taken that all the way. But no, we got the 1,000 foot timer giving us that 491. So that was even then when you look at that low five something there. 230, I can't get the nitro out of the commentary box here. Can you, are you getting a fair whiff of that? Just goes to, how, goes to show how poorly sealed we are up here. Anyone else, anyone else suffering from nitro fumes? Anyone got it? Everyone get a bit of that? Not bad, you want some more of that? You want a bit, you want a bit more of that? All right, all right. How's Brad down there? Is he all right on the, on the stream? Anyone else want some more nitro? All right, you want some more? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, I reckon if you had a bit of a coffin of cold or a flu sniffle, I reckon if you had a bit of a sniffle before today, it's probably going to go away. I think that's good for the sinuses there because it's uh, that was a good run. one zero zero to 60. But, uh, yeah, Josh, it shook a little early. But, yeah, 262 to 330 foot, 386 to the 660 at 200 mile an hour. And uh, then when you heard him get off the throttle, all you heard was the 57 still powering through, thundering through here. Never heard, well, we've never have it, we've never heard it before because we've never seen it before. So never now, I like, 
I like nitro cars here at Warwick. That thundering through, like it seemed to be going out through the countryside. I can tell you what, the people up the up here at Morgan Park certainly know what the hell that was by now. Well, I don't know. Let's let's just yeah, I, that's a good point, Shagger. I don't know how the horses down the road went. What happens? What happens to you know twenty horses when you unleash eight thousand horses? <laughs> I imagine that. All locked up at the Polo Championship last quarter, just about to do the penalty shot. <laughs> <laughs> not a good <laughs> anyway we don't apologize no apologies needed for that but um that was neat the boys pulled up okay i would assume when no one's saying he's in the no one's saying anything about going deep that was all good they both yeah there we go so hats off to them so they are good uh, they are good on the brakes good on the shoots and that uphill braking area does help uh, absolutely slows cars down like nothing else so that's worked uh, an absolute treat you can't say anything bad about that start line. That's a pretty tight start line. Um, and as Shagger went and did the research, they do run that crow glide in them. So there is an opportunity sometimes on, you know, tracks that they just want to creep up on that you can, you know, you either put some weight on or take some weight off that clutch. It worked a treat, one double eight to the 60. And uh, he, rode it, uh, he rode it down pretty hard down there, did Morris, really wrestle it. And as we just said before, they ran just the track time and experience that these guys have got. So they've been down several tracks and, and Morris you know, also in New Zealand as well. Um, th these cars have, um, have, have proven that, um, yeah, they get down most tracks. They just uh, read it and try something that works. That definitely, if anything, yeah, um, Joshies would have had that stuck as well. It would have been side by side all the way down there for that. They're all capable of that same sort of performance, but that was nuts. Zero to a thousand foot in 4.91 seconds. Zero to 235 mile an hour in 4.91 seconds. Zero to 200 mile an hour in 3.86 seconds. So that's uh, that's what a few thousand horsepower will do to you. And um, hats off to the team. That is just one of two pairings. The uh, the Terminator and King Kong ready to go. But um, that's a fair indication of what's what's out there. A, a track that can definitely seem to handle it. And, you know, these guys, they, they share a relatively large amount of information. These things are pretty much nearly identical, you would say, in most ways mechanically, other than the body, the name and the driver. And uh, that, uh, that brain's trust. You just can't think how many runs. When you multiply by eight cars, on average is where they're all, all running on their tour, in, in the in the in the heyday is that that's a lot of track a lot of track time a lot of information and um you know it just goes to prove and graham went out to prove this that yeah you know, he could he could provide what what the sport should be and that is close side by side racing cars with personalities and names get the kids excited you know like monster trucks in a way they're, they're just a, a louder more well to me more exciting monster truck there you go. So it's been heard in town. Oh well, Warwick knows we're here. Let's let's give him a little bit more. All right, here we go. Brandon Gosbell. Oh, Brandon. Oh, yes, Walshie. Again, no more accomplished guys at the 125-inch discipline anywhere. And remember, Brandon rides six-second higher boozers. That used to be a hobby of his. Graham goes, what do you like on funny cars? I don't know, I'll run sixes at 200 mile an hour on a higher boozer. You're in. Oh, yeah, the man's in all right. Alrighty, Brandon. Sorry, not Brandon. Justin Walsh in the Terminator. Brandon Gosbell in King Kong. Firebird versus Camaro. What are we going to see here, folks? What can we do as an encore? Tree boys. Oh, boys, it's 
they're trying it off for size. Oh, it goes again. Shag of it on there. Good run for those ones. 493 to a 487. So a 91, a 93, and an 87 is the three ETs we've seen. 200 mile an hour for Brandon. 383 at 200. 387 at 197 there for Walshy. 995 in the 60 foot for King Kong. 100 to the 60 foot for Terminator. 258 to 330 foot for Brandon. Um, 261 there for Walshy. And yeah, 383 for Brandon at 200 to 660. 387 at 197. For Walshy, and then a 493 at 233, 487 at 232 to the thousand foot. So that's three out of the four that just basically you throw half a tenth on them, and that's the three out of the four that got down. Only that shake there from uh, from the bandit. But oh boy, folks, give a round of applause so far. What do you think of the Nitro Funny Cars here at Warwick? Did you like those over the quarter mile or what? They're all you hit. Oh, that's all stopped. They're all coming down here now. That's it. What do we miss? God, I never, never envisioned to this day that what that was going to feel like here at Warwick. And I like it, like it a lot. Thundering down here through the plains, just awesome stuff. Hopefully, it's all smiles from our VIPs in the middle here. Was that all, all right, gentlemen? Happy with that? That was. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. They definitely had the old cameras rolling. I know that for a fact. They uh, had the phones out and filming that. That's um, it's crazy, crazy to see. It, it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to comprehend because I can guarantee a lot of a lot of people, anyone that's tried to film these cars with your phones on the start line, you kind of lose the noise. Like you don't get all the good sound because the things are just louder than you can comprehend. It's only when, you know, sometimes if you hear them from that distance where you are. Did it thunder for you guys on the way past there? Did you cop a bit of that? Can't help but miss that. That's some impressive performances from those cars. Not a bad uh, estimate on the first uh, first hit of the track this afternoon for them. Fantastic to see. And um, everything I thought it was going to be. What do you reckon, Phil? Was that was that good? <laughs> you go, yeah, go on. What? For, had, uh, what was it like? Mate, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, that was great that was fun great from down fun here. Down here. I've, it's been a while it's since been I've been on the start line with Nitro, nitro cars, so I really, so I really missed it. And, uh, and uh, the guys down here, the uh, all the dignitaries, the VIPs, were very, very impressed. They're also impressed with the whole facility here. Uh, so uh, we're very thankful for them for being here today and uh, thankful that they got to experience such an, uh, such an awesome experience. So, yep, it's awesome. That's a lot of awesomes, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, poor you down there in the middle with all that nitro funny car. It's a uh, tough gig, tough gig, Phil, tough gig. But um, we're going to do the wheel standers here in a second, and uh, they're an absolute treat as well. There's an art to these things too. It, it's not, again, same deal. Lots of laps in these cars as well. So, you know, they fine-tuned the... Uh, the methods and, and um, combinations that these uh, unique vehicles require, they, they, they're not something that you can just open the rule book and there's how to build a wheel stander. It's kind of had to have a bit of exotic science to work it out. No, Shelby and Chelsea, the lay girls. All right, this is something different. This is something different. And again, GC comes up with his stuff. Oh, yes. Miss Behaven and the Nitro Sharon. Way up, way, way, way. Yeah, just a little bit of a test launch there to see what it's like, girls. Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Got the lay boys back here, Pete and Greg, watching the girls in action. 
not a bad couple of hits there. Kind of got a little bit of a secret desire to drive one of these. Just just because they say you've got to, you know, the only way you can steer them is little adjustments on the left and right rear brake to steer them. There's no other way you can steer these things. So they've got to um, they've got to do a um, a little bit of steering. They look through the floor, so there's a there is a big sort of hole in the floor between them so they can um, see where they're driving. You just can't go to a drag racing school and learn how to drive a wheel stand. You just can't. There we go. Oh yeah, everyone loves a bit of flamage. All right. Shelby in the tower lane, Chelsea in the far lane. All right, hold on to your hats, get your cameras ready. We don't know how this is gonna work. Only the ladies know how it's gonna work. Stage your wheel stander. Shelby lay, Chelsea lay. Aeroflow Outlaws, wheel standers. Oh, yeah, girl. Oh, yeah, you carry that thing all the way down. Sparks up. Give them a round of applause as they go through the quarter mile on the back tyres. 1076 to 1102. What do you think about that, folks? Yes. Something different, isn't it? If you haven't seen wheel standers before, that's a little bit exciting, isn't it? That is a uh, hell of a, uh, well, it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. It looks scary as well, but as we said, these ladies can't steer with the front wheels, got to steer with the back wheels. You're looking basically through the floor as you're up. And uh, we've got those titanium skid plates on the back throwing, uh, throwing all the sparks out. So how about them apples? How good is that? That is uh, mighty, mighty spectacular. So uh, that uh, gives us that little bit of uh, entertainment for now. That's kind of like our, uh, our headline stuff. But let me tell you what's coming up. More qualifying here in all of our great categories, including looks like 28, verse, uh, 28 versus um, 275 category, which is brought to us by Viking Metalcraft. Plenty of other categories to come. We've got uh, Supercharged Outlaws, Outlaw Bike, Modified, Super Sedan. Actually, we've seen Super Sedan again, Super Street we've, we've seen again. But they'll be out for more uh, a little bit later on. But uh, boy, how do you like that stuff, hey? That is Entertainment Plus. All right, so Outlaw Bike, they should be in the lanes. Supercharged Outlaw should be in the lanes. And Exhibition. So that's the ones we want in the lanes right now. And 28V275 to the lanes, please. So Outlaw Bike, 28275 and Exhibition. You should be in the lanes for another run very, very shortly. So that's uh, definitely set the old internet alight here. Loving what they're seeing there right around the world on the Overtaking Lane live stream. And for you folks watching it here in person, pretty entertaining, huh? I bet you if you did just come down from Morgan Park for a bit of a look in there, you would have had your mind blowing there in that last 10 minutes or so. Crazy, crazy spectacle that we've got uh, in this sport. Not only just wall to wall, tough equipment, machinery, mixture of different categories plenty of families racing plenty of kids involved plenty of second generation third generation races coming through so supercharged outlaws to the lanes please 28v275 is that you cormac hello cormac hello mate g'day mate yeah you're like me mate you've, you've sort of let the mullet keep going there mate yeah i haven't got the beard though i haven't got the beard but good to see you mate good to see you they have. Oh, is that where you went? Oh, well, I, I noticed that they went missing, but um, but they're back on, are they? Yeah, oh, good, yeah. No, that's right, because my old my old boss still sponsors old James. We were at the end, and you know what? Can you do us a favour?
side view of the ute, yeah, yeah, yeah. just the silhouette. All oh, right, we've seen the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars, but what about a state-of-the-art, world-class, one of the quickest alcohol funny cars in the world. And here we are at Warwick Dragway. John Canooley we're talking about out there. Now, we're just popping, the, uh, popping up the body on this car. This is the, this is the alcohol, alcohol funny car, so essentially, Just got to pop that back for a second, have a bit of a look at it. But this has uh, run previously into the 530s, I think, in alcohol funny car trim. So it is one of the quickest alcohol funny cars, certainly not only in Australia, but in the world. Yeah, something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was It was a big number. So it's, a, it's an honour to have it here at Warwick, having a few test hits here as well. We know that track can uh, handle sub uh, 160s. I know John's thing normally goes deep into the nines, low nine somethings. I mean... You can't deep dig probably too deep into the low point nines in the 60 on those things because you know they end up just rattling themselves senseless. But uh, normally those things are leaving in that mid to low 9.9, 60 foot, all else, all else going well. So another call for Outlaw Bike exhibition. Uh, should be 28275 in there as well um, coming up shortly. But yeah, issues they've just found there right at the end. So a keen ear or something's just uh, obviously been heard. Someone says there's something something up. Let's have a look underneath it. John, I mean, John's ready to send it every single time that body comes down. He, like, if that thing's running, that guy's going to send it. But just someone might have heard something there and just said, let's have a look at something. And um, they've, they've caught something in the nick of time because who knows? I mean, these things are super mega um, finicky. Sometimes un, uh, unpredictable. All right, so exhibition cars, 28275 cars, outlaw bikes, you should be all in the lanes for more qualifying. So I don't know how many more sessions we'll get tonight. We did have that sort of delay in the middle of the day. So I don't know, we'll just roll until, uh, roll until we see, eh? All right, that's not nice. So all, uh, all hoping to uh, get something underway here. I know we're looking around in the atmosphere. Looking around the atmosphere, we've got, got the hands out. We might have a light, light tickle or something going on. There is a light tickle coming through. Here we go, here we go. This happened before. Look, this look. It happened before. It's happened again. But that's not gonna not gonna dampen us our spirits too much, folks. If it becomes too much, you can just head up to our we've got a great shelter here, sort of near the, the canteen area. And if you do need to seek shelter, I'm sure we can. You got to find some. Some people might have rollies, but hey, we're just gonna cop what's here. And um, when it's done, we'll dry it all up. And, uh, and look, if it comes in blowing like this, like it did before. That's not so bad for us, it really isn't. Um, the track gets only lightly lightly covered and we seem to be able to work our way out. We've had a good little bit of sunshine late afternoon, so there is a bit of heat there, but we will be endeavouring to uh, keep this uh, keep these proceedings under uh, monitoring. And again, it's gonna be as light as it was before. So just have a look at which way it's coming from. 
let's just see how much we cop of it. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll keep going, no doubt about it. That's uh, that's one thing you can be sure of. We're we're here for the two days, so we are here to to run and finish this event. And we've had a couple of sessions of everything. We're just about to kick off for some more. And aren't we lucky that we got those funny cars in when we did, hey? There'd be nothing worse than having them in the lanes with the bodies up, ready to go, and then this happens. And then you'll be there going, oh, now I'm tortured. But at least we've got that fix that's keep us pumped. And, you know, if you just want to seek shelter, chat amongst yourselves, you know, we'll be back underway as soon as this stuff stops blowing again. Keep an eye on the bomb. And the way that it's sort of been blowing through, let's just hope we cop, again, a random spray like we've had. Mate, I've had bigger sprays from old bosses than this we'll be right we'll be right folks sit tight grab that food in fact i'm, I'm nearly ready for the steak but nearly ready for the warwick dragway steak burger and chips shag what do you reckon yeah, yeah. yeah shag is up for that morning, late lunch shags you reckon late lunch you might go to late lunch here you might go to late lunch <laughs> D dave's just gonna have like a hologram of a steak because he's 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 trying you want so you're on the pure carnivore diet so just nothing but meat Is that right, just from eating just meat? Yeah. All right, I'm going to try that. Can I start with a steak burger from Warwick Dragway? Yeah. <laughs> Work from there. Without the burger. Without the burger. So, look, for some of you folks, obviously, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're happy to cop a fair degree of it because look at, your, uh, look at the comfort level out there for the people out there. Good on you, folks. Hopefully, again, as we said, you know, if you were here earlier on today, you notice that it sort of stays light. And if it's a little bit lightweight like this, you know that uh, we're going to be underway as soon as, uh, soon as we can. As soon as this stuff stops, we get into drying mode and then we're away again. And honestly, what we copped even earlier on today, it didn't even seem to wet the old grass out there. Like it was still relatively dry. So it doesn't take, uh, this sort of stuff doesn't sort of hold us up for too long. But, you know, we'll dry what we have to dry and we'll run when we, when we can. So we appreciate you hanging around if you can because uh, we've still got plenty more plenty more stuff I'll be there in a sec. so yeah we appreciate your patience folks um, but right now we're um, we're uh, just um, we're not we're not having to um, we're not having to batten down the hatches. All we're having to do is just wait for this light sprinkle to finish and it'll be quite refreshing and we'll be underway again soon.
G'day Overtakers, here we are, Palmyra Dragway, up north, Northern Edition Mate. Road Trip Drag Challenge. We have made the road trip, we've headed up from Brisbane, we've just driven, what, 12 and a half hours yep. uh, to get up here to what an amazing spot. This is. is so good, the, and the people here are awesome. So, and the um, weather's turned it on for us. So we were a little worried about the rain yesterday, but uh, how good is the weather now? We drove up here in the rain, and they've done an amazing job to getting this uh, track dry, ready to go, the blue sky. There's a couple of clouds, not many at all. We've got racing, we've got road trip action, drag challenge action. The guys are just out doing a driving leg right now, and we're getting ready for day one of racing. Yep. So, uh... Why don't we uh, cut straight into a bit of the action on the driving lake? Yeah, let's see what we got. All right, mate, run us through what the deal is here. Yeah, so, mate, we're at uh, day one checkpoint, so about um, 35 k's from the track up the Pioneer Valley. So the guys have got to call in here and pick up one of these um, cards from Performance Parts Plus, and then we put their entrant number on the back. And then at the end of the day, when they hand in their um, time slip today, they must hand in this as well to show that they've been to the checkpoint. And that's uh, pretty much it, and very similar tomorrow. Hey mate, how's it going? Good. Are you loving it so far? Uh, not so far, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks to these boys for letting us in. I know we're late, but yeah. No. So, uh, so what happened? Uh, so I got me dizzy locked out at 30 degrees. I had to buy a different rotor button uh, to stop rotor phasing. So that part of the actual rotor button come loose, so the rotor button moved, and yeah, time and went out. Oh no. That's all it was. One you got, loose screw. You got it running. Yeah. You're back in the race. Yeah. Hope you have a good day, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. No worries, lad. See you back there. How awesome was that, catching up with a little bit of what was going on at the checkpoint? Yeah, it's great work, Brad, out there doing the camera work. Well, we're setting up the live stream here, so you've probably already watched the live stream, but now you get to see all the recap action. Where was it? That corner? It's this yeah. corner. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'm out. One of us is right. It's time for some racing. Let's see what's going on on the track. Let's race. Let's do it. Hey everyone, if this is your first time tuning in, my name is Pat, I work for Aeroflow Performance and today we're going to do TurboTech 101. So I'm going to tell you what a turbocharger is, what it does, how it works and a few key bits of information that are important to choosing and sizing your turbocharger for your application. So basically we're going to start with the very basics. What is a turbocharger? What does it do? Uh, how does it work? Uh, and I guess why would you want one? Everyone should have one though, by the way. So a turbocharger is effectively an air pump and a compressor. Eco so it's driven by exhaust gas. How does it work? So there's three elements that you would sort of break down a turbocharger in to describe uh, the components and what they do. Uh, so you have the compressor housing, which houses the compressor wheel. Then you have the core, which has the bearing uh, the bearing core, so the support, the shaft that connects the front and the rear, um, oil passages and water passages. And then you have the turbine, which is the back end or the rear of the turbo, which has the turbine wheel inside of it. What does each one do? 
So very simply, the turbocharger mounts on the exhaust manifold or on the exhaust side of a combustion engine. The exhaust gas goes into uh, the rear or the turbine housing and that spins the turbine wheel. That turbine wheel is connected to the compressor wheel, which is on the front. So as that turbine wheel spins from the exhaust pressure, the compressor wheel spins. Cold air flows into the compressor wheel and as it spins, it also creates a vacuum. So it assists in drawing cold air into the compressor wheel. And then it compresses that air down into a smaller, more dense uh, pocket of air effectively. So it's condensing that air and compressing it, hence the term compressor wheel. As that air compresses through this part of the compressor housing, that creates a denser charge air. And as it gets denser, so when everything gets denser and compressed, it becomes hotter. So that exits the compressor outlet. And then it will go through uh, usually a heat exchanger, so either a water to air or an air to air intercooler, which might be uh, a term that you're familiar with. And that cools that charge air down. So after the cool air coming in, it gets compressed, it gets hot. So as it comes out of here, it's starting to expand again. It goes through the intercooler and that condenses it back down. So it cools that charge air. And then once it's gone through the intercooler, it goes into the throttle body or the intake manifold of the engine to then be ingested or forced into the engine. So when this happens, you're effectively introducing more than just the atmosphere uh, worth of air. So it's becoming forced induction. Uh, the more air that you can cram into an engine, the more fuel you can add. The more air and fuel means a bigger bang, more combustion, more power. It can also result in more torque. It can result in a much wider torque band or a much higher power band. So as opposed to the engine just taking, using vacuum and taking what air is available to it at one atmosphere, the turbocharger can increase that charge air to one, two, three, four, who knows how much, depending on the application, how much more atmosphere's worth of pressure, so much denser air charge into your engine. You meet that with the appropriate amount of fuel and you get the big bang, which drives the engine faster and then transfers that power to the wheels and you get more power effectively. So once that, com that combustion process has happened, um, you're then left with exhaust gas. And when you're talking boosted applications, there's more exhaust gas, which will then again continue to drive the turbocharger. So the more exhaust gas you produce, you produce more drive pressure, which is gonna speed up that turbine wheel. So the turbine wheel speeds up, it's linked to the front, the compressor wheel speeds up. So then it's gonna compress and compress and compress and it's gonna create more and more boost. So how do you manage this amount of boost? Because everyone knows if you throw too much boost at your engine, you're gonna end up with crank inspection holes or windows in the side of the engine. They're not designed to carry too much. So how do we manage that? Well, all of that exhaust gas is trying to go through the rear, the turbine housing, through the turbine wheel, and out through the exhaust pipe. If we continue to rev the engine to higher and higher RPM range, that exhaust pressure is gonna drive this turbo to a point where it's just too much pressure, and we need to bypass that somehow. Now, that's generally done by the wastegate in this situation. We're talking either an external wastegate, which would be applied to this turbocharger that we have here, or in some cases, the turbocharger has an internal wastegate, which is a little bypass within the housing. So the wastegate is effectively taking all of that excess drive pressure that we don't need, and it's bypassing it generally back into the exhaust further down the stream or out to atmosphere. And that's how we control the boost level. So effectively, cold air goes in, compresses, comes out, goes into your engine, creates a larger combustion event, comes back out, drives the turbo to continue it. We bypass what we don't need to meter the amount of boost or control the boost. And then you've got this huge torque band, you've got this extra top end, um, top end surge, 
uh, and effectively a more efficient engine because you're utilising spent energy. So the exhaust gas that's coming out of the engine, you're reusing that to create more efficient combustion and more efficient power production. Okay, so now that we know the basics of uh, how a turbocharger system works uh, and what it does and, and how it all functions, we're going to go into the two most common designs of the bearing core. I touched on that really briefly. In the centre of the turbo, there basically needs to be some bearings, uh, some oil passages or some water passages uh, to keep the centre section cool because you've got that common shaft as you can see here, that common shaft is connecting the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel. So all of the heat and the load is going through here. These things can spin at upwards of 100,000 RPM. So there's a lot of load and a lot of heat being generated within that section. Now, traditionally, the uh, bearing cores were a journal bearing. Uh, or a plain bearing, also known as a bush bearing. There's a few different names for them. We, we refer to them as journal bearing, uh, basically. And you can see that design here. Uh, so as you can see, there is uh, a thrust plate. There is uh, your main bearing carriers, circlips to hold them in place. Uh, and then you've got, that, uh, you've got those bearing carriers both in the front and the rear uh, for the compressor and the turbine housing to stabilise the shaft. Uh, and then obviously oil seals. Uh, and this is all cooled by engine oil. So you have a feed from the engine um, that runs into the top of the, uh, of the turbo core. And then it's distributed down through, uh, through the bearing plate uh, and the thrust plate. Uh, and using uh, the pressure, the oil pressure, it actually floats these bearings. Um, so that's what keeps the components off each other. It not only lubricates that section, but it also cools that section, which is why on a journal bearing core, you'll generally find that the feed is larger than a ball bearing one. Uh, and you also need to make sure that the drain is quite free, uh, free flowing. So the oil is effectively doing everything to keep this turbo alive. It's lubricating it uh, and it's effectively cooling it at the same time. Uh, now, it's reliable, it's simple, uh, it's been used forever uh, and with you know more modern advancements with a 360 degree bearing race uh, in the journal bearing they're much more efficient uh, and again the performance is much better than previous. Uh, some of the early ones were 270 degrees so they didn't actually meet all the way around uh, on this thrust plate. So the journal bearing again it's reliable uh, it's usually found in larger applications um, just because the physical size of the bearings is able to cater for that large uh, amount of thrust, the large amount of load when you've got large uh, wheels on it, so you know, 100mm, 106mm turbine or compressor wheel. Um, you'll usually find them to be uh, a journal bearing or something that's going to run at a lower RPM. So journal bearing is very consistent and if you turbocharger is running at a lower RPM or a lower boost level, the heat is generally lower and then that journal bearing will go on forever. So diesel machinery, plant, um, generators, if they're turbocharged, they're usually a journal bearing application because they'll just go forever, they'll chug away, um, very minimal maintenance and you know, it's nice and easy to service too if you ever need to. And so moving on to the other type of core, we've got the ball bearing uh, core. So variations here, obviously you can see it's a little bit more complex um, compared to the journal bearing. Uh, now the reason for the ball bearing design is basically for reduced resistance. Um, they generally respond faster because of that resistance, uh, the reduced resistance. Uh, and as a result, a higher boost level is generally achievable um, because there is again less rolling resistance. Um, so you can see here we've blown one apart effectively. This is the core itself that we've chopped in half. This bearing carrier sits in the centre here. Um, and then we have these uh, ceramic roller bearings uh, that basically sit at the front and the back. Um, there's obviously some retaining plates and seals and whatnot. Now, as opposed to riding on the 
journal style uh, bearing carriers. This is what the turbine shaft or the turbo shaft will sit on and it'll basically spin within this, uh, within this ceramic ball uh, bearing race which again it will spool up quicker um, so you've got more response generally out of a ball bearing uh, ball bearing application uh, and also potentially higher boost levels so it will deal with a higher boost level while still remaining cool um, things to remember with a ball bearing uh, ball bearing design is that the oil doesn't do everything in this case so it still needs to be fed by engine oil uh, which will run through a restrictor or you can see this one here in this core so basically because you only need a very small amount of oil uh, to lubricate these bearing races it's not doing the cooling you need to restrict the amount of oil flow uh, generally or specifically speaking about the boosted range we recommend no more than 40 to 45 psi worth of oil pressure through the bearing core because it's a very small amount of small amount of oil that's flowing through there it also needs to escape at the same time if the oil gets stuck in here because it can't drain or there's too much oil pressure it will cause smoking issues because there's too much pressure building up inside of the uh, the core now what's going to cool this bearing core if it's not oil it is water so again the coolant uh, or the water from your engine is basically going to need to be plumbed through the side of the ball bearing core and that's going to flow around these these passages in here and these channels and take the take the excess heat out of that core uh, this is especially important when the engine stops and the turbocharger stops there's an excessive amount of heat that's retained within these cores the water flowing through here and the siphoning effect that happens once you've once you've turned the engine off will actually draw that that heat out of the core uh, and it keeps keeps the, the turbo basically more reliable and more consistent. Um, so being water cooled, you'll generally find a ball bearing turbocharger in an endurance um, application uh, because they have that water flowing through them constantly and the temperature is kept much more consistent. As a result, because it's so important to have the water cooling on there, you must run, if you have a boosted turbocharger that is water cooled, it must be plumbed. If you don't run it, or if you decide not to run the water cooling, and there is a potential issue, um, the warranty will be void. So it is very important to run that water cooling, and you'll have a better result. It's not just, oh, I'm not going to plumb that because it doesn't make a difference, and I couldn't be bothered to spend the extra money on the hoses or the, or the fittings. It does actually make that turbo run better because the core stays cool, it stays where it's supposed to be. The oil doesn't get burnt off. Uh, while it's in the core as well because the overall temperature is lower. So all of those things are really important. Okay, so now we've covered uh, the t types of uh, bearing core that you'll find in the boosted range. Uh, we're going to drill down on a couple of the features that we touched on briefly. Um, a couple of really important factors um, that you have to consider when you're setting up your turbocharger. So we'll start with the journal bearing. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, this is basically the bearing plate uh, and you can see these little slots all around here and this channel all the way around here. It's basically that's the 360 degree design in our journal bearings. Feeding that oil, this is the, this is the bit that we're going to talk about which is um, what's, what's the oil feed, what does it do and why is it important. So we touched on it before, 360 degree journal plate or journal bearing means that it's going to distribute the oil all around the bearing more evenly which is going to not only lubricate but also cool the journal uh, the journal bearing it's important to note that because that is supplying a larger area you do want volume of oil so there is no water to cool this bearing down so you want as a minimum a dash six uh, so an an dash six oil feed line to provide the volume of oil required to service this bearing, keep basically the oil flowing and keep the temperature down as well as lubricating that, uh, that bearing race. So uh, it's very important that uh, oil feed is a dash six on a journal bearing um, so that you can 
keep that keep everything cool, keep everything lubricated, and there's enough volume of oil. But that's quite different when it comes to a ball bearing core. So when we run back over to the ball bearing core, if I roll this around here, this is the little carrier that holds the two bearings inside. As you as you can see on the top here, which we'll get a close up a close up point of view, these small holes that are in the just hold that. These small holes that are in the top, these are the feeds for the bearing. So you can see how small they are. So if you start jamming you know, 100 PSI worth of oil pressure and a giant volume of oil, it's basically going to back up or it's going to find its way through there and then it's going to basically pull up and get stuck within this bearing race. Uh, and then it's not going to work effectively because the more time the oil is exposed to the heat, the more it's going to get burnt, it's going to get very hot, it's going to create carbon, and then you're going to damage the bearing. So that bearing's basically going to fail. It's also going to make its way through and find the circlip, uh, which basically, which is effectively running here. You can see this is an old, old one that we've put through a torture test. There's a piston ring that sits on here. So it's very important that the oil flows appropriately through the core because once that gets jammed up with uh, carbon, you know, burnt oil, debris, anything like that, just like a piston ring inside an engine, if it stops moving and it stops being able to expand and close up that seal, it will leak. So that's why oil feed is very important. Um, and again, as we touched on before with the ball bearing, it's only a very small volume of oil, which is why we run the restrictor. Um, so you can see the restricted, restricted component of this fitting um, in there, which is very, very small. It's 0.8 to 1 millimetre. Uh, and that generally regulates oil pressure down to that 40 to 45 PSI that we like to see in these, in these bearing cores. The feed on a, on a ball bearing, we usually recommend a dash 4 um, so that you can get a good volume of oil there and then restrict that down. So you don't want to be short of supply and rely on the pressure. You want it to flow nicely and then be restricted back to the pressure that you require. Okay, so we just started to talk about the drain and I think that's really one of the most important things when it comes to longevity uh, and consistency of your turbocharger. So uh, we'll carry on with the ball bearing version because it's usually the one that's a little bit more susceptible to issues with the drain. Uh, as you can see again, this is the bearing carrier. Um, so oil flows through the top of this and it's distributed through to the two bearing races. This hole here is the hole that the excess oil will drain out of in the bearing case. So the bulk in the centre of the unit will drain through here. If you have a look at this core that we've cut in half here, you'll be able to see why it's so important for the drain to work efficiently as it's leaving the core. So this is the rear and that's where it's basically, this is the passage that the oil is going to drain out of the rear. So it's really important when you look at um, positioning the turbocharger that effectively it needs to be as close to straight up and down as possible. We recommend no greater than 10 degrees uh, of tilt when you're mounting the turbocharger. And this is exactly why. Some people ask us, oh, why can't we tilt it further? And this is why. So at the rear of the bearing race, you can see that there's only a very small passage for the oil to escape. Uh, out of that section there and then down into the drain hole. So this one's complete. You can see that drain at the bottom there. This is the one that's been cut in half. So the centre section, that'll drain fine. It's a straight shot straight down. But this rear section is a much smaller passage for the oil to drain out of. So that's why it's really important to make sure that the drain itself is appropriately sized. You can see I've got one of the drain adapters here. So the internal size of that is actually larger than the drain hole itself. As an absolute minimum, you want it to be exactly the same size. Uh, this is a dash 10 uh, adapter, so you're gonna run a dash. The drain itself, not only the size is important, but the position and the way that it flows is really important because we want that oil, once it's gone through there, it's lost a lot of the pressure, so it's gonna basically gravity drain out of the core. It's really important that the drain itself follows gravity as far as possible before it has any sort of bend in it. Basically, when that's coming down, you want to avoid 90 degrees. When it's coming into the sump, 
you want it you want the drain return into the sump to be higher than the level of the oil uh, that's in that sump because that's going to create a roadblock if it's below the the oil level. Um, so generally, general practice is to put the drain as high as possible uh, in the sump, um, just under the pan rail, for example. If you can't do that, for example, if you have a very restricted engine bay or you've got uh, maybe a very shallow sump, uh, which sometimes happens, you will basically have to run a scavenge pump out of the oil drain. So a scavenge pump is gonna basically suck the oil out of this drain and it's gonna return it back to wherever you find appropriate in your application. So basically the long and short of it is gravity drain. You want it to flow above the oil level uh, or alternatively you wanna use an oil scavenge pump because the last thing you want is any oil building up here and then flowing back up into the core because it's going to mean the end of your turbo effectively. It's going to blow smoke, the seals are going to fail, uh, and it's just, yeah, it's going to be the end of it. So that's basically everything in regards to an oil drain on a ball bearing. For the journal bearing, basically the same principle. Gravity, good size drain. In any case with a, with a journal bearing, we're usually talking a much higher volume of oil, as we touched on earlier so as a result you may want a larger drain um, so a dash 12 or something like that uh, again you've just got to size it appropriately for the application um, but there is a larger volume of oil when it comes to a journal bearing so make sure that you size the drain and flow it appropriately to suit that application all right guys so that basically comes to the end of TurboTech 101 which is the first general technical video that we're going to do uh, thank you if you're still watching for sticking by. It's been a long video, I know, compared to what we normally do. I hope you've been able to learn a few things. If you do have any further technical questions, please feel free to send us an email. That's boosted at aeroflowperformance.com. Or alternatively, if you're within Australia, you can call us. We have a technical inquiry line. It is 02-8825-1979. We'll put a link or we'll note that down somewhere here. Um, so by all means, if you do have a technical question, if you've got a setup question, uh, anything like that, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email on those ones. If you want to tune in next time when we do TurboTech 102, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of wheel sizing, um, how to spec the turbo for your application, how to understand the impacts of a larger or a smaller uh, compressor wheel and the turbine wheel and the housings um, of the turbocharger as well so please come back when we launch that video we want you to we want you to watch it we want you to learn we want to be able to provide a little bit of information so that everyone can be uh, a little bit more you know better informed and educated when it comes to turbochargers uh, they're not that complicated uh, they're a great thing uh, we love them so you guys should love them too uh, and we'll see you next time with Aeroflow Performance Whether you're building a street machine or a race car, Aeroflow Performance has a solution for you. Our ever-increasing range features boosted turbocharger systems, Bosch Motorsport products, X-Pro electrical systems, hoses and fittings, bang shift shifters, differential parts and fabrication components. You can see it all on aeroflowperformance.com.
All right, there we go. What what uh, what sprinkles? What rain? Was there any rain? Was there some rain here? Sorry. A little bit came down. We're just in that process of drying it up. But, geez, tell you what, it doesn't take long. We're, we're lucky that we had that residual sunshine keep a bit of heat in the track. And uh, that's been really helping us with this last little clean-up. And uh, you can only do so much when it rains. Uh, you can do a lot more when it stops. And um, we've been lucky enough that our great crew, Jungabunga and all the volunteers, they've been hooking right in. Normally, breaking areas take a little bit of time, but I think we've got a smicko brand new breaking area here that might respond to some dry, uh, some drying. I certainly know we've got all the drainage, everything sorted down there. So it's you know we've seen. Remember one thing that used to happen always up you know, down the road there at Willowbank is that you get too much rain, that breaking area would take forever to dry. And of course, at all the upgrades they've been having there, that looks like that's probably going to be solved at least to some extent. But here, of course, all brand new. Beautiful uphill braking area, all of that stuff. Obviously, that helps with drainage in a certain way. Um, they're obviously doing a little bit more down there to get that sorted. Uh, the rest of the racing service looks pretty mint, um, and, and especially when you've only just got Dave Reed out there on the uh, on the blower, it must be in a pretty good spot. I know that at some stage, I think when they're convinced that they've got a lot of that moisture up, as they might end up, maybe a little light spray. I don't know. He might just drag the sled over it, but hey. You know what, we've seen some pretty good uh, drag racing so far today and I don't think we're ready to stop just yet. Neither of you fans stop um, from uh, watching. Plenty of you guys hanging around, it's good to see. And a big shout out to everyone watching uh, on our live stream. We have still got quite a few, uh, got a couple of hundred on there watching uh, that great uh, Aeroflow um, ad there on the, uh, on the range of uh, turbochargers there, I think. So uh, they've been, uh, enjoyed the stream as well. It's great that you're uh, sticking with us wherever you are right around the world. With people from all, uh, all, walks of, uh, all walks of life and all parts of the world love to get on the Overtaking Lane stream when uh, the opportunity arises. And here we are at Warwick Dragway for the, uh, the first uh, quarter mile event. And it's been good so far this afternoon. Three of the, uh, the four Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars got down in pretty quick uh, fashion into the 49480 area over the 1,000 foot mark at 235 mile an hour. Um, Morris going 200 mile an hour to half track 386. And I think, um, I think Washington went 199 and I think Brandon went 200 as well. So those cars, they got those nitro cars down very well. The wheel standers, of course, um, they did their uh, did their fantastic job. Dave Reed already, I think, a photo got up here of the wheel standers in perfect position. He was years of experience there to get that photo. Great uh, side by side photo of the wheel standers misbehaving and the nitro sheriff. So he's got the he's got the big ro he's got the rotator Jungabunga rotator. There we go, the Jungabunga rotator. He's ready to lay. Lay the uh, the rubber down. He's got on all the equipment, Junger, isn't he? I mean, he can drive some big excavators too. He can drive the sled. I don't know whether you can hear that. Can you hear him apply? Can you hear him applying the rubber? You can hear that from town. Pe there'll be new people from town going, "What's that noise we're hearing now?" Well, that's.
All oh, right, by the sound of that, someone's warming up. We might even hear a throttle throttle whack here before the end of the next couple of minutes because there's four to warm up. That's one. Oh, yeah, that's enough. That's enough sound. Three more times, thanks, guys. Three more times. That's one warmed up. Let's see what the rest do. But that's a good indication that they might want to have another crack here. So, um... Yeah, they would stand by stand by one as uh, you know. We obviously work to get the track completely dry, some more qualifying done. We'll get that track back up to uh, the spec, and I tell you, we're going to see him go again a little bit later on. So worth hanging around, folks. It's good that you're here. We can see a few more coming in, and um, yeah, we've braved the elements a couple of times today and come out on top. And I, I can see no reason why we can't do it again. So thanks for sticking with us. And, uh, and here's a little experiment for all those people out there listening, right? And for those people sitting out there on the mound and in the grandstand, we have a beautiful live stream thanks to the guys from Overtaking Lane. And we would love, very much love, how many more subscribers do we need? So, so this is the YouTube channel, so go to YouTube. So everyone get their phones out, go to YouTube. So everyone get their phones out, go to YouTube, right? So, so go to YouTube, uh, search on YouTube under Overtaking Lane and subscribe. We need only 48 more subscribers to make that 10,000. Let's do that tonight, folks. Let's do it before the end of the night. And you know what you can do once you get on there? You can watch what you're watching while you're watching it. How about that? Watch, watch, watch it and watch yourself. You might be able to camera bomb your own stream by getting onto Overtaking Lane. So get onto YouTube. Get onto uh, the Overtaking Lane uh, channel and subscribe. Because if you subscribe, um, you'll be able to watch all of the streams, not only here this weekend, but next weekend, Jamboree in Sydney. That'll be on the Jambo channel. So you'll have to subscribe to them as well. But yeah, next weekend, um, these guys will be doing the great stream down in Sydney as well. So here's, um, so Dully's got the stream on. He's got a great northern there as well. So there we go. He's currently building a shaft for a bloke out there. Actually, I wonder if that bloke's name's Bart. I wonder if that's Bart. So Dully's on, a, Dully's on a shaft right now. Hang on. Actually, it's a bit too long. To, it's definitely not Bart's. It's de no, it's not Bart's tail shaft. I thought when they said when they said tail shaft, he's working on a broken tail shaft for a guy out there. I thought, remember, Bart might have broken one, but no, that's a bit too... Um, that's a bit too long there, Dully. So Dully's on it. So that's what we need. Get onto YouTube on your phone. Um, go to over, uh, search Overtaking Lane and please subscribe. We want to see 10K subscribers by the end of the weekend. That's what we'd love to see. Um, but we're so close to it. But they do a great stream and um, so many people love it. And it looks so good, especially when you can't be somewhere and you can get it onto your, your big... You know, if you're lucky like a few of us are, you get that sm that late model smart TV where YouTube's just one button away, and then you can um, watch the stuff on the big screen. It's really quite entertaining. Can't get enough of it. All right, lights and sirens off and away. Was that the fireys? That was that was the fireys off and gone. Either that or there could be someone. Let's just say which, let's just see which way he goes here. He either goes right or left here. We're either in town or something at the track. Big shout out to Janie, she must be watching. Baby got brap, that's what she's put on there. That's her, that's, that's so you, Janie. But uh, big shout out to everyone watching on the uh, the Overtaking Lane live stream right around the uh, the country and the world. And for all you beautiful people for coming out to Warwick for uh, this weekend's festivities. Of course, we're still qualifying in all of our categories. Our Aeroflow, Outlaw, Nitro, Funny Cars are gracing us with their presence here this evening. 
uh, and then all the races are just going to continue to qualify until I suppose we, we call stumps tonight and then tomorrow I think we're engaging in dial your own war however I do believe it is Chicago shootout tomorrow so I do believe we're that's a three round format so that's the best of three so if you're a really good racer tomorrow you might come back with three from three and have half a chance of getting into that final but no guarantee because you might also have another opponent two other opponents that you hadn't met yet that also was successful three from three so then it's going to be how close normally how close you are to that guy to win three normally yeah so that might be what we have to break down so then they'll truly be the two most worthy finalists the tricky part comes when you get to round three and you've only got one three from three and you've got six two from threes. So how do you decide this, the best two from three? Again, you've got to come down normally in dial your own racing, normally how it works, and this is what I think we'll do tomorrow, is the closest to your dial in in round three. If you go, well, I'm gonna win this, I'm on a solo, and you roll the car down in round three and you might end up two from three, you got no chance of getting in that final because you do not run near your dialing. We've had so many people come up, even with three from three, and go, how come I'm not the final? I said, but guess what? There were three other people that were three from three, and guess what? Someone else ran smack on their dialing or closer than you rolling down the track. So it becomes this whole, you've got to, in the heat of racing, do your very best in round three. There are no free tickets in Dial Your Own Chicago Shootout Racing. You can't be that good. It's a very humbling sport, drag racing. It will humble you in an instant. And even the best. Here you go, warm up number two. Is this warm up number two? Someone gets a throttle whack out of the next couple of warm ups, I think. Listen to that, roll that to the, roll that barrel valve open. Yeah, yeah, she's some angry juice in there. One of these things gotta get the loose. Come on. We want next door to hear it. We want the town to hear it. That one sounds a bit more pissed off, that one, doesn't it? That sounds higher idle, that one. That could be the 57. I know the 57's the, the Mac Daddy, that one. Oh, boy, something. Oh, oh, no, he's done. All right. No, no, no. Come on, one throttle whack out of the next couple of warm-ups, please, just for the fans hanging around. <laughs> There's no better sound than that. So that's two warmed up. We know that's two. Let's see. I think the other one will be up shortly. This is commentating from a distance, not even seeing what we're hearing. <laughs> Just hearing, yeah, going by here, going by audio. Um, duck around if you get a chance to go up and see them if, if they've got a couple of warm-ups yet to go. Just toddle on up there real quick and, and have a look if you like. Come on in. Knock, knock. Come on in. What's the password? Here he is. You're here to collect the fan belt. Okay. What, 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 what's your name? What's your little? What's your name, little boy? Brett Thompson. Tomo. Now, Brett, how did you know? You must have either watched the replay of the stream, or you know what? It's like you know what? About now, I need the belt. What belt is it? That's. I can smell a bit of rotor. I can so, so there you go. Congratulations, mate. Uh, actually, we we were we were just about to put it on marketplace with Shagger's autograph on it. But I'm glad you found it, Bretto. I'm glad you found it. So is this a little test hit? Are you towing to Sydney next week? Are you? Oh, geez. That'd be a big commitment, wouldn't it? Well, look, it's good to have a hit up here. The thing, the beast looks fantastic. And um, go. Go the 20 Bs, mate. Go the 20 Bs, with or without the fan belt. But I'm glad you finally come around. <laughs> mate, maybe you didn't know where the commentary box was, but how did you even know that you're missing it? When did you first know you were missing it? Yeah. I don't know where that thing came from. I really don't know exactly where it was. No, no, well, I'm glad it's yours. And now I know that a 20B, well, most, most of that later model engine should have the 6PK 760 on it, should it? That, that that very belt. Oh, there you go. So now you got a spare. There we go. Word of mouth. I mean, it got there eventually. It's only been five hours since we've called out the belt. So that's everything else handed in. Oh, one more thing. There's been a little charm bracelet handed in from the other side. That's not yours, Tomo. 
two for one deal. So yeah, someone's little bracelet got handed in here. So if anyone's missing a bracelet, I don't know how you identify it, but we'll have to work that out when we get there. Or is it you, mate? Not you? You get someone else. Oh, that's a phone that's been handed in. So is that actually genuinely our phone that's been found? Okay, so so we have a phone that's been handed in. So if you're missing a phone, um, get your friend to ring it. Get your phone. Uh, get someone to ring it, and then come up to the tower. So thank you. Someone's handed a phone in. It's uh. It's seen better days. If you're, if you're coming up here expecting the latest in iPhone technology, uh, you're going to be disappointed. But if you do own a phone and you've lost it, well, maybe one of your friends can call it. And if it rings up here, then that's going to be it. So if it rings, we'll let you know. We'll come up and ring it in front of us and we'll know it's yours. And we'll go through a few, and we'll go through the, you know, the six to eight points of ID that they always ask me for whenever I go to the Department of Transport or something. So. There will be a um, there'll be a DNA test. Um, I'm going to need to see a rates notice and your driver's license probably. So that's what we need to see. So a couple more cars to warm up there for our uh, Nitro Funny cars. The track getting dried. Junga Bunga on the rotator now. He's on the sled. So it's not too long, folks. So whatever preparations you need to make before getting back to your spectator area, uh, please do that because I think not too long before we'll be calling cars again.
Okay, attention in the pits, attention in the pits. All competitors back to their vehicles, please. All competitors back to your vehicles, please. We are not too far away from kicking back off again. Attention in the pits and staging lanes. All competitors back to their vehicles, please. We are not too far away from getting back into it. And uh, yes, the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars have towed around because we have seen them leave the pit area and they are in the staging lanes and want to have a run. Obviously, when we get going, we'll be uh, getting a few cars down and then those guys will be out. A little bit of extra prep and we'll be away. So give us a couple of minutes, but all competitors back to their cars, please, and vehicles. Just another call, all uh, competitors back to their vehicles. We're not too far away, folks. We appreciate, we appreciate your patience, but uh, yeah, we had to dry that up and we've done a good job of it. We're not too far away.
All right, so most of our officials are in position. Our category, I think, has been called, and here we go. We are back underway. Thank you for your patience. Hey, we told you we'd keep going. It's better to uh, keep going than to give up, and uh, we've got a lot of races that want to get another qualifier in. We are racing, of course, tomorrow. Look at this big Chevy. Jeffrey Trapnell driving. That's a whole lot of cars. Actually, him and Misty Mopar should race each other. Two big cars. So, uh, Jeffrey back. So, this is the 28 V275 class. We've got more 275 than 28. We're talking about 28, 28 inch tall slick. Normally, like a 28 9 slick uh, versus 275 radial. So, normally, it's always. Um, laden full of 275 cars. Let's just see. I think Jeffrey might have have the 275s on it. All right. Let's see what uh, the big heavy Chevy gets out of this run. Don't forget, we've had a phone handed in up here. If someone's missing a phone, we've got one handed in. You just have to come up and Dial the number, I guess, so we know. All right, let's see. Is it going to spin the tyres like last time? That's better. Way better. That's not a bad one there. Jeffrey's going to go to the 660 here. Here we go. 564. Good number. 564. That's one of the best numbers so far today in that class. 564, 129 mile an hour. 149 in the 60 foot. 564 at 129 mile an hour. All right. That blow on HQ of Alex Bamford. Ah, we've got all the action here. A couple of blowing boys on the little tire. The Outlaw Performance Exhaust Avenger is in the water. Alright, Alex Bamford in the HQ, Steve Tatum in the Avenger. HQ, I think, had a big bang out of the water there. Still running though. Oh yeah, we got some excitement in this class. This guy will be on 28, or is he on a radar? No, he's on a 28. Talking about the little L squirrel coming up next. Twenty-eight V two seven five brought to us by Viking Metalcraft. I think I found the twenty-eight, the twenty-eight car. All right, here we go. Now remember. Sometimes it's about getting the power down. I know the track looks like it's come up good after Jeffrey's first run. Let's see how the rest of the field get down. That'll be a good indication. Great to have you around here for Saturday night Warwick Dragway, our quarter mile grand opening. A little bit of a pedal here or there, but Steve Tatum goes 570 to a 651. So even if we see him in the 575-60, that's an exciting little side-by-side -side potential. Mind you, we've got a few that can go a bit quicker than that. Hold on to your hats if you haven't seen this little car before. Oh, come on, give him a round of applause. That's Tony Gooderham from, uh, from Toowoomba. The car affectionately known as L Squirrel. 13B Turbo, clutchless gearbox, built this car in the garage in Toowoomba. Chris Carsberg from Warwick, Turbo LS on board for the Tirana. A best DT of a 517 over the 8th. 
517. This is a seven second quarter mile street car. Tony Gooderham, well, it's got seven second potential as well. But this little L Squirrel, Suzuki Swift, packs a lot of punch for its small size. Keep an eye on it. This thing can get a bit crazy because it has such a short wheelbase. I think this thing's not even about 80 odd inches. It's an exciting little ride. And Tony's no little guy either. Tony's a pretty big, beefy guy. I mean, he's getting trimmer every time I see him. He's, I've seen him when he was huge. Big power lifter, would you believe? He could probably lift this car if he had to. But he's built himself a good bump. Now remember, he's got to bring it in on a clutch pedal. Chris P Karsberg's got to bump it in with the Tirana. We've got to bring the boost up. Qualifying here for 28 versus 275. Not bad, not bad. Here goes Karsberg. Oh, big zing of the tyre, big zing of the tyre. Hey, 580 for the Squirrel. 580 for the Squirrel. Got it done. I think he's on that 28 tyre too. So the radial car's just not getting that power down. Like Chris has got plenty on board in that Tirada. 132 in the 60 foot for the little Suzuki, 580 to the 660. And a 993, no horsepower uh, hook up there at all for Chris Carsberg. All right, let it rip, boys. All right, so not much of uh, a burnout there from our Falcon. You have to get the name on him. Shane Baker beside in the VH Commodore. So, of course, uh, Warwick's own, Shane Baker. Oh, that's a good one from Bakes. 131 in the 60 foot. Look at this number. Oh, yeah, number one qualifier. 517. 517, number one qualifier for Shane Baker. 887 for our Falcon. 131 in the 60 foot for Shane. 517 to the uh, 660 mark at 140 mile an hour. That's the best run of the day for that class. Could be. Let's see what the panel van comes up with. Oh yeah, tough stuff in this class. Aaron Gregory. Now how's this? We just saw Shane Baker go 517. Here's Aaron Gregory, HR panel van, Turbo LS, best DT 526. So Bakes has just gone faster than what, um, Bakes has just gone faster than what Aaron's got. But uh, you would assume Aaron's got plenty on board this HR panel van, Turbo LS. Plenty of horsepower potential when this thing's unleashed. So that's a big number for Bakes. That is a big number. Aaron Gregory, we would hope that he's got himself a setup that's going to work on this run. Of course, uh, owner of ASG Motorsports from down the Gold Coast. Johnny Dark, beautiful Mustang, Johnny. There we go, there we go, there we go. Now it comes on the power. Look at this one for the panel van. Yes, 524, 524, 145. Good run for the panel van. 142 in the 60 foot. So they've all sharpened their game up. Johnny Dark, 703. All oh, right, Jaden Leeson and Simon Graham. So, uh, Jaden in this newly painted Corolla. Gorgeous little car he's built himself. Small block on board. Looks the business. 
I like the way they've done the roof. I, I, I watched a video of us getting painted. And um, yeah, just the way to get that pattern on the roof, it's really quite a talent. In fact, I want I want that on my, my drag and drive. Simon Graham, what can we say about Simon Graham? This, this lad, he can steer. He's got the, uh, the Dubelmans in his corner. Of course, he's driven for the Dubelmans before. But here's his own Camaro. Now, problems for the Corolla, that is not good. But Simon, he can zing the tyres hard this afternoon and didn't want to get off it. Let's see what he does this time. Turbo Big Block Chev. There we go. 135 in the 60 foot. Now he winds the power out. 498. 498, number one qualifier. Four second run. 498, 156. Darren's happy with that. 498, 498, 135 in the 60, 135 in the 60, kind of came out, rolled itself out, and then off it went. 498. Look at these street cars, ladies and gentlemen. The, I know that Simon's radial car that we just saw is not one, but look at these ones here that want to run the small tyre. Juan Kudnick and Ty Barnes. Now, Ty, I think from memory could be Turbo LS or a new build here. I, I know that we've got immaculate Turbo V8 Commodores coming out of our ears, but yeah, whether Ty's got this uh, as an LS deal or not, we know Juan Kudnick's got traditional small block Chev on board, again, built in his own shed, just out near Ipswich. I think he's still out near there. So I don't know what he's packing on board now, whether he's still got the turbo or the blower or a bit of everything. But I think he's running the 235. Watch this thing go. Off it goes, ladies and gentlemen. 136 in the 60 foot. Another good run here. 535. They're all going quick. 535 at 135 mile an hour. So that's Aaron Gregory, Baker, Kudnick, Graham. All running really good numbers. 713 there for Ty. But uh, yeah, Wayne just walked that 4,000 pound H. Uh, G off the line, 136 in the 60 on leaf springs and a small tyre and then got that power to hook up all the way. Good setup, good setup indeed. Well that might be the end of 28 v 275 but I think there's a little bit of outlaws coming up. Oh look at them, they actually look a tarn better, they really stand out. How do you get him to stand out on the black light, that? Change the uh, the background colour there. That looks great. Yeah, considering that was a plain black ute first session today, Dave's gone and sticked it all up. Does he just give it a new coat of matte black once in a while, does he? He must do it, eh? Because the, the thing always goes back to... It's a pretty straight car. It is... Folks, this is an absolute treat for those who have never seen it, and it's affectionately known as the FKN BLK UTE. It's the Black Ute, and James Horan from Malimba up the sunny coast has built this thing. It has evolved over nearly 20 years from its early days to the beast that it is today. And it's a three second time slip over the eighth for this twin turbo, Hemi powered. Built in a Limba Hilux. Not too many people race with this shape Hilux, but James does, and it's got its own reputation. To me, it's one of the enigmas of Australian drag racing because it's a car created by its driver, driven by its creator, tuned, sorta. And if anything, what James has learned over the years from bringing boost up in things like the little turbo four litre Toyota V8, he learned about automatic transmissions, he learned about torque converters to the point that he perfected the science and actually does um, a very good torque converter product out of a sunny coast. He does an ultimate, does a bolt together converter. So in other words, you can take these things out, undo them, change the stator in them. So if you're not happy with the stall speed of your torque converter, he designs them so you can take them apart. It's not a new, it's not a new thing. Uh, bolt together converters have been around forever, but James, it's James's take and what he's learnt on it, and he's definitely developed the art. What a rolling advertisement 
for everything that this man's capable of. Not only his steering capabilities, but what he's been able to build. And it has got fans everywhere. Coming soon, the new Black Ute t-shirt will be available soon. So get your orders in now. We're designing it right now. Dave and I have done a few sketches already. And uh, we'll get Drake here to pay for it, hopefully. So this Ute is an enigma in its own right. Whether he gets it to hook up now well, remains to be seen. Every combination's different. This thing's... This thing's not shy of nearly 3,000 horsepower to the tyres, this thing. I think it showed early, Dino. I think it might have even been on the big block. It showed 2,600 to the tyres. I think you, you can comfortably say James has access to about 3,000 to the tyres. But how do you get it to hook up on a, on a radial tyre? This is up to him what sort of combination he can put, what sort of tune-up can he put in it. It's either going to go or it's not. But when it goes, sometimes he needs a couple of runs to get his eye in, but sometimes, you know, it's also come out brilliantly. So let's see what the man can do. The Black Ute, 2024. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, barely pedalling it. Look, 5.39 at 162 mile an hour on a big pedal, you heard you heard him pedal it, you heard how quick he grabbed that. And then even then, that right foot was barely down for the rest of the way. 5.39 at 162 mile an hour. Still a hell of a, um, a pedal there from James. Just one of those uh, legends in the sport. Big shout out to you, Peter Duffy. The big, big fellas having a, well, I would imagine he's either watching on the stream or he's uh, He's here live, the big duff. Normally he'd stand out if he was here, I'd see him. All right, here we go. You want a different sound, folks? We've got some cranky six-cylinder about to happen here. Colin Lloyd. I think he's in the exhibition class, so he's not really competing. He's just going to do test hits. Pontiac Firebird with a Toyota 1JZ, so two-and-a-half-litre six-cylinder with a Pro Charger and a Liberty Transmission. I love all of those things. That's it. Yeah, what do you reckon about that? <laughs> yep, I like that. <laughs> That's cranky. And again, Lloydy, put all this combo together. It is mechanically injected. It is centrifugally supercharged. There's a lot of mechanical in this. There's not a lot of electronics in it. It's a very organic vehicle, if you could put it that way. <laughs> if you could turn a vehicle into something organic, this is kind of it. So not that full... EFI turbo stuff that's around. I don't think Lloyd is quite there yet in his tolerance of technology and changing technologies, but I like what he's done with this car. It means it can be a relatively light car at two and a half litres. He still runs to a double D gas class ruling in Superstock normally, and that means that car can be pretty light with that little small engine in it. Let's just have a listen to what he's got on board here. I'm just going to let this thing sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got some. It went 573 to the eighth, and that was cruising before half track. Goes 11, 24, 78 mile an hour. Hey, look, Lloydie is out here to do some test runs, obviously, in this car, and every time that we get to the session of, of exhibition, he gets to come out and do a few more runs. So I tell you what, 115 in the 60 foot, 331 to 330. Um, it was certainly making all the right noises and doing the right things. So that suspension setup looks perfect. That clutch setup looks perfect. That horsepower is definitely there. Um, you know, bounced around a little bit, but not much. But remember, a little two and a half litre, it's, uh, it's doing all right for itself. And cranky. How loud is that thing when it's under, uh, under some blower boost there? Interesting combo. Go and check it out. Um, Colin Lloyd from Headsense. Been racing for a long, long time. Um, national super gas champion. I think he was even super stock in super stock. He did pretty well in the old days when he used to run the V8. But now this Firebird with with the um, the supercharged Toyota Six. It's uh, it's an interesting thing to see. 
and here. That's why we just give it as much air time as he needs, Lloydy. As much as he needs. Oh, all is in readiness for some more action out there. Hold on to your hats. They've got everything sorted here. That is the sound of one of the world's fastest and quickest funny car drivers, John Canooley. There you go, that sounds the goods. So remember, he, he was up a little, a little while ago. He was up a little while ago, and then I think just some keen ears from the crew Good to see, Duff, good to see. Me too, mate, me too. All right. Mr. C. Sounds a lot better this time. Sounds the business. Sounds the business. Doesn't he look all flash in his warm, warm vest? Got the vest on. Ah, oh, the ships of the sail, it's shagged time. He's here to grab a ship. He's the one on the wooden craft. He's a radar blip. <laughs> What's happening? We've got issues again? Oh, not again. Oh, they've got some little little gremlins creeping in. The guys again have, have caught on to something that's not right. It's it sounded the business in the... Oh, not again. I'm not looking. I'm, I'm looking at the alcohol funny car out right there. Everyone's going. Don't you see it on the? Don't you see the rain? No, I don't. I was looking at the alcohol funny car, not the rain. Yes, there's a couple of sprinkles on on the on the on the glass here, but it's it's don't get it's not getting my attention at the moment. It was all about that. I thought, here we go. He's done the burnout. He was all ready to rumble, and then we've just had this um, this sprinkle come through. Honestly, sometimes I think, you know, you get you get that pumped up, you're at that stage, you think, you know what, a couple of sprinkles, just let me, get, let me get to the other end. Let me get, they haven't even got to the track yet, those sprinkles, but when they come, you can't ignore them. We are at absolute zero tolerance for moisture on that racetrack. Uh, even if you found dripping something on the car, we shut you down. So let alone raining on the surface, that's a very, that's a very big slip hazard, that. That's a very big slip hazard. So we're just... Um, got that body back up for a sec everything i think was working uh working working a treat but i mean really how much have we got out there not much tiny light sprinkle honestly you can you can you can you can see the um when you look uh, up at the sky you can sort of still see the stars and everything like that so i mean it's not like it's it's a it's a thick coating of uh, of cloud so what we're getting here must be purely just just some light stuff and you can see the flags picking up here uh, as well so we've got that little squally breeze coming through so again we're just hanging tight remember it's come through earlier today in such light form that uh, we're able to ignore it and uh, let's just see what happens here in the next few minutes because that funny car was ready to rumble no doubt about it and then we've got the uh, the aeroflow outlaw nitro funny cars right here just literally minutes away now look this is a good idea we, we're on this we're on this sled so whatever was light there we can just give it a drag see how we feel here and uh we might just be we might just be all a-okay here in, in pretty short time i mean really it is light i mean you know the one thing that used to get our attention especially when you're calling in the tower at willow bank is you got that little corrugated iron roof in front of you and it's been a nice hot day it's got a bit of residual heat in the old coro you get the odd sprinkle you can tell straight away and then you can actually tell just just how light it was it was actually good to have that that little roof there to see like you know it started coming down to the point that the thing stayed wet then you knew you're in trouble but you know it had, if it started drying up on um you know we should be away here shortly now look you know our little commentary before we mentioned overtaking lane and the YouTube subscribers. I just can you just check on that to see whether we've we've gone up a few because we did ask everyone to open their phones while they had the spare moment, 
and um, go to YouTube and go to Overtaking Lane and, and subscribe. So Dave's just there. We go. Maybe we've locked we've locked up the uh, we've locked up the signal because everyone's on it. Oh, two more people, two more. Come on, we wanted ten thousand subscribers for Overtaking Lane. We've got nine thousand nine hundred and ninety eight subscribers. Come on, two more. To, who is going? Actually, not that we can award a prize for the ten thousandth subscriber, but who wants to be the ten thousandth subscriber to Overtaking Lane? Get onto YouTube and open it up and subscribe. Dave's here. Gonna, Dave wants to watch it roll over live here. It'll be good to see. But uh, you know what? Hats off to the guys. They put in the hard work. They know their craft. They do make. Um, they do make. Well, I shouldn't say they make live stream look easy, but they've certainly got a handle on the on the damn thing and um, do a hell of a good job. And I'd even like to say, you know, it's not like you bring a massive OB truck here and we're steering it. It's just normally Dave on a couple of laptops and a few screens and a bit of comms out there. The guys seem to um, have a pretty good combo. So you've got a really good combo for here. You've got a good combo at Willow Bank. You've done Sydney before, so you know how to work that out. Did you get to the bend for Jambo down there? So you even did the one at Tail and Bend down there. So you did the you did the stream down there for for Jambo at Tal and you did Palmyra. So you've done Palmyra. So you've you've done lots of the drag strips in this country, um, more than any other streaming company, by the way. No, nothing in the Vic in the Vic area yet. Well, never say never. Never say never. Um, actually, be interesting to see. There's a, that there's another event happening down there. I think a couple of days time called the Hard Hard Ass Thousand. You know, Harry Haig's first ever drag and drives coming up. So. I know there's a lot of people in the scene who'll be interested to see how that week ends up. Apparently it's um, drag race, drag race day, um, road trip day, uh, pub day, <laughs> and then you repeat. So the chat's saying we just hit 10,000. So we've done it. There we go. 10,000 subscribers. We just got, f we got 47 more subscribers. There we go. You are all listening. Lovely. Lovely. They do listen, we know. And, um, and of course, all the people watching on the stream right around the, the world, just drop us a little message now live on the chat of where you're all from and we'll give you a shout out. And uh, we'll, um, we'll in, uh, endeavour to get some live calls out to you because Dave's got the, uh, the chats up here in front of us. And that'll be good. So it's good that we're dragging the, uh, dragging the, uh, the sled. That was only a relatively light sort of treatment, whatever we got there. Honestly, what was that? Sure, that wasn't someone with a lisp just speaking loudly about, yeah, or a sneeze. Was that just a big sneeze from next door here? Miss Allen sneezing too much or something? She had the hic. Did you have the hiccup? Did you have the hiccups there before? James in Melbourne, big shout out. Yorkshire, England. Shane and Sunny Coast. Chris in Somerset. Um, what time is it over in Somerset? I'm curious. So see if you can tell us what time it is over there in Somerset. Of course, it's a um, it's, it's only 14 to 8 on a Saturday night here in beautiful Warwick. No place better that we'd rather be. Rod oh, the Roderick family from Townsville. Of course, we've still got there's some bench racing going on later here too. I would imagine somewhere a bit of bench, a bit of bench racing. Mail down under from Warwick. Here we go. All the way from Warwick. Out the back door. Where's Fez? Fez. Hopefully Fez hasn't too many. He's on the couch still. I'm Mr. Canooley, as you were. 9.45 a.m. on a uh, Friday morning, you would assume. Or Saturday. All right, Johnny, a little burn out there. He just wants to get this thing down. That wasn't too much of a weight, actually, so that was a light sprinkle. John just wants to steer this thing. And I hope the guy stays over, stays overnight and wants to have another hit tomorrow, maybe. I mean, they might be using it as a bit of test time. I think that you find this track is, uh, this is track is up, is up to these cars. They all seem to be liking it. I think a lot of good reports back. This man can steer on any track, though. That's the thing. I've seen the guy steer it at Calder. I've seen the guy steer it in Sydney. I've seen him steer it everywhere on uh, this side of the country. And uh, the man can drive. 
You want an adrenaline machine? This is it. I know the thing was missing and carrying on. Went 106 in the 60 foot and was on its way. At least it got out, obviously down on power from what it's normally supposed to have. So that's why it sort of didn't get hassled. I mean, it went 106 in the 60 foot, but there was just something not right there. Didn't want to clean itself up. But it still got out of there with a minimal amount of effort. And I mean, the thing has all the potential of 4,000 horsepower as well, but just some little miss there, just catching up with the car. Um, but it was still moving. He still got all that launch up here and there was no hint in any of that 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 thing was down on power and whatever happened on the hit um, was obviously sapping that car of, of thousands of horsepower to the point that, yeah, it just got itself down with no power at all. So, I don't know. It depends on just how long we expect to go to here tonight. We might be still going another 90 minutes, two hours yet. We don't know. I haven't really said anything, have we? Let's just hope. That was me hopefully saying that. We've got a couple more hours of this at least. Can't get enough of it, quite honestly. We've had too many gaps. Just And again, you know what? I'd like to call them breathing spaces. You know, a bit of clearance. You know, chances where we can't just have to, We don't have to engulf. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, those times are gone. Whatever those, were, whatever those times were, they're gone. It's these times that we're worried about. We're worried about the now. All oh, right, nitro methane. Will you cop some or what? Get that into you. 10,000 subscribers. hell of a chip in that thing, you know what I mean? It's, that's allowing that thing to rev quite a lot. mile an hour, 226 mile an hour, 954 in the 60 for Brandon, 95, uh, 976 in the 60 for Morris, 056 light for Morris, 064 light for Brandon. These are truly pros. 056, 064, they came to race each other. Uh, get us that back again, Shags. Previous screening on previous screen. Previous screen, what's this thing called? A mouse, here we go. Okay, 976 to a 954, 252 to a 257, 384 at 196 there for Morris, 378 at 197 there from Brandon, and then that 484. Geez, you can throw a blanket over these ETs, these guys. 492 for, uh, for uh, Morris. So again, that margin of victory, 71 thousandths of a second, and there was only... Um, there was uh, only eight hundredths on the start line between them. So that was a hell of a great launch. I was thinking, who's going to do the whole shot here? And just remember, we're talking about Morris McMillan and Brandon Gosbell, two of the best guns on a pro tree in a nitro funny car in the game. And, um, you know, we know these guys also get a chance to drive things even quicker than those things when we talk about the big time, big show nitro funny cars. But to drive these things like real pros. I mean, they were going each other on the tree as well. That that race meant something. That's what a good old fashioned match race looks like, folks. And I hope you loved it. Hope you loved it. We'll give you another one here in just a sec. God, there's nothing better here. I mean, we haven't seen it at night until now. What you just saw is the first time that's ever happened here. So you're going to be a part of that for 2024, folks. Part of history here, the first quarter mile uh, event here at Warwick Dragway. And you've seen those nitro funnies to the stripe. And that looks great. I just, uh, look, honestly, I got, sometimes you've got the best seat in the house. This is a pretty good view from the house, but you know what, down track, I don't, we don't get quite the good view down the track as you guys would. 
but I'm sure, I mean, looking through the uh, the glass here and looking through that that awning down the end, you guys are getting a, a much better view than us up here. And uh, the sound. You reckon, reckon the town knew what's up then? Uh, at 7.51 p.m. on a Saturday night, you reckon the town, have we, have we got... Have we got dogs carrying under coffee tables now? Have we got cats clawing the back screen door in town? I hope so. I hope we've got a hamster in psychiatric health for the rest of its life. I, I, I don't mind, mate. I, I, you know, drag racing is a big impact sport when, it, when, when it's you know, played on the big stage. And you know what? There's nothing better than creating a big stage at the smaller tracks. They, they, everything's bigger. It's more intimate. You're, the fireys are back. Well, they didn't want to miss it. I spread the word out there that the funnies had warmed up and you better get back. So they have. And it's, uh, that is crazy. 200, so we saw 235 mile an hour in the previous run. So you tell me the old Warwick, eight, uh, Warwick breaking area doesn't do a good job. I mean, that uphill thing's a game changer. It really helps them all slow down so much quicker. And uh, these cars sometimes they're, well, we found on the previous runs, that uh, you know they're not quite they're not quite getting up the end, you know those things do tend to um, you know be really hard to push or move once they finish the run and that clutch needs to uh, cool itself off. But what a great great run! Now it's Walshy and um, well it's the it's got to be the Bandit and the Terminator. Is that right? So Joshy and Walshy. So all is Nelly in readiness. For our next pairing. Did you like that other one, folks? Good enough? Oh, yeah. Give you another one here. I don't know. I almost feel like I'm, I want to run out of the tower and sneak into the... Somehow sneak into the grandstand for the next one. Just to hear it out there in the open. Actually, Shags, we will open this back door in the next one and hear it down the end, I think. That's what we're going to do. Hopefully, we get a big whiff. Anyone get the nitro from the last run there? Anyone get that? Is that all right? Mozzies went away there for a bit, didn't they? We didn't have any mozzies. I mean, there's cheaper ways of repelling the mozzies. I mean, it's not not the not you complain about fuel prices, but you know this is what makes them. That's the difference between being exciting and very exciting, is this nitro methane fuel. And uh, when you think about it, I'd have to ask. I'd actually have to ask Mr. Graham Cow. How many years has he been dabbling in the magic nitro? It might be 50 years he's been dabbling with this stuff. From the early days, the original Psycho, and uh, back when starting to tip the can, going to the golden, the golden fluid, the magic fluid. No other motorsport has that, and that's the dilemma facing every other motorsport. Oh, we have to, we have to run, you know, we have to go electric, or we have to go, you know, synthetic fuel, or we've got to go, you know, E85. We've got to go something that's, you know, going to um, be sustainable. And then the good old drag race at hell, no son. Slap that out of your, get that name out of your mouth. Nitro methane is the only way to go. You have to put drag racing and nitro methane. It is the perfect natural mix because this is what nitro sounds like. There's people crying. Somebody's crying. I'm crying. I'm off the night show on the back here. Here we go. What a run here. Josh Lay. And Justin Walsh.
bunch of heads together, side by side, Nitro Racing. 492 to a 497, both in the point nines and the 60 as well. 960 for Walshy, 988 there for Josh, 375 to the 660 for Justin, 385 to the 660 there for uh, for Junior Lay. 492 at 219, 497 offered early there for Walshy, but yeah, that's that was good with the with the door open. That was good with the door open, and it goes to show that the start line was taking that. Point nines in the 60s, both sides. And uh, how good did that sound, folks? Give a clap, cheer, and a whistle. Put your hands together for the Aeroflow Nitro Funny Cars. What'd you think? Going down through the, the gully down here, just the sound just travels out sideways. It's it's almost like, you know, when you, like, you see videos of a plane breaking the sound barrier, there's this big sort of flash across the horizon. That's kind of what they're doing. They're sending that noise outwards as well through the planes. And uh, I would imagine if we had uh, some people that aren't racing anymore here at Morgan Park, probably settling in for a night of, you know, banter about how their day went, or maybe a few of you, I hope a few of you did come down here and have a look at the drags, you'd be mad not to tonight. So if, even if you've come down from up at Morgan Park, or even the people that didn't come down, they certainly know what the hell Nitro Funny Cars are now, and be sorry they missed it. And then they'll go, hmm, a strange smell came across from there. Uh, then all the mozzies went. <laughs> then all the mozzies went. Because that's that nitro. How, how's that nitro down there? That was uh, that was tons. Got a young family down here. We got mum and the kids and dad there, and they've just had their nitro methane fix. And they're not even crying. They're probably wanting more. Look at them. They're not even they're not even stressed. In fact, nitro funny. This this kid's asleep. How cool's this kid? Got a kid asleep here. The kid is <laughs> now that's. <laughs> That's how Junga Bunga probably slept as a kid, right? He'd come, he'd come, like little Theo. I haven't seen it. Is the little unit out here today? It's almost, it's almost like a viewing of King George, little King George, isn't it? Like Prince George, isn't it? It's like the royal child. <laughs> have we seen little Theo today, have we? Little, little Theo, little Theo Bunga. <laughs> can we call him that, Prince Theo Bunga? Again, like any kid that can sleep through Nitro Funny Cars is a chill kid, you know what I mean? Mind you, don't get on his bad side when he probably wakes up. He'll probably be wake up and then be told that he missed them and then he's going to chuck the tandy then. Yeah, he'll be upset after that. But that sort of kid, well, you know, we still embrace them. But yeah, I can't believe his kid's still asleep after that. Rock him to sleep. Mind you, I'm also bit found guilty. You know, I might have um, you know, come home, watch a bit of drag racing on TV, get halfway through a Puerto, Re Puerto Rican drag racing video and I've fallen asleep through the thing. Just rocks you, rocks you to sleep. The engine. Sometimes I think the engine noises, especially if you're watching that Puerto Rican stuff. Eh, 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 eh. Like just, it just, you could go to sleep to it. It's almost angry crickets, like a field of angry crickets, all just sort of chirping and chirping, and then you know hitting the limiter and whatever. But uh, I, honestly, I have, I have fallen asleep watching drag racing until I fall asleep. Is that a, is that a bad thing? Did you fall asleep? So here we go. Shag is just admitting that he was watching the World Series Pro Mod and then fell asleep through the stream. You're only human, mate. There's only so many hours in the day that you can watch it. Yeah. There's some, uh, some good stuff to be watching. But uh, no, that's not bad. That is, that is not bad viewing if you can get onto those live streams and see it. All right, so we've had the nitro methane burning funny cars. Now we're uh, getting our lights all in order here. There's going to be a bit of a, again, good flame show. Here come the Lay girls, Shelby Lay and Chelsea Lay. Chelsea driving, I think the Nitro Sheriff, Shelby driving, the misbehaving wheel standers. If you don't know what a wheel stander is, you're just about to find out. Cars, and again, look at them in the pits. I actually went and had a look at them. You know, they're, these things are designed specifically to do wheelies, and you've never seen anything like them when there's no body on them. They are their own one. Look at the kids love the lights, the sirens. People with a guilty conscience are running to the car. I nearly did the runner just then, actually. Just start, pull over. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? 
Here they go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's some good grip there, isn't it? That's some good grip. These things that almost that almost will stand on an ice rink. They almost could. That's it, girls. There's not too many women in the world, folks, that get to drive wheel standers at a drag strip. You can name you can name them on one hand, literally. That maybe even just two fingers. Chelsea and Shelby. Um, I'd love to see a, uh, a wheel. I think they used to have big assortments of wheel standers racing each other. I remember watching some old Diamond V videos of all the wheel standers racing each other. Now, the tanks, the school buses, the fire engines, the little red wagons. Yeah, I love them all. Here we go. Get your cameras out. Now, I know we've got a sign on the way in saying no fires, but conditions apply. Oh, they got the flames working beautifully on Chelsea's. Just beautiful. All right, here we go. If they can hit all the way to the stripe, we've got to keep cheering as they keep going down. Cheer them all the way. Once they get up, you're just going to say, go, go, go. Can they get to the end under full steam, these two ladies, fearless ladies? She had to pull it down early. Chelsea, she's taken them all the way for a pedal. Chelsea Lay, all the way to the stripe. 11.06, 84 mile an hour. Yeah, Shelby's had to come down. She got the hole shot. You could tell it was the most obvious hole shot you could ever see. That thing came up. I think she was more going for the tree than remembering that, in a way, there is a little bit of walk up on these cars. And when I mean walk up, they've. That, that, that's got to come up at a pretty nice gradual to, sh to transfer the weight. Shelby went for the light, no doubt about it. And the thing's come up, it's like, man, babe, you really hit that thing. Like you stabbed it going for the whole shot, except it came up so fast, it kind of unsettled itself off the wheelie, uh, wheelie bar. And then it came back down a little bit early. But oh, again, just that fine art on how do you drive these things. Um, you're transferring all of this balance and weight and it's just got to come back gradually. And I just think then she went, she went for the jugular there. She, I think she almost, and this is it, both these girls have had plenty of seat time and more than just wheel standers. So I think the racer kicked, the little bit of racer robot kicked in. It's like, I'm going for the whole shot here. And it's kind of bitter. Just coming up too quick there for, um, for, uh, for Shelves. But um, hey, what a good um, couple of matchups. Now it's time, oh my goodness, we're going to send these guys down here. Why not? Got some wild machinery still left to see here tonight, folks. Russell Lacey wants another crack at it here. Look at these things. They are beautiful machines. And again, fit for purpose. Like, you just can't turn up at too many other bike events and fit in. Mind you, you could also maybe park that at a bike event. And max maximum cred. I'd love to know the first ever extended swing arm when did that happen it would have in drag racing i mean it's a thing it's 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 increasing the wheelbase these things are beasts in every in every way johnny lewis and russell lacy All right, let's look at the body language here again as Russell Lacey two feet down on tippy toes or some guys just sit there with that foot flat on one side. Some guys step off. Some guys walk them out. Let's just have a look. I can't quite see Johnny from here. It's better to do this during the daytime, actually. But unless we give them those glow, glow boots so we can see what their feet are doing. Because that's about all you can look for when they're staging a bike is just how they... Look at that little bit of a settler there for Russell. Just a little realignment there of the tackle before uh, going in for the stage. A little tackle alignment. All those people that go fishing, you know what I mean? 
Here come those wheel standers, by the way. Street cars. Oh, Johnny, the thing, oh, the thing just sort of took a big gulp of nothing. It's having trouble getting the power on. Russell Lacey, no problem whatsoever. Pops that thing through the gears, 935 at 138. Johnny Lewis, a big bog off the line. The thing didn't want to respond, and that's one you can throw away, Johnny. He's done plenty of laps, but that's one you want to throw away. Um, yeah, just a whole gulp of nothing off the line. 2.77 seconds to the 60 foot. Can we have Super Street and Modified to the lanes, please? Super Street and Modified to the lanes, please. Super Street and Modified to the lanes. Super Street and Modified. Modified and Super Street to the lanes. All right, Dylan Lacey, far lane. Vanessa Rodman. Now, look, Vanessa's gone a fair way more than she did the Savo when she sprayed all the coolant out everywhere. But now, that's a distant memory. Here she is again, ready to put this thing down. And, boy, we've got some girls on bikes here this weekend as well. Young blokes and, and young ladies riding some of these amazing machines. Vanessa, not uh, shying away from it at all. She goes and puts that thing on for two bulbs. Oh, they're not mucking around here either, punching through the gears. Normally air shifted transmissions, eight double, eight double O, weight 28. Check out the speed, check out the seriousness. 828, 800, 165 mile an hour, 164. Therefore, Dylan Lacey. That has come around big time for both. Michael Beaton and Daniel Rabnot. So Rabnot is back. Yeah, 748 at 180, eh? Oh my goodness. Michael Beaton, this outlaw bike category, it stepped up thanks to SVO Transport and Couriers. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them here. Is that Brandon down there, fresh out of the funny car? I don't know. Thought he might have seen him. Oh! Nice! 112 with 60 foot. He ain't mucking around. Half track 467. Big number coming up here. 736. 736. 179 mile an hour for Daniel Rabnot. And a 1408 issues there for Michael Beaton. 112 in the 60 foot half track. That's when I started getting excited. 467 at 149 mile an hour at half track for Daniel Rabnot. And a 736. Oh, thanks for the offer, Telf. You, Telf. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have a, I'll have a, I'll have an iced coffee. I'll have an iced coffee. I'll have an iced coffee. Thanks, um, Telf. If you're offering, I just need that cool iced coffee. Thanks. Oh, here we go. The meals, meals on wheels. Well, is is it too late to order a steak burger? Steak burger to the tower, please. Steak burger and chips to the tower. Oh no, I was just going to see if it worked. You know, sometimes it just works. Steak burger and chips to the tower, please. Steak burger and chips to the tower. Barbecue sauce, thanks. Um, st steak burger and chips to the tower. Let's just see if that works. Um, Telf, I'll, Telf offered iced coffee. I'll have an iced coffee too, Telf. I just need that little caffeine boost and I think I'll be right. Phil Webster, Nathan Nielsen. Outlaw bike still here. Listen to these things go. Watch out here. One to the 60 foot. Nathan Nielsen, he's on an absolute mission. Listen to the gears. 490 to half track. Here comes the stripe. Rolls off the throttle, obviously. 893 at 98 mile an hour. 942 there for Phil Webster. 8.93, 8.93 at 98, but that was 1.20 in the 60, and uh, 4.90 at half track. 
Yeah, just Telf if you did if, if you can get an iced coffee. I know our coffee uh, people behind the tower here do an iced coffee. An iced coffee would be lovely, Telf. Just asking. Um, did I say steak, burger, and chips to the tower? I've asked for that too, haven't I? And can I help you, ma'am, with anything? Oh, you're you're sorting something out in head office. Okay, lovely. That's all right. Just making sure everyone's cool. If you needed something, we can call for that. You don't need a welder or anything. A four inch aero, four inch aero flow V band clamp or anything. No. What else did we need today? Oh, okay. Yeah, we we still got a phone up here. Oh, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. The ladies, the ladies are out of here, and the and the t-shirt. Okay, the t-shirt. Oh, this one. You want this one? Oh, okay. No, sir. Oh, you never know. Fans everywhere. Um, just not on only fans. I think last time I looked, my profile's minus three. So it's it's getting better. Getting better. I still can't believe I'm paying though. I'm not actually getting anything from it. I'm, I get a bill every month. Is that a good thing? I'm not doing well. Oh, I mean, it, he asks you to be a content creator. I mean, I think the content I've given them has been quite informative. I think they just want something different. I don't know. Um, getting a lot of different requests, but I'm just not answering them. I'm definitely not interested in doing anything with my feet anyway. You wouldn't want these ones anyway. Actually, you know what? Silly me, speaking of feet. Guess who, guess who accidentally put the sabre saw, you know a sabre saw is, your reciprocating saw. Guess who accidentally put the sabre saw through his foot two weeks ago cutting branches in the backyard? Me, only because the thing, I'm cutting a branch down sort of near my feet and the thing came through the branch and I've gone off the throttle because the thing's dropped. So the thing actually didn't have the finger on the trigger but the thing was still winding down. And would you believe it, just above the steel cap, it goes chunk, chunk through the boot and stabs the top of the old foot nearly to the other side because they were two really deep, two really deep marks by the sabre saw blade. So I'm walking around with the boot still on thinking, oh yeah, that hurt a bit. And then the more I walked on it, it's like, dude, that hurts a lot. And then I took the boot off and it's like, man, I've literally stabbed myself 15 mil apart twice with the sabre saw blade through the boot. So you talk about feet, I'm not willing to show anyone this foot at the moment. Here we go, Brandon Miglioco. Oh my God, these things are wild. What they're trying to do, 564 to half track. Gets through the other end, 875 at 159 mile an hour. So we're still to schedule, we're still gonna do that. By all indication, we've got juniors again tonight. I'm just having a junior, I'm having a junior uh, parent ask. Dougie, I think so, I do believe so. I do believe so. Oh, Telf, you are an angel. Telf is an angel. Thank you, Telf. I didn't take an order for everyone. I just took one for myself. We, I'll, I'll get four more straws. Yeah, yeah, we'll be right. We'll be right. Ah, uh, Simon Telford. One. It, I need. I just. Yeah. Only in the only in the down times do we need to stay maintained I suppose but I suppose any time you hear internal combustion happening it just stirs the soul I, I don't know is it just me but you know when Colin Lloyd unleashes a blow and one J was that exciting of course it was nitro funny cars echoing through the planes that was another thing um, blowing six cylinders ie yeah right up tell Sally I thought what, what'll really hook tell for you blowing blowing Holden's well Darren Otto even his even his little street rod you seen Darren Otto driving that blowing thing that was the car I think he said he built during COVID. And of course, you know what, we've got that many things, that many things to look forward to of the future here at Warwick. And even even as Shag has said, drag fest, good, that might be a good goal. If you're gonna bring the altered down, could I get the altered ready for drag fest so I could come here, hey? And then we need, a, you know, we need to stir Hoff up, but maybe Drag Fest will be a good time that you get your altered here and I'll get my altered running here. Um, six banger Nats, when that comes back, the, v, the VW event, the Chrysler event. I mean, that six banger Nats, wait till, now that we've got the track back, you wait till we get back to that Warwick calendar, right? Wait till we get back to that, because we're gonna be there with bells on. 
And you know what? It's good that it appeals to you, the racer, to come here, because it appeals to me as a racer to come here, all because of the races and the way that they're set up. They just want people to compete. They want to come out and have a go. Telf can steer out here, Telf can be out here. Oh, Rodney, Rodney, Rodney. All right, there we go. Rodney Hanson. You can tell he's had a busy week. You know, you know when you've had a hard week at work, you first burn out the the longest goal. He's obviously still got a little bit of a up in the week. But the second burnout's just as big. I just never thought it was in Rodney's personality to do that. Junior dragster and junior bike to the lanes. Junior, there you go, there's the answer. Junior dragster are running again tonight, and junior bike. And it's not past your bedtime. Gear for Rodney, half track 483, 747. He's back 747 at 184. Which category was that? Modified, was it? Modified to the lanes for your uh, last qualifier, you would assume. So that's um, junior dragster, junior bike, and modified to the lanes, please. All right, here's some more stuff for you to enjoy, both live and on the stream. Oh yes, that sounds good out here tonight. Dave, Dave Knightley, 418 cubes of blowing Chev. Of course, the original VH Commodore, now the EH holder, Gary Cameron, that T bucket, he's got a best of 782 at only 130, so that thing's going to go a whole lot deeper into the sevens. Final call to modified, final call to modified to the legs, final call to modified to the legs, please. The headlights work, everything works, this EH Holden, it is a piece of work. Dave Knightley puts it in on the bottom bulb, can't afford to move a millimetre. 
He might have an option here if he wants to, because Gary Cameron's reassigning himself as well. But he chooses to stay there. Locked on the trans brake button. Millimetres away from bumping out of stage. But he's going to just hold on for a second or two here as Gary Cameron comes in. Supercharged Outlaws brought to us by Loy and Sons Earth Moving. Here at Warwick Dragway, the quarter mile, grand opening. He does that little people again, Gary Cameron, but he's going to take it out a bit further here tonight. This time, 7.34 PBs and 8.85 for nightly at 116 mile an hour. But uh, keeping an eye on Gary Cameron, just that first little pedal off the line and then back into it, that altered. Uh, proving, you know, we're pretty flat and level track here, let me tell you, because, you know, you put an altar down, if you know you've got bumps, that altar's going to show you. That was nothing more than just a reaction to the launch, and that thing got out and, and got going. 7.34 at 185 mile an hour. Honestly, what we've seen tonight, like, there is no questioning how nice this surface is. We've got a lot of people getting down here under full power, and you know what, it is a little... It is a little bit of a different view when you come down through the quarter here. You do feel like you are a little bit downhill, which you feel that at Willowbank as well, over the quarter. This feels a little bit more exaggerated. So it is a little bit unnerving as you're hovering over the end there. But I think more, as we've seen already in the other sessions, they're not lifting off as much now. They're all taking it to the stripe. That braking area, yeah, it sort of does a little bit of that. They're all stopping, well, the, the bunnies aren't even getting up there. So, they're, they're, uh, you know, it's there's a lot to be said about the uphill braking area as well. It really does work a treat. And I think, again, no one's ever done court until, we, until we've come here today. So, I mean, everyone's feeling their way. Um, I'm sure any time you've ever gone down a drag strip for the first time and it's like, well, the full distance this time, you, you do want to exert that little bit of caution. You know kind of where everything finished last time you raced at Warwick. This time you've just got to go, well, guess what? That's what those other set of lights. So we've got, the, we've got our 660 lights there, as you can see, and then you can see we've got our 1320 lights down a bit further. So it really does... Um, help uh, explain because again we're running two different categories here tonight too we've got some 660 stuff like we had our eight mile uh, masters and we've got our 28 v 275 guys running over the 660 everyone else running over that 1320 distance and it's good to see these guys have just got more of a hang of this longer distance and they're, they're, they're taking more confidence in getting further down now here's an interesting pairing john bayless is back but so is bart bedrossian so Bart's fixed whatever that was that happened. We're going to have to stop past and see what it was because it sounded all, all as, uh, all like an input shaft or something. It just it zinged immediately off the line. It didn't move really after it sort of lost motion, and we we assumed the worst. Whatever it is, Bart's fixed it anyway because here he is. And again, remember as you said, it's got the Hemi in it now. So spot the weak spot. It's not going to be the Hemi, is it? Not going to be the Hemi. Actually, it was hovering around a whole lot of noon and Hemi the other night. Then it's spot on on a Thursday night. And there's Andy getting the Mustang ready for Jambo next weekend. Bill at noon and Hemi, water jacketed, five-speed Liberty and a quick drive. All the fruit. All the fruit. Johnny Bayless. Coming out now on the Funica. Oh, it sounds the fruit. It sounds the fruit. We've got so much of that. And am I the only one? I'm sure you feel it too when, when Renee Noonan gets on and talks about another victory for Noonan power. To just feel that that is an Australian, even though they're based in the United States, but they're proudly Australian. It's an Australian company working in the States producing that amazing race engine and then more and more victories either it's in top alcohol with an injected nitro car winning world series of pro mod or with ward the other day or um when todd uh, todd moyer goes 514 in a camaro to set the world record for a pro mod with noon and power makes you feel kind of good and that's and that's noon and power with a motec so that's double almost double aussie you know with that um very proud. I, I, I get the America's Cup feeling all over again whenever an Aussie wins on the big stage. It may not be the ultimate big stage as far as mainstream's concerned, but it's certainly big enough in our world to be proud of it. 
All right, Bart, you deserve a good run here, son. Feel that Hemi power. Oh, yeah. Giving it a bit of a steer and a stab there, Bart, but it's no problem for Johnny Baylor. 702, 194 up the end. 748 at 180 mile an hour there for Bart. Good run for both there. 107 in the 60 for Johnny Bayless. Uh, Bart 113. He did have to sort of wrestle it around in true altered fashion. And isn't it funny that, you know, both those cars technically about the same size wheelbase, but the altered always seems to be more, more in distress. The funny, sometimes I think the body kind of a bit more deceptive. Um, doesn't look like the thing's moving too much, but the alteds always seem to show a little bit more lot. Actually, that's one thing I haven't seen yet. Has there been a recap on in YouTube land from the March meet? Have we had the March meet in Formosa, what, last weekend? God, I've got to catch up on my YouTube. Got to catch up with that. That's always a good watch. That's a lot of uh, Nitro funny car, Nitro altered, Nitro nostalgia dragsters running. And um, it's, uh, it's good to see the world, weekend after weekend, seems to be enjoying more drag racing higher higher activity than I've ever sort of observed this year so far. Especially that, that Invitational there at Bradenton. I think they already had a little dab at Sick Week or something, didn't they? They already, they already did, yeah, because Reek, Reeks was all over it. I was uh, listening to um, um, Reeky doing, the, uh, doing some interviewing there for Tom, obviously. So we've had a lot of activity on the planet of, on planet drag racing this year. Nice, nice idea for a show at a podcast, isn't it? Planet drag racing. Drag racing planet. I mean, we could theme, we could theme various broadcasts. Yes, we could. We could do the whole galaxy, really. We'll start. Maybe we start at Mercury. I don't know. Okay, what have we got here? Something more cranky. What is it? David Johnson. Oh yes, this thing. Oh my God, this thing. What a tribute. This thing. Look at this. Yes. You almost need to go to the dictionary and look up Topolino, have a picture of what one looks like standard, and then have and then put this one in. Because to me, that's almost, honestly, if you could ever rate, and maybe on, on an upcoming edition of Planet Drag Racing, or Drag Racing Planet, top 20 Topolinos of all time, my goodness. There's a, you know what? Let's leave that to Brian Loans, honestly. Let's leave all the hard stuff to Brian. Let Brian do it. Um, he seems to have the time. Oh, I love watching this stuff. Have oh, you watched any of this early stuff? Yeah. But even those little drag racing stories. Remember that Hemi Honker? Did you see the Hemi Honker with turbochargers and drag racing? That was great. To, to see what they did back there. Wasn't quite right in torque converter technology. But the horsepower they, they, they were making early was crazy. Yeah, he, he's the full geek. And sometimes you need a guy that's the full geek to do it. And he's, he's just got the market there. And you know what? When you look at actually subscriber and views and stuff, it deserves another multiplied by 10, that stuff. Because to, to us especially, that's, that's gold class information. All right, David Johnston. Best DT of a 773 at only 125. So... He was sussing out the uh, the Warwick quarter earlier on today. The chemical clown. A showstopper that can go as well. Half track, 467, low sevens here. Here we go, 727, 180 mile an hour, 727, 180. Oh yeah, I'd say you'd be feeling every bit of that. Half track, 467, 153 mile an hour, 114 of the 60, and that thing just works its magic. That is a show-stopping car. I think a lot of even our Aeroflow crew were all over that today when that thing rolled down. Because not everyone, and I'm sure for hundreds, maybe thousands of people here today, hopefully that's new to you people too. If it makes the same impact with us as it would for someone that's never seen something like that before, well, we hope it gave you a real kick. Here's a guy, at, I mean, John Sting. Could 
doesn't say that he's out of retirement. He just say that he's um. Well, he's, he was between cars. You know, we start. Yeah, John Sting. He started, of course, as in modified um, in the early days, modified uh, track champion. Then he went to um, then he went to a dragster. Had a gorgeous a dragster. I think it might have been a state of the art Spitzer with a. A 400 plus Q Buick back then, so I remember that that that, that a drag that a dragster, yeah, yeah. So I remember Stingy as a track champion in modified, and then he turned up with an a dragster with that real, real smick, low 400 Q Buick. Ran seven O's in a drag rear engine dragster. Didn't he have that different engine in it? So um, he's out still at St George Stingy. I, I, I think he was a farmer. Or he, he's in Highlands now. I know Stingy was a man of the land there in the early days. Always had good stuff. And how's this for a uh, a new car for him? And Phil Bellet, well, you nearly call him Mr. It's either Phil Bellet, Bob Millet. Who else can you call Mr. Modified over the years? You know what I mean? Um, all of those guys. You could honestly, again, we've got to go back, Shags, and try and name a top 10 Queensland Modified heavy hitters. You know, how do we name them? When you think of those names, like Phil... I mean, Phil chopped me one night. I, I did a red. I had to race him one night. He had to. Ch he's chasing me. I, I think I left on the first amber. He, he already had it in my head, especially when he towed past and hurried me up on the way. Yeah, well, if that was a reaction time battle, it was Johnny Sting back to his old tricks. Hole shot the field ballot, but it's only qualifying. 7.95 at 169 and an 8.36 there for Phil. So Phil will admit, I mean, these guys are hard markers of themselves. They'll even look at that and rate that as something not even worth considering reaction time-wise. Johnny Sting, though, how's this all going to end up by tomorrow night? I mean, how in, How are we going to end up? We're going to. These people are here to compete. They're not just here to have a little dust off of the cobwebs. It's about, you know what? Cobwebs are off. Who do I beat? Who am I beating tomorrow? And here we go. Alter, we're in altered heaven again here, Shags. Look at this. Nothing at 125 inches in this one. Oh, I don't know. I always lean to the six bang. I've always, that's one thing unfulfilled yet. Which one? Eighth mile masters. Eighth mile masters to the lanes, please. Eighth mile masters to the lanes, please. I don't know. I like Peter Ilsley's, but I just love a good six banger, Alter. Just love them. And again, name a top 20 favourite six banger Alters of all time. Well, top 20 six banger drags. Just um, too many to choose from. I think of the original, um, the original Panic Six blowing, uh, blowing Six altered from up here, of course. Yes, Mark Stewart. God, that that was. You know what? For a car that was like a mid to low nine second thing, it was one of those you got to come to the fence to see it. And very rarely does a car have a you can't, you got to get there to see it. You might miss his burnout, but you're definitely running to the fence to see how he's going to drive that thing. And even in its nine, mid to uh, mid to low nines with that short wheelbase was great to see. Get shout out to Ronnie Newton. G'day Ronnie. Ronnie's back watching the action as well. Has he still got his road roads to Ronnie with the LS in it? Jeff Graham, that um, gorgeous little six banger alt at the far lane. Peter Ilsley here. Traditional small block Chev. What do we have? Ten spoke Alibrands on there. Five spoke on the other side. Listen to him. Good fun action as these guys. And again, you, you don't hear any bouncing attitude from the altered. So, you know, short wheelbase cars are having no problems here. 900 at 134. 1159 at 109. Give me that car all day. Like, you can really race with something like that. There used to be a, a little six-cylinder old I used to watch at Willow Bank. It was precise automatics on the side. It had a trimatic in it. Low 11s, high 10s, that thing would run. Pick the wheels up every every launch. Gorgeous little car. Modified sort of did always have that element early days at Willow Bank. It had the traditional... And remember, not many big blocks back then, but a lot of small block dragsters, but a lot of front engine stuff and a lot of six banger stuff. And uh, I just think people gravitate to what they like. And, and, and to us, I, I always think an inline engine's rated as a different engine to what we're traditionally fed in drag racing. So I always love anything inline. That's why six banger nats are such a popular event up here. 
is um, the lover of inline. I actually wanted them to change that from six banger to six banger and inline nats, because then we start thinking straight eight stuff. Because <laughs> I was going to chain two Mercruisers together, but they weren't going to let me do it and, and not turn up. So you have to turn up with one. But again, it's a four banger. So see what I was trying to do? So I was trying to get the old shotgun engined one in as an inline. And you know what? They're flexible enough. They might actually, because really, a few more cars. What, what's the worst thing can happen? A few more cars turn up. The more, the merrier. Maybe we should call it the six banger and inline nats. Who wouldn't want to see a little roadster with the old original? Remember the old A model, A models. Yeah, that's just me making rules to suit myself. But, but, oh no! <laughs> Ditto, bang, touche. Telfo's left the. Telfo has left race control. Boom. I set it up. It was like a volleyball. Set the spike up and Telf's jumped up and smashed that one over the net. He's hit that one home. And thank you for the iced coffee there, Telf. He, uh, he obviously felt I needed that kick. <laughs> I just, oh, he's just, likes to, likes to help. Always helps. And uh, and that's a Queenslander thing to do. And now that he's, you know, he's, he's up in the sunshine state again. Going to see the guy hopefully a bit more around. Trent Roberts, yeah, this, this thing has got NASCAR something in it. It's just the way you look at the rocket covers, you look at that little bit of an inlet port angle difference. It's, it's a lot of NASCAR in this thing. It just sounds it when you hear it. Yeah, it's up, up near the RPMs where it really does sound it. I mean, it, it looks like that's the sort of engine in it because it's got that sort of valve configuration. 903 at 147, it's got Plenty of horsepower on board. A oh, big shout out to Brooke. Big shout out for Brooke Shaw to the overtaking lane people for the other uh, live stream. She was out here before it rained. They came home to watch it on the live stream. Thank you, Brooke, for turning up, but you went home while it rained. Soft, sorry. Love ya, love ya, but can't soft. We're all here. I know a little bit of rain. I mean, she might have just had a hair done, I don't know. You know, sometimes when it rains, people get their hair done, it's in the rain. I'm the same, like this mullet goes uncontrollable when it gets caught in the rain, but that's why I run out into the rain. <laughs> that's why I run towards the moisture. I'm an, old, I'm, an old, I'm an old plumber, mate. I run towards the moisture, I don't run away from it. Well, that was, that was the old me, sorry, that's right. I, if I see water now leaking out of the slab, I just step over it and go, not my problem. It feels so good not to have to care hydraulically anymore. It's so good. All right, here we go, bit of super street. Having the most fun. Bill Henry. I caught up with Bill, haven't, you know what? It's, it's just like a big family. I haven't seen Bill forever. Comes up, comes up and says g'day. And it's like, these are our stalwarts that you just love to just see keep racing every every time you can see him. And this has always been one angry, stout, understated Ford Fairmont. He knows how to wring its neck. There's no weight saving on that car. It's all Fairmont. Goes 144 to the 60 foot on Leaf Springs and buries that ET into the tens every time. 1022 at 130 mile an hour. Craig White the same. He's from uh, Dolby. 1107 in the Tirana. And there's plenty more where that came from. Although it's the first time I've seen Billy today. Is that all? I'm not sure we haven't seen Billy Martland until oh, we have. I miss, must have missed him. But here he is, and he's another one from you know the Warwick surrounds that tends to go and be that extra Queenslander that does those drag and drives, does the drag challenges. Um, he'll be the one with the Carsbergs and the Bakers doing the uh, doing the week. Bruce Hedge beside him here. Check this out. He's from Dolby. The uh, 355 Holden powered Tirana. What are we, LJ there? Best of a 706 over the 660. Bill Martland, his best over the uh, 660 is a 681. We're not in eighth mile masters, are we? we are we in Super Street? Or? No, we had just two quarter mile time. So I think we are still on the quarter. I don't, I don't know. Billy. Billy's rolled in, rolled out. Had a dick to Got distracted. Off you go, Billy. 
That is a uh, boosted 355 Holden V8 on board. So a real sleeper, but it's gone and deep into the tens. Full street trim. 11.22 at 120 mile an hour, and Bill will get nothing for his troubles. Not even a time slip this time. Oh. Again, they're in different classes today, but can you imagine Phil Halbin and Pete Wilson racing each other? Just the two panel vans, turbo versus blower. Two power adders, one shape. Anyway. Oh, Phil. Phil just celebrated a birth the other day, just turned 18, Phil. <laughs> I think every time he uh, comes to a racetrack, everyone goes back to when you were young and wild and free. It's just that in, that in, There we go. Well, Chagger reckons he's uh, he slept in the back of this thing. And uh, you know what? You had to, really. There we go. Yeah, so Brooke's given it back to me there. She didn't appreciate those comments. Sorry, Brookie. She had two kids. She had two kids here with it, so I don't, I don't blame her. I don't blame her. I, I've had two kids once. I had three kids once. Uh, I still got them. Uh, 998 at 137 mile an hour for uh, Phil and Nicole 12.20 at 114. So not a bad run there, 137 out the back door. You didn't have to swear in your message back to me, Brooke, but anyway, I get it, I get it. My parents were married, thank you very much. I wasn't, I wasn't sinking the boot in too hard there. I mean, people have been called worse than soft. Ask Ezra Mann. Um, Phil Yulton and Ron Beeson out there now. Pretty soon you might be able to call someone pretty. Tackle a bloke out in the field and go, geez, that was pretty. How's that one, pretty boy? And then, oh, he called me pretty boy. Super sedan to the lanes, is that right? Did I hear that? I've been eavesdropping. All right, Phil Yulton, Ron Beeson, Ron in the green Commodore. Getting themselves ready. No joke, these guys, 166 in the 60 for Ron, 184. Oh, oh, lights on for the, uh, lights on for our uh, competitor here. Might have broken something and, and he's in distress because the thing's pulled right up. 11.33 there for Ron Beeson. But uh, yeah, Phil Yulton, yeah, okay, might have broken. I think they're yeah, they're IRS, aren't they? So he could have broken something in the back, which might have sent him a little askew. I don't know whether he's full stranded, but guess what? Roadside assistance, thanks to the Junga Bunga Mullet Assistance Program, where a friendly roadside assistance quad bike will attend in your uh, time of need. He's uh, probably surveying the track at the same time. And I, Mate, he's very attentive. How attentive is Junger? Like, honestly, he was, uh, he was, Phil Yulton was stranded only for seconds, but yet roadside assistance was already on its way. Lucky you're with Junger. That's good roadside assistance there. Yeah, Brooks on to me again there. So, so she said the one-year-old was completely over it and had to take the one-year-old home. The one-year-old calls the shots. The eight-year-old was keen to stay and she reckons she's been called worse than that. So, um, and I'm sure you have, I'm sure you have. We all have. So, um, yeah, thank you, Brookie. I'm glad you're home watching the stream and, um, you know, we've got plenty more uh, for you folk to watch on the live stream wherever you are. You like that, they like that, do they? Mullet assist. There you go. How good does that look? We've got it really well lit up there in the old braking area. The, the cameras are coming up, coming up really good here at night. That's very, I like. I actually do like our 660 and 1320 lights like that. That that really is. Um, that's got to be an experience. Can't wait to be bearing the altar or something down through there. Me and Shag's best of you know, three three, three match races, best of three. No, I don't. I don't even want to. Chagger and I don't need to race each other. The, the six banging ass, the Barador. And hopefully, look, this is utilising the opportunity of the overtaking lane live stream here on the Saturday night. 
that when is drag fest did we say what's it loosely october okay is whether or not we can get uh, our alters here for october so if hoff is watching hoff just let us let us know what we need to do there mate i've I'd love your help to finish it. Let's go full China like we talked about. So we've got a 2J in it, but we're going to put Chinese turbo, Chinese hot side, Chinese plenum. The only thing we can't do is put Chinese ECU in it. We've actually got quite probably too much ECU for it. But we want to do it with China. We want to run eights with Chinese turbo, Chinese intake, Chinese hot side. I think I supply... And I've supplied... Uh, I think I've, su I've supplied a Chinese alternator, so I'm actually helping with the job. I just need the experts to help us finish it all. But um, yeah, so that's all we need. And um, just a little side story there. Would you believe three days before I was due to go to Europe for a month, he's asking me to come and take it away because the shed that it was in got rented out. And he said, it's got to go by December 1. I said, mate, I'm in Europe December 3. I have to drive to Nambucker Heads to pick up the trailer so then I can come back and get the thing or I've got to put it on a tilt tray. I said, one thing I'll be telling you, mate, if that thing's coming home, it's getting an LS in it. And then he said, don't be gay. So, um, and that wasn't a psychology move by me. I, I was basically pretty serious. I said, mate, I'll just put an LS in it so we go out and just throw the LS down the track. And then, because it's already got the 2J in it, I think he would, you know, he threw up and he's probably threw up a little bit when I said, I'm just going to put an LS in it. I think he likes the 2J in there. I do. I think he likes the way that it looks. I think he would like... Well, again, the guy's a, he's a bigger fellow. I mean, Hoff can drive it if he can fit in it, if he wants. But I said, he goes, you can nearly make 800 out of one of these if you want me to. I said, well, I don't want you to. I said, I'm a scaredy cat. Can we, and, and again, this is the thing that I reckon has caught a dull his enthusiasm because I said, mate, I just want 500. It's a 2J with a turbo, Chinese everything. Can I get 500? And I think he's underwhelmed that he's not, because he said he was quite tempted to give me his old Corolla motor. Because mate, do you want to run sevens at two, seven O's at two hundred mile an hour? I said, not really. <laughs> he so he's offered me that. He's he offered me a big engine for it. Oh, I don't know about that, Hoff. Um, I had to put floaters in it. You know, all the stuff you'd have to put in it. And then you know, I'd be horrified at two hundred mile an hour. Not for me. I'm a bit of a chicken. Beth Mansfield French into stage. Jay Allen into stage. But we just. I don't know, maybe they were keen to get in and we just couldn't throw the tree or we... There we go. What's happened? Oh, look, that's okay. That's all right. She was what? Someone was watching Taylor Swift on a podcast or something there, were you? She's left Australia, hasn't she? Who? <laughs> That's right. Who? Oh my God. The whole world bloody stopped. All right, here we go. Jay Allen, Beth Mansfield, French. Oh, Beth's gone for the light. 024 minus. So, some people are already thinking about how they're going to race. They want to try the tree. They want to see where their focal point is. Every Christmas tree always just will tell you whether you need to react faster or slower. 11.33 for Jay Allen. Beth knows that she's... And sometimes if you shallow stage that, that might end up being a little bit more perfect. But um, they're all things to consider, and who knows? Tomorrow's another day. We're going to put the, the dial-ins on these things tomorrow. We're going to go to war over three rounds of Chicago shootout. And then that's not even going to guarantee people into the finals. You're going to have to see how it all ends up. But Kelly in the HQ, well, it says, says here low drags with 509 cubes of Chev, but that's not that and uh we've got this little mazda bravo i think it's an l is it an ls on this i haven't seen it for a while let's have a listen i know there's something lurking around in a little mazda bravo tray back that might be sinister and not stock but kelly goes 1090 with the kiwi thank you very much 1041 yeah no 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 ford bravo goes 1041 at 132 not with that well they started with that old two litre fe motor then they had the f2 we had them as up uh, oh here we go 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 well done mr drifter well done nice little hangout there dennis hurl didn't he what 
<laughs> Threw that around a bit. Mackenzie Garside, she is back. All right, Mackenzie and Dennis. So uh, getting the stripes up in the uh, in the Tirana. It's all about seat time, and uh, yeah, this Tirana ready to do some more serious racing. Mind you, Dennis Hurl got that burnout out of his system. He thought, "Am I allowed to do one what this far?" And it's like, "Go for it, Dennis." Might be their last run of the night because we're kind of into those sort of last sessions, I would think. Got a couple of pedals there for McKenzie, but now getting the hang of it. Yeah, now once that thing's up a bit, it's okay. 12.37 at 122, 11.63 at 125. But uh, yeah, we're getting those uh, those extra qualifiers in. So a lot of these people making their last runs of the uh, of the evening and a few more to come. Brookie and I, we've made up now. We've 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 set our piece. We've, we're now okay. She's she's we're good. We're good, Brook. Okay, we're good. Travis Greaves now and David Mahoney. Saw this on the trailer coming in today. Couldn't wait to see this. This is another obscure Mopar. Oh, I think it is. It's a. It's. I've got to look at it again. It could be a coronet. Someone will tell us what is the red. Dodge. It's not the red Dodge, but it's a red Dodge Plymouth, I think. It's unique. We've got a couple of unique ones here today that we just can't quite accurately identify. Neck and neck, this one all the way to a thousand foot, all the way to the stripe. 1099 to a 1090. What a great race between Travis and David. Plenty more energy out there in these categories. I don't even know, I don't need to know his name, John Oliver. Yes, there we go, good guess. Just, I just don't, I just don't need, when I hear that guy in the burnout, that's John Oliver. He, he loves that sort of burnout. That's his almost, I shouldn't say a trademark, but that's something I've picked up a bit, Johnny. He doesn't spare the RPM in the burnout. That's his style. Adam Rin beside him. How's the XC? My next door neighbors had a brand new XC growing up. Johnny, Johnny, that's Johnny Oliver. Jack's Johnny. Just gonna let him. I'm just gonna let him breathe. We might let a few of these things breathe. Actually, this time of night, you know, I'll back off on the talk. I'm gonna hear some lungs. I need some more lungs out there tonight. I'm sure you guys do. There you go. 64. 64 Dart Coop, thank you. We have a very informed group of viewers, listeners, spectators, people that will send you a random text to um, set you straight. Love all of that. There we go. Cameron McKee says 64 Dodge Dart Coop as well. So Cam's onto it. Well spotted. You get a uh, 50 golden tickets. John Riley and Chris Hangard. Right, let's listen to these two guys out here. Let's have a listen through the plane. We've just, we, we have just never, we've got to start savouring, because remember, we're so used to them getting off at the 660. To just hear them legging it through there, that just sounds fantastic just to hear the lungs as they uh, stretch them out. And judging by that warm up that we uh, had there before, that kind of sounded like an alcohol funny car. I'm assuming that might be Mr. Canoli might want to try and have another run here tonight. If I hear Nitro cackle shortly, I'll get triple excited because if they are going to have one more crack at it, you are, uh, there we go. So yeah, there's a good chance, folks. If you stick around, we'll show you more. More of that. 
And for the diehards that are stayed, you will be truly rewarded. For the people watching on the stream, you'll get a great glimpse of it, but not as good as when it is here. When you're here feeling that, this is crazy. Terry Mansfield French, about the only fair lane wagon I've ever seen. It's all can't see because of the burnout. Ashley Carslake's trying to send me a pitch. Oh, he's got his altered nearly ready for next event. Terry goes 11.45 at 117 mile an hour and Joshua Dimitrios 11.89 there beside. So yeah, he's got his altered just about ready to rumble too. Geez, that's got some fruit in it. Big block Chev powered by the look of that. Oh yes, there's a lot of people still meeting uh, and achieving their altered desires. That's a good little description, their altered desires. All right. The big El Camino and the HK. HK Prem. Yeah, I think I think Drag Fest and the six banger nets this year are gonna be big ones. Warren Sander, that's was back. Philip Edwards in that El Camino. So good to see uh, Warren from Wandamba up here. Back into racing was good to see. And still loves to cut a line. Phil Edwards there beside him. So very e evenly matched in the 60 foot. That performance tends to uh, now get exaggerated as Obviously, the performance difference of a second comes out. 11.72 to a 12.78. But that's a hell of a class. Wait till they put the dial-ins on tomorrow and go racing. So good stuff here in Super Street. He doesn't back away from a good burnout, Ray Ross. He does not back away from one at all. Carl Sundholm beside him. Occupation plumber. Good on you, Carl. I'm on your side. I'm on your side, Carl. He's a, hydro a hydraulic specialist is another way to do it. Sometimes you get to dodge some of the menial jobs if you just say you're a hydraulic specialist. If you say plumber, you're up for it. People are going to ask you everything. If you say hydraulic specialist, they... They don't twig that you don't tighten toilet seats. That's, I can't believe that's a job for us. Oh, whoa, wait, Ross. You have to put all super gas on us then. That's kind of what a super gas car does. It's too quick. Carl Sondholm is going to uh, get himself to the strike first this time, 12.89, but the ever reliable Ray Ross just took a big gulp of something and it almost like it had the big throttle stop on it like a super gasser. That's what they do. Big launch, then go to nothing, then come back up. But that's that's odd. Here he is. This this early times prefect gasser. Love a good gasser. I, just when I think I reckon I've owned every car I'm always wanted, I still think there's a gasser somewhere. You know what I mean? I, there is still just that one little thing that might be missing in my life. Could be a gasser. Could be, and it could be a gasser. I already know if I was to build one, what what one it would, what car it would be, and the name of it. So I actually got all that, but I'm just probably never going to build it. But I don't want to give out the idea either because someone will build it. Mind you, maybe if they just, I'll be part two if they build the first one. I was going to do a Morris Major and call it Major Issues. Oh, Mark Rosso. Oh, no, Johnny Nason, sorry. Got the Camaro's mixed up. Johnny Nason, a little, uh, little squeal on the uh, on the hit there, but he's recovered well. 11.16 at 128. But, yeah, issues for Andrew King. The little early times prefect did not want to play the game. Yeah, I thought, you know, um, Morris, Morris Major. Um, Morris Major Elite, straight axle front, manual transmission. 471 on a Mercruiser. But probably never get built. 
I can't believe it. I had a 471. I had a, an immaculate 471 for you. You know, but sometimes things like that would come up, a blower, and you'd just make the purchase thinking, I've never had one, and I had this immaculate little 471. For years, I thought I'd put it on something, and then never never did, unfortunately. But again, it was like, oh, what can I put it on? Uh, I've run out of all the little fruity bits that I used to, used to own. Just about sold all my fruity bits. Can't even tell you how many other fruity bits I've got left. Not many. But just to have that sort of stuff stashed away. It's like my mate Mal, our mate, mate Mal Black. He seemed to have bought up a lot of model drag cars in his time and memorabilia. And then once in a while he puts a few things up for sale. I've run out of all the fruit to sell. I don't have anything else. What I've got's what I've got, and it's I'm hanging on to it by a thread. All right, Brett Thompson finally gets the gets the drive belt after four hours of shouting out. Goes to Super Cheap, gets another one, then realises that there was a perfectly good one that he disposed of earlier. Cooper lays beside now. Coop so careful to stage. Watch this last bit for the Falcon. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A millimetre here and a millimetre there. Coops. He just never seen a guy stage just so accurately and goes for the light oh Brady's just bogged it but he's just sort this listen, listen, listen. Brady it's got so much mate hold on to it 20b turbo on board for Brett Thompson and that thing's skatey is that a final call super sedan is it Eighth Mile Masters final call. Eighth Mile Masters final call and Super Sedan. Super Sedan to the lanes, please. I hope I got that right. Is that right? Super Sedan and Eighth Mile Masters to the lanes, please, for your last qualifier of the day. And you know what? I've been at 114. We've come up with 500 subjects here tonight. Mules and Higgins. Um, I know there was a Mark II, which is the more boxy one, or the 440, they called it. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, Satisfaction was the Mark I. There was one that, of course, um, Kim Petterwood had one in the early days of MP, which was the Mark I, I think. We then had Mills and Higgins, which was then Gary Tantanini, which I just remember. Those things, you know, three gear changes, three wheel stands, used to love that. That car gave you triple your value for money because it did the wheelie three times in the run, every gear, and still drive it to the stripe. So we've seen some pretty good ones, uh, Mark One Cortinas over the years. But yeah, how do we pick a, ever pick a top 20? Mate, I've still got all of my old drags for Australia's for, I don't know how many other people out there have, but but you know, yeah, I thought of a, oh you did, you, oh, you lost all your mags in the floods. Yeah, I, I, I'm lucky, I haven't. And I was thinking, how can I, why do I always need these? And then I thought one day if I ever get time, the best way to, is, I, well, I wouldn't pull the sexist card there straight away, madam, because you're a male, is why I kept the magazines. So, But you, you wouldn't keep your old woman's weeklies or Cleo, would you? Because I've just gender stereotyped you, back at you like you gender stereotyped me. Um, but we're mates, so we can deal with it. Yeah, no one's offended. But yes, I don't know why we keep them, but I got them. I got them. Um, and I thought, what's the best way to process them for the rest of your life? and maybe start doing podcasts where you, because I got the idea from Carl Cox, during COVID, Carl would walk through a, his, his own where he's got the farm, where his race cars and a studio is, and he did a COVID mix every week. And he'd walk through his little warehouse of vinyl, and he's got them from year. So he had them from the 60s through to the 2000s, and he was walking through randomly picking vinyls. He'd pick six vinyls and then go to the turntables. So I'd take six magazines out of the milk crate, random, and that's your podcast for the day. Like, even if you went through and did a moment in history, 10, 10 magazine copies, 10 different time frames, and do it from there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The fruits, fruits of the canteen. Best chips ever. Oh, my God. Courtesy of the Warwick Dragway. Ladies first, ladies first. All right, Kyle Day and Neil Paul. 
last run for the juniors tonight. Side by side to the 660, 837 and an 878. Burger once, burger once, burger twice, burger. Oh, there we go, wishful thinking. Yeah. The what? Are they the ones that were raised by wolves? No, different ones. The Wolf Brothers, Mount Tamarine. Yeah, Mount Tamarine. All oh, right, off we go. Are they on now? You know what? I'm sure it's a hell of a, a shindig, but they ain't got chips like these. Mm. All right. Two right. Nevaeh McDougall out there in the far lane. Max rolling here in the tower lane. This went 774 this afternoon and no one's tapping anyone on the shoulder. Because that thing's cranky. Nevaeh McDougall, a couple little dry hops. We got that cranky sounding. Junior. Junior drags to brought to us by Rowling Repairs. So there we go, baby, the uh, son of the sponsor, Max Rowling. Yeah, 173 in the 60 foot. Mind you, Nevaeh McDougall doing pretty well. 785, 785 and an 890. Yeah, Paige, Paige King out there in the tower lane. Jacob Schultz in the far lane. These juniors. Yeah, 869, 72 mile an hour. There we go. Use hot off the press. Funny cars about 30 minutes away, folks. Funny cars about 30 minutes away. If you got friends that may have ducked off, let them know they got. 28 minutes to get back. So the funny's out about quarter to 10. Oh, best chips ever. Good hot dog. They might have run out of buns, eh? So we're on the on the bread, but still just as good. Jasmine Kidd and Tyler Ballot now in the water.
Super Sedan and 8 Mile Masters to the lanes, please. Super Sedan and 8 Mile Masters. 8 Mile Masters and Super Sedan to the lanes, please, for the final qualifying session of the night. Super Sedan and 8 Mile Masters. Best chips ever. Hashtag best chips ever. All right, final set up there on Tyler Bellett's car. Little adjustment on the idle. They all sound cranky, don't they? Ah, 009 minus, 0063 minus. 838 there for Tyler. 870 there for Yasmin Kidd. So, um, as we said, junior dragsters, you can be from age 8 to about 17. The ones that run sort of mid, um, mid to low 8s, high 7s are rated as an A junior dragster. So, obviously, the kids are a little bit older. Normally got to be a teenager at least to drive an A junior dragster. If you see guy, kids sort of running, you know, 10s over the 8, 10s or 11s. They can be a C, if you see them sort of in the nines, they can be a, a B junior drag. So it all depends on age as to how fast you can run. That's Kendra Glasson in the tower lane, Fletcher Usher in the far lane. I'd say Fletcher in the far lane is a CJD, judging by his performance. listen to the way those centrifugal clutches work in these cars. 838 at 78 mile an hour. 1296 there for Fletcher Usher. So these things run on what they call a polar clutch. So a centrifugal clutch you can see on the side of the engine driven by a belt. And that centrifugal clutch obviously you can design how heavy the weights come out and how hard you can hit that. You can tweak that, adjustable with spring pressure. But then the polar clutch, the polar clutch then is a, a pulley with a belt. And that pulley, the belt runs on the top of the pulley. But as they go down the track, that pulley kind of opens up, allowing the belt to slide down inside while still driving that, that clutch. So effectively your gearing is changing. It's almost like a CVT, a constantly variable transmission. That's why you don't hear them change gears. They don't have a gear. They got one gear and it's actually that variable ratio in that in that V V band uh, belt pulley arrangement. Top of the uh, top of the pulley to the bottom of the pulley changes the gearing from, as you know, with any push bike, low gear, high gear. And they just continue to accelerate. 8.14 there for Carl Schultz, Charlie Usher in 8.46. It does it so well though. All right, Nixon Canuli on a solo to finish the uh, last qualifier for Junior Dragster, brought to us by uh, Rolling Repairs. Of course, Dad John out the front. Still got his fire suit on, so you hope maybe John's got another run coming in the alcohol funny car. If you can avoid wearing a Dash 20 fire suit, you'd have it off by now, wouldn't you? 
So we still got the suit there, so let's see how his son goes. Good father-son activity, isn't it? Nice reaction time. He gets, a, gets some applause from Dad for the reaction time. Nice leave and a good run. 8.34, 79 mile an hour. So good uh, straight away. Dad on the applause for the uh, for the tree, for the leave. 0.87 reaction time. So leaving with an O, uh, o light. 181 in the 60. And uh, yeah, 8.34 to uh, the 660 at 79 mile an hour. A good last hit of the night there for Nixon Canerli. Let's hope his dad gets one good hit of that thing on the next run out here. If uh, if Johnny's going to run that thing again here tonight, can't wait to see it. I know the I know the man wants to. I know we all want him to. So here we go. The bikes. This is our junior bikes again. They just they don't look like kids when they come out. They just look like our uh, modified bike group, but they are the juniors, the future drag bike rider generation. Xavier Mansfield French, James Loday. Oh yeah. And there you go. You think Dad encourages Xavier to do a good skid? Dad's filming it. Like, I guess that's encouragement, isn't it? Do a good skid, Xavier. Do a good skid for your old boy, and he has. James Loday. And again, we talked about it this afternoon. Where would we have been if we let these things in 20 years ago, where we'd be? I know, have you followed the, uh, the British junior drag bike riders? That is an incredible arrangement of bikes. They let them build the laydowns, the pro bikes. The kids are just incredible. In fact, I need to watch some of that on YouTube, I think. I've just got to go find it. Look at the RPM up here for Xavier. That thing gets along. I'd love to know what that uh, what that is, that little thing. Yamaha R15, there you go. So 150cc single by the sound of it. 924, a bit of a beast. 924 at 75 mile an hour. Doesn't quite say what James Loday one, Loday's one is there, but it does just read in here that it's a um, an R15 for Xavier Mansfield French. Here we go. Again, Dad's filming kids on the burnout. Here we go, boys. Last call, super sedan. Last call. Modified. Last call. Modified bike, street bike. Modified bike, street bike, final call, super sedan, modified. And modified, final call. Basically, if you haven't had another run, they are the classes that we still need. Oh, go some. Oh, there you go, Scarlet's. Scarlet's found the wheelie. Marcus found the rev limiter. 11.99 for him. Scarlet Mansfield French. That was a bit more launch RPM. And uh, yeah, just caught the wheelie. I love that you can, I mean, these, these are essentially what they call the Lambs bike. So, you know, the one that back in the old days, it used to be 250cc. You, you know, that was kind of your provisional. You, no one could go. That was still, it's still the rules. I, I don't know whether that's worldwide, but I'm sure it's not. It's an Aussie thing is that you can only ride a 250 as a P plane, a bike rider, back in the day before you could get your open. But Lamb's bikes have come a long way since, you know, they're all CM250s or SR185s or um, GSX 250s, the old school ones. Wouldn't pull the skin off rice pudding, but they're a good first bike. And now what you can get as far as Lamb's bikes are concerned, they're, uh, they're so much more advanced, like the whole bike industry. 944 at 70 mile an hour, ain't mucking around for, uh, for Alex Redman to uh, complete our junior bikes for the evening. Mind you, that's, that's, the, that's, that's, the, ul that's the ultimate, um, that was the ultimate loophole back in the day, but no one could afford it. Like you're allowed up to 250cc, so yeah, to buy an RGV 250 is kind of an unfair advantage, wasn't it? Shagger, we're all fed, we're all watered. How was that hot dog and chips? All good? No, go wrong, mate. Cannot go wrong. Track yes. food. I've, fairly, I've eaten like a king today. Eaten like a king. 
just that superb hospitality. I had me wiener earlier. Yeah, we had that. Tick. The wiener was good. Had the chips, tick. Tick. Donuts. Donuts, done. Done all that. Burger, done. <laughs> Control tower full of lovely ladies, tick. Tick. Had to put that in. You've got to, you got to thank the ladies here. You know they can turn us at any moment, you know Anytime. that. That's why I just try and keep them on the good side. That's, that's why we stay close to the yeah. door. They can pop the claws out if they yeah. need to. She did, she, just, she just did that because she could. That's right. a quick <laughs> So I need another call for Modified. Uh, that was the last call for 8th Mile Masters. Who else did we need there? Super, Super Sedan. Sedan. Oh, I'd love to see them. Right now. Light now. Super Sedan, like now, we're doing it now. So if you haven't got into this session, you've got only seconds to do it. Street bike. We'll do street. Mod bike. Modified. If you're not here, you know where. <laughs> you can watch the Netflix. Different combos here. How about Rob Adams in the Mopar? Do we like this thing? We like this thing. We definitely like this thing. And he's uh, lining up against Luke Hauser in the turbocharged V6 Corolla. Because that's what you do. Yeah. As you do. Big boy, Lukey Hauser. And I got this. And uh, Robert Adams from the Adams family. Not that Adams family, the other one. for him, 021 on the tree. 137, not, not too bad for a big heavy car like that either. Next pairing up, we got Glenn Vanner. So Vanner over here in the, uh, what do we got? Is that XD? I'm going to say XD. So. We'll go with that. Nicholas Smith, Castle Diamond. We love, we love a big long route. We love a long route. Look at him. We got him lined up. Really helped him. He's about to bring his board as well. I love the uh, Venetians at the back too. That's, nice touch. That's a nice touch. That's nice it. touch. 770. Gets longer right too. Don't worry about that. Glenn Vanner goes 837. Eight four Masters, third and final qualifier for these guys and girls. And as you said, another one of the uh, awesome Holden long roofs out there. It's Phil Halpin, of course, in the blue car, lining up against Ashley Thompson in this tough Falcon Ute. So Thompson. Have a I had a Lenko in this thing one day. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, we're going to still dance the way that he did. on the start line there as he's through the clutch here. Nice reaction time from him as well. Good to see. 6.48 for the Ute, 113 miles an hour. And Phil Halpin in the old Holden wagon runs 7.46. So, me and Phil, we can see some real Tension too. Yeah, that's beautiful that. car, beautiful car. Street and modified to the staging lanes, please. Street and modified to the staging lanes. We are getting close to that time too. Uh, 9.45, we are expecting the funny cars back out. Haven't had the telltale sign made of the start-up. You usually get the warm-up before they come out. We haven't heard one yet, so uh, probably not too far away. They're probably not too far away. No, Hannigan. 
So the uh, the Gen 2 Camaro, seen that in the 70s sort of region, so it's a uh, good looking bit of gear. Plenty of tyre under the back. Certainly is, like I said, I was about to say the same thing, the big tyres under the back look awesome on this car. Certainly does it. Shagger does a uh, great job. As you said, 602, 118 miles per hour. Certainly nothing to sneeze at. Not that I really understand that saying. Nothing to sneeze at. I've never understood that saying. Never. Never. What's the basis of that one, you reckon? We should look it up. We should. We probably won't. But we, we won't. Should. Somebody should look it up. Good at delegation. Like a lot of things we say them, we, we don't know what they mean. We just say them. <laughs> Nobody's listening, are they? Does anyone listen? Yeah. We can just say whatever the hell we want. <laughs> See? <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> <laughs> Sally's going, what? Did you say something? <laughs> All right, Brett Page, big, big fair lane forward. I was about to say the classic Ford up against the modern Ford, but the, honestly, that Ford, the, even the blue one, isn't that modern, is it? Really? It's nah, not these days, mate. The uh, the AU series. Yes. There we go. There's the cold nitro coming out. So we didn't hear any warm ups, but uh, they're telling us they're coming out. So they're obviously pretty happy with what they're bringing to the table. We got Kristen Coulston over here. Red Page out there, Super Sedan in the fair lane goes Norton at 71, 140 mile an hour on the top end for him. And Kristen Coulson, 10 1 2, wasn't too far away in the fell. And big misty Tony Ebden thrashing the, uh, the, big, the big Dodge, the big Dodge Coronet. He's, uh, Still getting a handle on this car with the new combination. Plenty of uh, nitrous on board and uh, has this engine up to 1,000 horsepower at the treads and uh, just still learning to redrive, relearning to drive the thing basically. So, uh, doing a great job, but uh, definitely will get better. Uh, the Zoomies are a nice touch, mate, that's for sure. Damien Morris in beside him in the Monaro. Another guy that's been around a long time at Damien. Sure has. In this car. Stroker holding the engine. So Miss, I don't know what happened there. Missy's gone to uh, bring it into stages, roll through the beams about three foot. So they're gonna do the right thing, they're gonna let him back up, which is cool. That's what we like to see. Yeah, definitely. Not like racing the sheep stations here, let's have fun. Big gets away nicely this time besides the red light. He runs through 9.78, 132 miles per hour. Probably the best pass uh, that he's put down, certainly today, but also probably since the new combination. Damien Morris with a nice 10-12 at 132 miles per hour. Yeah, Misty seemed a bit lazy on the line there, so obviously didn't feed all the gas in this time. Not the head of looks. Anyway, Patrick Barron up next from Marsden, so we know Patrick. 1995, remember 1995? Willowback Street Champion, it says. 
He's a truck driver. Yeah. Troy Curry, the little Plymouth Arrow. We called them Lancer here, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did. And they just had a little tiny four cylinder in them. Four cylinder. Yep. Certainly no uh, Mopar V8 under the bonnet of the, uh, the little Lancer. That's a good car, that thing. Big block Chev on board, 892 for him. Troy Curry would be pretty happy with his 1006. Keep coming forward here in Super Sedan Phil. We got Wayne Hyde over there in the Salika. Gonna take on Ian Pinball. This thing's been pretty impressive too. It sure has uh, put in some great performances so far today. And uh, this will be the last qualifying round for these guys. Boys pretty close on the tree, both up zero five lines to them, but uh, that car of heights gets away nicely. Uh, I'll tell you, look at that on the top end, they're both in the 960s. 66 for Pimble, the 69 for Wayne Hyde, so uh, nothing in it. Nothing in it. Yeah, the bigger mile per hour there for Ian Pimble. Uh, must have been chasing him down and uh, managed to drive around the outside. Chevy to the line. That's the car of Darren Rams. He's got a big block Chevy on board that thing too. 468 cube, pushing it along. Needs all of that for a car that size. Yeah, yep. Yeah. As we were saying earlier today, I love a big race car. Like, and there's two of them. So this is going to be a great looking uh, race here. Expect Mark Sugars with the front wheels in the air as always. So. Uh, oh, there you go. I didn't realise it was Mark Sugars. Listen, there you go. Happy days. From years ago, that was a stunner. Yeah, hundred percent. It was entertaining to watch. Mark Sugars loves uh, loves a bit of entertainment, actually. cars that photographers love because you know every single time you're going to get some great shots. So 10 one 8 there for Mark Sugar. Darren Ramsey went 9.29, 145 mile, mile an hour on the top end. The big Chevy that makes its way down through the braking area. we got the next pairing up here. Michael Shape, a wonderful supporter of drag racing in general, and particularly here at Warwick Drag, it has been for many years with mixed tow and service. Amy Strawn in beside him, BK Commodore. Nice little wing on the back, so this thing's got something. Yeah, so I've always loved Michael Shaper's uh, Chevy Ute, the 57 Chevy Ute, and no, they never did make them from the factory, but. But since he's painted it this gorgeous red colour, it looks even more sensational. I do like the red, mate. Yeah, it looks awesome. Some, some of the boys hitting the tree here. Getting a feel of it for tomorrow's racing. Hey, be strong, one of those. 10 double O from the BK. Michael Shaver goes 870. 870 for the BK. Valiant action. Yes. This will keep you happy, yeah. Phil. Yeah, yeah, mate. I do like a, I do like a Valiant. I must admit. I've had one in in my day. My dad used to have plenty of Valiants. Maybe that's what corrupted me. <laughs> but uh, his were never any good. Though a lot of them had, you could see the the road through the floor, things like that. But you know, I had a 1970 model myself. I love that car. I should never have got rid of it. So the VC model here, actually, the VC is my favourite. 
Unless you give me a VG hard top. Or a... Mine was a VF. I actually prefer the VFs over the VGs with the round headlight. That's yep, what yeah, I like. Okay. Yep. The VFs. So mine was uh, stock as a rock, leaning tower of power. So name me a week from the VC. I can tell you for sure, with confidence. <laughs> Ten oh eight for the uh, the Valiant on the top end. Yeah, sorry about that toilet break. Thanks, Phil. I, uh, I've been drinking the V8 juices the last couple of weeks, and that has an unpredictability to it. Um, I mean, it's it's you can't hold on when it kicks in. Um, yeah, just preparing myself for later life, I guess. <laughs> less, less rice. Less rice out there in that gorgeous Tirana, the HP. Um, the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars have towed around, as has the wheel standers, so they are there. 1074 at 125. Oh yeah, that's that's one for the diehards. Crazy Pete. Crazy Pete. You gotta hand it to him. He um he's kept uh, he's kept the hand in, Pete. Oh, it just threw a big flame out. I think he's tried to refire it and it threw a big flame out, but uh, she's still running. It's all good. Had a bit of fuel in the back. But, uh... I think, you know what, I think I've passed it. You know when we talk about something you, you want that you haven't had yet? So gas or haven't had, blown and injected something. We all want something blown. We all want something blown and injected. Pete's got a couple of them, of course. Oh, he does. He's got a few blowers laying around. But I just think this small block deal is just... That's all I kind of want sometimes, it's just that. I don't know what I'd put it in there. We've got a bit of smoke there, we're just, Daryl's all over it. So he's just naturally suspicious and uh, I think we've even just said we'll turn that off. Now, what? Again, if it's something leaking, whether it's oil or fuel, now remember that might be something to do with the flame or whatever. You know, sometimes if it is a fuel fitting or something, it can leak, it can create a lean scenario but whatever it is it caught the attention of us on the start line and we got to push pete back for whatever it is the post-mortem is coming now as to what might have been there another case of guess that fluid and uh look they're not really too much attention right now on the start line for anything other than i don't know something not happy there's a little glimmer down there on the uh, in the middle of the groove. Daryl's got the mop out, but uh, not overly stressed about it. But they spotted something, obviously. Yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't matter what it is. If you are found to have any sort of leakage on that uh, under the vehicle, um, we are instantly suspicious. We advise you to shut down because it is a safety thing, and we get you to um, to go back and fix that, and uh, hopefully come back and uh, fight again tomorrow and fight another day. So we're just uh, tweaking, uh, tweaking the surface. Whatever it was was just uh, minor. Maybe it was fuel. I mean, fuel's easy. Fuel's a good one. Not, not, not a good one for the competitor. I mean, that can effectively burn you to the ground. But as far as leaks go, we don't mind a little one. Fuel leaks. Yeah. Not on a run. No. Not on a run. But you know, somewhere yeah. on the start line, if you did get a little one for that, that's pretty easy for methanol or whatever. That thing just dries right up. And um, that looks like we've done that little bit. Oh, I don't know what it is. The guy's given it a bit of a squirt of the uh, the uh, the magic fluid, which I normally think we use thinners for that. I think oh, the we've, magic sauce bottle. Was the it? magic sauce bottle should be thinners. Thinners seems to be the thing that works the best. So he's got that thing fired up. He's going to uh, usher that off to the side. That's the perfect drive-through Macca's car, that one. Pete Wilson, that thing. That's what I'd like. All right, so this is our, like our street class. A couple more uh, vehicles in there. That is the big Ram. And uh, 
What are we here? D-Max, I can't quite spot it from here. Colorado. Much Col- oh, <coughs> sorry, beg pardon. Heaven forbid if I was to get my utilities wrong. I mean, it could be a Triton, a Colorado, a D-Max, a Ranger, a Nav. So yeah. even Key is bringing it out of you. You know what? I, uh, I followed a bit of the hype last week about it. Not that I'm about to line up and buy one, but you know what? Just, just secretly from the photos I've seen, they're probably going to sell a ton of them. Because you know where I think they're going to go really well? Is that, you know who's going to get affected the most out of all that? Probably not Toyota sales, but you watch, watch the old Great Wall fall off a cliff. You know what I mean? I do think people that are buying the Great Wall will buy the Kia. Because now Kia's like mark. brand perception now. Ten years ago, you wouldn't rate a Hyundai or a Kia. These days, you rate Hyundais and you rate Kias. Um, they have proven themselves to be serious about making quality vehicles. Um, and um, honestly, they were mad if they didn't. And honestly, there's two. Toyota's biggest problem is they can't sell enough Hiluxes. They've got a massive waiting list. Um, but more more for the market and if uh, we do you know what we should be lobbying Kia right now to say we're going to do some drag diesel utes but we need a couple of them and uh can you throw some spare engines in there because we're going to turn these things up (laughs) you know what i mean if it's a turbo diesel option we're going to be turning it up a little 2.4 apparently from what i was reading and and uh the uh the funny thing about you know if you've Observe the early days of growing up. You know, when you're a P player, you had a Gemini or a Corolla. Now you just can't afford them. They're too expensive. <laughs> you know, I remember when Geminis and Corollas were cheap, and now look, the ultimate P plate car can't be that car because they're too dear. I had spare engines laying around for my Gemini. Yeah. What two? What? Gemini. Two Geminis. What oh, that's, model? That's superannuation. What model? Yeah. Yeah. They are, they are hard to get. But then these days, of course, a lot of the young tradies... I'm seeing young blokes in 70 Series Cruisers too, by the way, which, just quietly, I think Toyota Finance must have got those guys good. Honestly. She's got the Gladstone. $100 plus thousand dollar turbo V8 Land Cruiser because he's got a P-plate on it, or he's a tradie. Here we go down the end. Cameron Hunt, 1275. And Jake Roberts still getting there now, 1530. All the people out of the class and made a plain model, so I can tell you. All right, Darren Otto. Market, they probably will do even better. Well, we talked about the six bangers earlier. These are a couple of guys you'll see at the six bangers. They were regulars over the years. That street ride, I still can't believe that street ride of uh, Darren Otto. Built during COVID. It's almost like he can't give it the full tilt because the thing is quite fast for its uh, quite fast for itself there, and he's been backing it right off because I think it, it, it had a pretty good ET early on in the day. Um, Fourteen ninety one now at sixty nine. Thirteen seventy three there for Andrew Faulkner. But uh, yeah, six banger nats absolutely can't wait for those uh, can't wait for those regular. Uh, Warwick events, uh, of course, Drag Fest as well. Some great times in the past here, and uh, they'll continue on in 2024. Harley Hankin now in uh, his utility. Just listening. You won't know what's in it. Like, honestly, you'd love to think that's a 3.3 litre blue. You'd love to think that it is, or has it had a swap? You don't know. ET wise, let's have a look. Uh, 1803, yeah, probably yeah, 202 yeah. blue. Trimatic. Trimatic. Three, sure. on the <laughs> Three on the column. I don't know. Spot on. About the, about the right performance there for a stock utility. And again, as we just said, you know, Sally's got a couple of uh, Geminis. Gems. You don't think that HZ Ute wouldn't be worth something now, honestly, when you remember how much they were. And even gem, poor old gem gems, you'd, you'd get, you pick them up for eight hundred bucks, thousand bucks. Do the normal thing you'd have to do: fix the rust in the floors and the bottom of the doors and so, anywhere else they rusted. So I used to, I used to drive if it rained. I used to put a coal shopping bag over my feet so they wouldn't get wet because the water would run down behind the heater. <laughs> Mate, I went once further with my Datsuns when they leaked, right? Again, because they're talking about nineteen seventies cars here. They leaked. So what I did, I took the carpet out, took the bungs out of the floor, and just let the stuff go just out the bottom. Run. Except one time when you go through deep potholes in the rain <laughs> and you actually get the water back it up. It comes back the other way. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, uh, that right. was the. A millennial couldn't solve a problem like that. They go, Dad, the car's leaking. And you'd have to say, well, are you going to fix it? Well, how? It's leaking. 
back then, you know, we just took the car because the carpet smelt when it got wet. So what you do is you just take the carpet out, take the bungs out of the floor. Problem to me, problem solved. Water comes in, water goes out. That's what the bungs were there for, weren't they? Yeah, you know, these days, like honestly, these days with my millennial kids, like you, you've got to give them so much more information to get a chore done. If I say take the bin out, they do. You've got to tell them to also bring it back. That's the problem with them. I took it out, like you said, but did you bring it back? Well, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me to. So these days, telling a millennial to do this is take the bin out. Not only take the bin out, bring the bin back. Not only when you bring the bin back, put a new bin bag in it, put it back in where the bin was. Five commands to get one thing done. Back in the day, take the bin out. You knew what that meant. These days, if you don't, if you miss some information, they'll call you on that missed information. Am I right? Am I right? Any any other parents out there, millennials, get on the live chat and tell us: Is it just my problem or other people's problems? No, no, I think it's universal. It's out there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, guess what? It's that time of the night, as promised. We're going to unleash you with more nitro methane action one more time. Now, have you got enough voice left? Do you want to see nitro funny cars? Let's hear clap, cheer and whistle. Where's the whistlers? Yeah! Yeah! There, there's that big kid over there. Look at him. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> All right. Well, hold on to your hats, folks, because they're going to send them one more time. Now, I just had a quick chat to Boris McMillan there, and he, I said, how's the track? Good. And he goes, great track. He said the only thing he can, he caught, that, that he said that may be an issue, well, it is an issue for them, is visibility down the deep end. They, they say it's a bit dark for them. So we might have to, in the future, just dazzle them with more lighting down that end. But again, when you're thundering through that 230 plus mile an hour in the dark, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, you know what? He's not being picky. He's not being fussy. The guys, I, w I wouldn't say he's done thousands of passes in these things, but they've all done hundreds of passes. Maybe he's done a thousand. But um, yeah, visibility is one thing um, when you're uh, when you're encapsulated under these uh, fiberglass, fantastic plastics. Very, thank you very much. Okay, we've had some lost property handed in. A, uh, a pair of glasses. So not sunglasses, but glasses used to see things better. So if, you, if you're walking around looking for them, but you can't find them because you haven't got your glasses, they might here. have them up here. So uh, lovely. Thank you. Uh, uh, young, yeah, if you lost them looking for your phone, you might have just hit the double jackpot. If you also dropped your charm bracelet, well, guess what? You're going home happy because you've had everything returned to you. We've still got a phone here. And uh, it's still got battery, and this is the problem. Like, there's uh, well, I don't know who they. We got we got three items for marketplace tomorrow. So, yeah, so we got a, an iPhone which has been pretty pretty beat up, uh, but it's still it's still here. Uh, we've got a beautiful little charm bracelet that someone's lost. A little kid's bracelet. It doesn't really have a name on it, but it's a little sort of silver silver sort of band ring. What a Definitely been on a wrist, definitely not mine. Wrist, mind you, I do have smaller than average wrists for a male, but that's not fitting me, I can tell you. Um, the um, the, gla the glasses, uh, whoever needs them, there's a fair bit of, uh, fair bit of uh, refraction on them. Yeah, be careful coming up the stairs. Somebody guide them over to the tower. If, uh... Dangerous, Dave. Yeah, just, yeah, just be careful. Now, look, I, I hope that's... Yeah, that's what it is, which is not good. Jung, Jung is on the um, Jung is on the sled. We got light sprinkle. It's not a good thing. We were literally, we were literally seconds away from doing this. We were literally seconds away from doing it. The light sprinkle is just hitting us now. Light I mean, it is randomly light. It is, it is enough. Again, just blowing, and that's the thing. It's sort of coming in in gusts. So some of this stuff's being carried off a cloud and blowing down. Now. We're all doing our, putting our arms out and feeling what we got. But we've had that little sprinkle blow across. And again, it only happened for about 20 seconds here and it's gone again. So that's why Jung has gone out there on the, uh, out on the sled and um, dragging it. Yeah, there we go. So that's, that's light, that's annoying. That's light and annoying. That is sort of again blowing in, but I mean, it is, you kind of wish it was all evaporating before hitting the ground, but some of it is hitting us and, uh, and getting to ground. So. Not a, um, and again, you can't see that. Look at it change direction even. You see that, Shags? Look at that. So it is, it is so lightly coming down that that stuff's not even, I mean, that thing is just floating in the air this rain at the moment. This light drizzle 
is drifting in like a heavy mist. And right now, the Brent, and again, we're watching where the flags are. So it's coming again from the direction that came today. But it is just sort of hovering in the air and, and changing direction here in front of us. So it is mad what it's doing. But it's enough to upset us. It's enough to uh, stop a drag race. But for how long? Let's just, we're going to watch it. The boys are watching it. The crowd, peep, some people are obviously just make it. Making it, uh, making it just uh, halt proceedings here, folks. And you know, we just have to, we have to stand by and watch this. It is that time of the evening where we were just about to, we were just about to wrap everything up, run that last round of a few of our categories, and we just got this light spring. I mean, it is, it is painfully light, folks. As you can experience, you're, you're sitting there thinking there's not much. It's enough to, uh, to definitely have us uh, stop and ponder. But I mean, this stuff is, there he goes, it's gone now. Like where, we, where we're seeing, I mean, it is so light, it's, it's annoying. But God, if it stopped right now, we've got a chance. But it's just so light, honestly, Shags. This is, it's death by a million sprinkles. It really is. Mate, we've, we've, had, a, uh, we've had a win in the phone too. We know who it is. And this will explain why it's this old and this raggy. It's Bud Kelly's. How do you know that? Well. Pete did some investigation work. And well we found done. Bud Kelly's license. Well done. All right. So here is the word. The official word is because of this sprinkle, this time of night, and the unknown uh, future of the uh, the the weather for the rest of the evening. We are uh, we're up. We're done. We have been done. So we have been officially called. Is that the word from race control? That we That's are. The, official word. the weather has grabbed us. This death by a million sprinkles ain't going to get any better. So, folks, we are back tomorrow on track at ten. Now, I think our nitro friends leave us leave us tonight, don't they? They're not back tomorrow. They came and put it on for us tonight. So, again, before you go home tonight, folks, drop in. They're going to have to tow those things back to the pits. Annoying is enough to stop us tonight, folks. We thank you all for coming. Be careful on the way home. And uh, be sure to get here. I think we're back on track at 10 o'clock tomorrow. And that'll be the war paint painted on. So that means the dial-ins will be on. And we'll be going into battle with eliminations. Who's going to win this event tomorrow in all those categories? You'll have to come back tomorrow and find out. But for more, um, uh, but for uh, more tonight, it is done. Mother Nature has got us. Now, we fought Mother Nature all day. We did pretty well with it. We overcame it several times. And I'm sure if we sat around long enough, Shags, you and me, this would come back and we'd have that track back again but it's so much harder at night we've lost a lot of that residual heat in the track we did good to get it back when we did so right now it's a death by a million sprinkles it's got us for the night we do thank you for coming uh, we thank all of our great uh, uh, volunteers all of our competitors all of our um, dignitaries that came to be part of the official ribbon cutting ceremony today and weren't they rewarded with some nitro funny car stuff here Amazing to see, amazing to see. And uh, we'll be back to uh, see how it all pans out tomorrow. But remember, I think we've got the band. Is that right? We've got a band on. We've got the band, yep. We've got the band on. They'll, they'll be on there shortly. So uh, that's the place to be, especially if you're looking for some shelter. That'll be the place to be because that's where the band is. Get in there and enjoy that. And uh, we will uh, see you all tomorrow. Shags, you're hanging around tomorrow? Is no, that... I might have to head home early, mate. I might have to try and go home and win, earn some money. So we'll, oh, see how okay. we, we'll see how we go. See how we go. We'll see how we go. See how we go. We have to work. The guy, of course, you guys, you guys have to work. Nice go down to scrutineering. So any of the lost properties going down to scrutineering. The ladies are gone. They're done already. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Taking her suitcase with her and uh, off she goes. But, folks, yes, unfortunately, yeah, look at that light sprinkle. Just enough to ruin us for tonight. Not enough to wet us, but enough to stop the event. So, folks, thanks for today, uh, and we'll see you again tomorrow. And don't forget, everyone on the live stream, be ready to come and get back uh, on with us at 10 o'clock tomorrow, Queensland. Nah, no oh, no stream. Well, we'll see you. you got to work. Okay, well, thank you. So the Jamboree Channel next uh, Friday and Saturday. But uh, for everyone overtaking Lane Stream, thanks for being a part of it tonight. But yeah, tomorrow we are uh, we are all raw. Congrats on the ten thousand, mate! On the uh, ten thousand subscribers, that's fantastic.
10,000, uh, we tipped them, tipped them over tonight, grabbed up the luck. Can we, get a, can we get a final number, mate? Can we get a final number? Nah, too hard, OK. Fair enough. 10,000, we got the 10,000, that's all we wanted. I'd say the way, the way the water's coming off Phil's glasses, there is a little bit more than what we're talking. We were, we were playing it down, we're playing it down, but it is enough. So here we go, final call before we go of our... Four subscribers, thank you for being a part of Overtaking Lane, uh, and we'll see you later. Enjoy.